stories about that house, that place, and we just don't we just don't get to see those. Well, yeah, Which not I'm anymore. Fine with, Only but... took after after the. I guess there'd be a story in rebuild. Or um, you know, Miles mentions that he has insurance. Imagine how fucking rich he's gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. He's gonna he's gonna bankrupt the, the insurance company. Some kind of yeah. irony here in that he wanted that stuff for what it meant, not for the money. Absolutely, oh, well. he was a lover of art. <laughs> but he's a bad person, so yeah, yeah, he's the villain. Him. Yeah, mm. everything must burn to make him cry. And it's funny. Right, a nickel. Hilarious, and it's so artistically shot. Oh my goodness, Ryan is just what a what, what an he's an oh, artist. Oh, Ryan. He's the Leonardo da Vinci of our day. Oh no, he's a disruptor. Do not do this. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no. Do no. not say no, 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 no. Nine, nine, nine. <laughs> nine, nine, nine. You do that. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> Germany. You got yeah. baited. That's oh. where I. Not right now. Damn it. I can't say that today. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so, you know, what What can I say as a preamble before we do memes? Ryan Johnson. Let's talk about our, let's talk about Ryan Johnson. His history our, with how us. We, yeah, his history with us. He's like a, he's a patron. He's one of our greatest yeah. patrons here at EFAP. Yeah. Every frame of pause. Like, subscribe. And don't forget to comment. The first um, movie I saw from him was Looper. Everyone else see that? Oh my goodness. I saw I, Unfortunately, Looper. yeah. Oh. I've never seen that one. No. I feel like we're looping. Wow, Cap. Do you uh -huh. like anything from Ryan Johnson? No. <laughs> not even, <laughs> you know, not even his best film. What about Looper? That? Brick. <laughs> I never saw Brick. Yeah, I'm I not tempted I to go back. It. His stories are like bricks. It's against the head, yeah. Like passing a brick. The passing of the brick. It's an artistic <laughs> tradition that dates back to Grecian days. Which I guess are now, but you know what I mean. Old um, timey times. Mm -mm -mm. We, owe, we owe this podcast to Ryan. I feel like that needs to be addressed. This, it's very likely that this assemblage of tards, yes. we <laughs> would never have coagulated together and met each other. And EFAP might not have ever been a thing that ever was if it wasn't for Ryan Johnson and his incredible, amazing, groundbreaking, subvertive film, The Last Jedi. We, that's what brought us together. That's yeah, what brought us together. We coagulated yeah, to form Ryan. a very retarded scab. That's right. <laughs> we are the scab on the underbelly of film criticism because we talk about <laughs> plot and characters, but we actually pay attention to what we watch, which Ew. is verboten. From yeah. what I hear. Oh, I know that word. Well, that's true, uh, yeah. <laughs> you would never have known I existed from Zio there. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, but, well, that that in the timeline, you know, because I was just going to say Looper is something I saw and thought was shit. I thought that it broke itself and then, like, all the payoffs were dependent on the rules being whatever they needed to be at the time. So that to me is just like, well, that's lazy. It's like, yeah, but the characters. Very true. Uh, the characters, Mahler. Uh, you know those characters. Um, well, there's one list. list. That's one of the and the other one? Where, um, a lot of the character is destroyed by them having an understanding of the rules is completely different from our own, so a lot of their actions seem really strange, but they'll do... You know, like when he shoots himself? I, you know what? Let's not get into it. <laughs> That's gonna take... <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna take way too long. So, yeah, that happened, and then I guess you'd say next in the timeline would be the Breaking Bad stuff, and so if I were more aware of him at the time, because I was not, I would probably be like, yeah, he seems fine, he's just got that weird movie directed, blah, blah, blah. Then along comes, um... Zeus, LJ, right? he hurled his thumb... Oh. And it was like, oh, wow. So he's, like, known now as being, alongside JJ, as just a, an absolute bulldozer of uh, IPs. Um, even though he's only really killed the one. He's gone after a genre next, so it's a little bit tougher. He'll get there eventually. Mm. Um, that wasn't too impressive to a lot of the people here. You don't I think he'd that. ever try and destroy a whole genre, do you? It's a bra mm. brave and bold move. Oh, as well. Maybe you could say Star Wars was a it, bro, the, Disney would like it to be a genre. Then, then you get Knives Out, and uh, I remember the, the vibe of that was, finally, he made a good one. 
neat. <laughs> what? And then we watched it and we were like, wow. <laughs> the lights <laughs> <was. It's> ever. <laughs> um and then and then he disappeared into the night, and then we found out, oh, he's got a deal to make two more knives out movies where I guess the through line will just be that Benoit Blanc comes back each time. A character oh, that wow. no one gives a fuck about, uh, and neither does the movie most of the time. Sort of now, when you say two more, are you saying there's a third one on the yep. way, or yeah. is this the second? Oh, Aaron no! Dude! Yeah. The drop-off was so dollars. steep compared from Knives Out to Glass Onion. How could it go any worse? These people That's are the dumb. <laughs> and now, I will say that this new one pops out, and one of the first things I heard about it was it's worse than Knives Out, and I was like, uh huh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. Because like you know, I I do have faith in in humanity to the point of like he must have been able to accidentally make a good story eventually, right? Like at one point oh, he sure. writes something yeah, coherent. Game, right? Yeah, like it's just uh, if you write ten stories, what are the chances that all of them, <laughs> every single one, you know, like surely every now and then you won't realize what you made is really great. Right? You've actually accidentally made like a good scene oh, or maybe like a good character. Whole, you know, the whole theorem of like you get a million chimpanzees to sit at a typewriter. <laughs> what yeah, you put out something. I'll write, write, write the great American novel. It's kind of like the law of averages, I suppose, in some sense. Eventually, you write something good. And, uh, yeah, I watched it with Metal first, and I'm pretty sure once the, the, the bigger crazy thing happens, I was saying what the fuck over and over again until uh, <laughs> he helped me understand maybe how it wasn't as insane, but it kind of just insane. We'll get to that eventually. Um, and you then I, I, I was still undecided, but especially after uh, watching it in our little party, I was like, oh yeah, this is actually... One of the worst again. We hit another one of the worst. Uh, it's really <laughs> annoying. Guys, it's it's not it's it's getting scary how often lately it's been like, wow, that was like the worst thing. <laughs> like was, But the thing is like, you not... know, you could take it as like an absurdity or oh how can videos like we're gonna give you all the arguments and you can decide if uh, if you think it's yeah, fair or not yeah. when we have that conclusion. Mm -hmm. But uh this one this one's gonna be a bit of there's a bit of unraveling to do, there's a bit of layer peeling to do. Mm -hmm. It's a tangled uh, web. I don't get I it. I go as far as saying very much deliberately, but we're going to yes, have to... Yes, because it, it obfuscates the reality. You can't see yeah, one the of... reality through the twisted web of lies. Lies! <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good theme right there. Film lies to you. One of the challenges with breaking this one down is that there's an intentionality to obfuscate, and thus the value, part of the value, is that things are not as complicated as you would have imagined. And so anytime mm. someone says, wow, that's either t really simple or really stupid, the film wins. It gets a point. That's, that's an attitude that's developed apparently but about you see, this one. see, I was only pretending to be retarded, except yeah. I wasn't <laughs> pretending. That one mm -hmm. and, um, I so, just was. Yeah, and, and, and so the, the, the I guess, to, to, because there's no reason to do like a, what did you all think of the movie one by one? Because I'm pretty sure we're all pretty much one to one unified. It's that oh, bad. Oh well, yeah, I, I, I hate be, this film. Might be this interesting was... to see like what each person highlights in their little statement, right? As a thing that what the key word was, or like one specific aspect of the film that really annoyed them. That could be interesting. Very yeah, well. Yeah, we can go down the list. Well, uh, uh, we can uh, if we set like a <laughs> limit of ten seconds or less. You know, we'll go thirty, <laughs> seconds, 30 seconds, right? And we okay. can go. Generous. Straight forward seconds. this time, so we haven't done it in a while. Just left to right, why not? And uh, start with Mr. Capital Opinions. What did you think of Glass Out Knives Onions story? The third. I hated it. It's very, very stupid. The characters are terrible. The plot is one of the worst things I've ever seen. The the movie like was already uh, addressed. The movie lies to you. It's not just that characters lie is not that characters are hiding things it's that the movie itself is hiding things from you only so and that's the only way twists are even possible in this story is by just not telling you things our care our main point of view character knows them but we just don't get to know them so we're along for the roller coaster like ooh, a new piece of information but it's all lies yep that's yep. the gist i <laughs> i wondered for a while whether it was worse than Knives Out, because I wasn't sure if anything could be quite as bad as the morphine scene in yeah, yeah. Knives Out. <laughs> but I do think the sum total of this movie is worse, though I'm excited to talk about it. All right. Yeah. Well, at least someone is. Yeah, well, I actually, uh, I paid money to go see this one after uh, after Thanksgiving. Nice, gotcha. Because I, th 
I mean, because I liked I liked a little bit of Knives Out. The, the totality of it was, you know, awful. But you know, again, the chimpanzee theory. You know, maybe <laughs> you could pound out something halfway decent this time. But um, uh, no. Uh, they advertise this as a whodunit, and it's probably the worst whodunit that I have ever witnessed in my life. It's uh, I can't even. I can't even. I really can't even. It's. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing about it that works no i mean th- th- there has to be a murder for a whodunit and a murder doesn't happen until like an hour i believe into the movie and then any information that you need to solve that murder isn't given to you until about like an hour and 20 minutes into the movie it's just structured so terrible uh, it's just yeah we're we'll definitely get into all that Wait. All right, Fringy, go ahead. Glass Onion is one of the most intensely stupid films I've seen. That's mm. that's basically the gist of it. All right, that's bullshit. Oh. You're next. Well, uh, Capital O kind of took the words out of my mouth. That whole thing about the film lying to you. Uh, as a fan of like the whodunit genre for as long as I can remember, I I couldn't stand that fact. That it will actively lie to you because part of the fun is like, you know, picking up on things and be like, ooh, maybe this guy did it. Ooh, is this a red herring? No, they like actively lie and we'll get into it as we go along. But that really sincerely frustrated me. And so the movie went from like agonizing to frustrating to like enraging toward the end. It, this is a very, very bad movie. Mm. I, uh, blah. Blah. <laughs> and I'm keeping an eye on chat. I'm moving everyone's volume sliders according to what you guys are complaining about. All right, so hopefully it's getting nailed <laughs> gradually. Um, <clears throat> okay, yeah. So for me, uh, it's just it hits every single hallmark of poor writing, be it in the form of like really bad exposition, like insecurities about the society that surrounds the writer at the time, loads of injections of what they believe to be like super important to talk about, yet they have nothing to say about it. Lots of, like, things that are put in for seemingly no reason at all. Uh, the characters very rarely are able to escape one dimension. It's just, that's, and, and it's almost, like, deliberate because they just have, the writer has so much fun being like, look at this person. If this person existed, wouldn't this person be something really dumb? Uh, and you know what? This person does exist. You know them. Aren't they dumb? We hate them. They're dumb. Um, and then, of course, yes, the... All these different, like, setups that aren't setups at all. They're just, uh, the fucking magician had a, a, a gun backstage that just brings out and kills the whole audience. And it's just like, yeah, you didn't see that coming, <laughs> did you? Like, wow, that's an awesome <laughs> trick, dude. Um, and then, yeah, uh, pacing is, is hideous to me, I think. That this film is simultaneously bloated and then dense with information in small packs around the film. And it repeats loads of information because it just doesn't... It, <laughs> I, I think the film thinks it's a lot smarter than it actually is. There's a huge tangled web of ex- trying to understand what this film's attitude is about itself. And uh, it's so funny to see people who are both pro and anti this film both say it thinks itself to be very smart when it isn't. Like, both of them are saying that. As though that's a plus for the film, for it to approach it this way. Uh, yeah, I, uh, it's an absolute fucking mess. And I've seen it a couple times to make sure I'm ready for all this, and I've got a lot to say how all of it's fucked metal yes i mean uh basically all of the things i think have already been said like the movie lies to you it's like oh i think i finally kind of starting to figure out what is it what it is and then they put this big information on you in the middle and like oh and then we get to the scenes that we've seen before and they don't fit in at all it's like oh is it like you lied to me like this didn't happen like i saw how quick it went the first time and now you just put three four minutes in it. Also, there's no character that wasn't there before, even though it's the same shot. It's like, oh, so that's <laughs> all worthless. Thank you. I don't know why, why you do this to me. And then, of course, the insane ending with this almost like a twisted sense of morality is probably how I would put it. It's like, oh, that's, that's how you thought you won? German. Oh, no. do, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, when I say that, you know it's true. Uh, no, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's awful. It's awful. Rags. When you go to a magic show, when you're watching an illusionist on a YouTube video or on television, one of the things that's part of the the craft of magic tricks and illusionary and stuff of that nature is that you can't go back and change what people actually saw. 
right? It's just not possible. So the skill is how do you do something, pretend you're doing something else, but the whole time if people, uh, you want to distract people, but you can't just erase events from history. You can't, you can't <laughs> recontextualize in the sense of actually changing the content of what's been seen. It's sleight of hand and it's distraction. And that's where the skill comes in. You don't, you don't lie to people in the same way that you deceive someone for like a kind of like a scam, right? A, a, a magician doesn't scam people. Everyone kind of wants to be fooled and they're in for it. And his skill in pulling off of that, that kind of deception plays in the audience's desire to be deceived. And, that, and that's where a lot of the enjoyment comes from. And this movie's the opposite of that. And that's all I'll say for now, because I've probably been going longer than 30 seconds. But <laughs> there's been a theme... I've noticed for the six who spoke before me about lies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and, and we'll get into that. And um, I would like to say that these lie, you know, what you've been talking about lies, surely the audience is thinking, they don't mean like the film actually lies to you. I wonder what they mean by that. It's like, I, I promise what you're thinking of in your head is far more complex than what's actually happening. But yeah, uh, it's super simple in the movie. How it, oh uh, yeah, does the thing. it's bad. Yeah, I'm, I'm horrified for the trend that this film might be setting. Uh. What the trend of like ah, the Who Done It revived by Ryan Johnson. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. the well, uh, I was thinking more specifically, well. um, more specifically, just let's play a scene again, but it's just different this time. And the first time we lied to you, <laughs> I don't. That needs to not happen. Yeah, there needs to. If it's this popular, which this is popular apparently, uh, then it's like, hey, that's, oh, I didn't know you could do it that way. I'm going to do it that way. And it's like, oh, no. I didn't mm. know that you could actually have the same shot and have fundamentally different imagery. <laughs> like, different <laughs> yeah. information. Different people on screen in the same, sh in the sh in the same shot. Like, it's, it's insane. <laughs> So, uh. um, yeah, uh, it seems to have been said by pretty much everybody. And so I kind of want to start here. We, it's stupid. Um, and and th this, I think, should be mentioned early so then we can come back to it whenever you guys want. But good old Drinker watched it with us. And he had some things to say that weren't very kind about this movie. And he, he put out a tweet. Rude. That fool put out a tweet oh, saying, yeah. Glass oh. Onion may be one of the most triumphantly, defiantly stupid movies I've ever seen. How it somehow fooled people into thinking it was a smart, complex mystery is absolutely baffling. No, Drinker, true. that's the point. So this, this was <laughs> that's the only thing you can really say is that oh no, Drinker, if only you'd worded it to mean exactly to a T, uninterpretably what you mean specifically, because then another tweet happened, and uh, they've got the definition of glass onion. This tweet is a quote tweet of Drinkers, and it's at three hundred thousand likes. It's just like Jesus fucking, hell. fucking Christ! Wow. Um, and the definition oh, okay. is, or I guess the explanation is, originated from the Beatles song Glass Onion from their White Album. It means to overanalyze something that is not intended to mean anything more than what it is. The entire point <laughs> of the Glass Onion song was to poke fun at all the people who had looked for deep messages in previous Beatles songs. And uh, I saw one of the responses to this was like, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Like, you've seen that before, it's just like, ah. Uh... So, the point is, Drinker has completely missed the point of the film, which is there wasn't a complex mystery. It was that Miles was the bee, bee, bee all along, all that stuff. And it's, it's like... supposed to be stupid. But that's not what Drinker's <laughs> trying to get across. He's, <laughs> he's saying that was executed really stupidly. Not that hmm. the character in universe that everyone calls stupid is stupid. That's not, that's not what he's saying. But like willfully misinterpreting it because it'll make it easier to make fun of him. It's just like, oh well, that's just straightforward, isn't it? So the thing is, is that when you were reading this, my thought was like, wait, is the is the quote tweet saying like, ah, see, you're like over analyzing like Glass Onion, the film itself, yes, rather than the core mystery of the film. Oh well, so yeah, probably the mystery part, yeah, because the the well, film's point is that the mystery comes across as it's smart, but it's not. Like the film I want to ask way. these people if they think sure, do they think this I movie could have been done poorly then? Well, yeah, that's a that's a well, real yeah. question, right? Or is it baked into its own existence? The fact that it's called Glass Onion means it is unassailable. I mean, well, you what's know, like the difference uh, between a glass onion movie that's done that's executed well and a glass onion movie that's executed poorly. What's the distinction between those two okay, things well, if you think it's is, possible? 
Do you think that Ryan Johnson would be happy if the only thing people said is, yeah, that was a really shit movie, Ryan. <laughs> that was so good. dumb and stupid. Yeah, good, good job. job. I got yeah, it. Yeah. That that's really weird. Really no. like, well, this is what I mean about like actually be happy about that. That's what I mean about willfully misinterpreting, because these people would not concede that's what it is. They're saying, no, 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 no. We're saying that the mystery underneath it all was simpler than you thought it was, and that's kind of how it can sneak past you. Uh, Benoit Blanc says uh, in this film at one point, his Achilles heel is easy puzzles, basically. Well, what I mean, it doesn't it, sneak past like, you. Didn't I actually oh. guess like who who it was like That's before true, we even got to the twist? Well, I don't know that we want to like go. The, this this thing. I I don't think that the biggest things are remotely predictable. I, I don't at all. Right. Um, well, yeah, because because the thing is, is how much is what you're predicting based on the material that's in the story versus what are you playing at, Ryan? I'm trying to figure out what you specifically are doing here. Like, what yeah, your if, game is. If the angle is, he wrote it, he wrote a very clever film about a simple mystery that comes across to the characters in universe as complex, and that's what makes it difficult for them to solve it before realizing, ah, the pieces fit much easier than we thought. I think that there's a great movie in that idea. That is not what this film achieves at all. No. Like, I, I that suppose, seems to be the ultimate... Clear, that's like the point of, yeah, that seems of, to be the breach uh, in the conversation here. All of these people well, yeah, believe it was uh, executed really well. Drinker is saying it was not. That, that's that's it. Yeah, but Drinker's biggest mistake was saying that on Twitter. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> and, and, and let's be honest, <laughs> you know, what? goes to die. This is another movie like many that it's it's a proxy war for something else. And this one would be just you're smart All if you Ryan liked Johnson's it and understood it. Will be that. You're it's an idiot if you couldn't. I've already had people saying I didn't understand it, and they haven't even heard what I've said about it yet. Like, it's, <laughs> it's that kind of movie. And uh, it's funny because now that I'm so familiar with this film, I'd be curious to ask people who've seen it once a lot of questions to see if they can pick up what, like, and I mean basic, straightforward details. So, like, maybe even start with what platforms does Duke stream on? And Twitch and YouTube. Out, well, out of curiosity, if, if people, like, what is he currently streaming on, Rags? He's currently streaming on YouTube. Correct. Right? Yes. But he needs the That's boost. Correct. From yes, Onion Man in Norton. order to get Onion the... <laughs> no, yeah, that, that's that, stuff like that. I really don't think most people who've watched it once will answer, be able to answer, and they'll say that doesn't matter. And it's like, okay, fine. Because I had to stop and think. I was like, because he originally streamed on Twitch, but I had to, or or maybe he still did. He got banned, right? He got banned on Twitch, Twitch, yeah, which is why it's weird in retrospect that he introduces him as like a. The streamer on Twitch that got blah 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 followers, yeah. like he's also the biggest streamer to ever be banned in your universe. So, why would you bring that up as an accolade? I, I guess it's still an accolade, but you know, it's still like he's not current. Uh, anyway, we can get to that. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess the goal here is just going to be to try and go through it and talk a bit about what the, the film thinks happened and then what actually happened. Uh, cause... yeah, but by the fact that we're doing that means that the film succeeded. Okay. <laughs> fooled us into overanalyzing it because that's a great arrangement right there. You fucked up if you try and figure out what the movie is about. I suppose the funny part for me is I overanalyze all stories, so you're welcome <laughs> yeah, into the fold, you are, Glass and, Onion. And in that sense, you're just like Benoit Blanc. You know, you are. <laughs> it's the simplest stories that fool Mola right here. Damn it. Like Glass uh... Onion. It's a very simple film. It's definitely very simple. It's not like at all it's a tangled web at all um all right so yeah i i'm yeah, i think right, this format yeah. is just going to unfold i'm going to try chronological but i think there will be a part where we start jumping forward and then we'll just decide to reveal the whole thing and then start jumping all around it, all uh, right. this thing sure. that, that's kind of Can how my notes went enough yeah this this thing yeah. is is weird in terms of its uh format and it's i mean it's annoyed a lot of people as well in just terms of consuming a fucking linear story i, I understand that but uh, I'm going to try and not hold that against it, because ultimately this format could probably work really well with a movie this well-written, I think. Um, <laughs> so you get your, uh, I guess, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll I'll throw it up on screen too, but I'm going to have to use our little copyright cover, of which I don't, why don't, I have to reset it like every time. Well, either way, cool. uh, for the, the, we get character introductions, maybe for now until I get the copyright cover sorted, I'll just uh, pause. Um, this is Claire DeBella, played by Agatha Harkness, uh, also known as I don't think that's her name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Catherine Hahn, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
and and you know we're we're expeditious. She's getting she's like a family lady, but she's also trying to do a, an interview on I don't know like CNN or whatever. And the first thing they say is like your campaign is being backed by billionaire tech giant Miles Braun. Thanks it's for like, the uh, exposition film. It's um yeah, and 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 to, you know to for us watching, we're just like all right, <laughs> like <laughs> oh, okay. And it's funny because you might be like, what's wrong with that? It's like uh, I don't know. It's just like. It's just the most easy way you can get that information to us. You didn't try very hard, but that's that's fine, I guess. There's, there's some information you can get out that way. It's totally chill, with the context being right. Um, but I guess part of the problem is that you get this information like four times, and for every character, this shit is delivered this way. So um, many overlapping expositional scenes same. where characters are talked about and explained. Oh mm. my god, we get it. I think we would all agree the best one uh, is a scientist man. They just <laughs> they can't Wait, stop he's a telling you. Yep. Is him him what? being in a laboratory surrounded by medical or sorry scientific apparati, uh, computers yeah, and all enough. this stuff, the lab coat and the thing on his jacket and no no no. I don't we get gotta it. Be, the people Do who like this need to have it? things almost literally be spelled out to them. I mean, uh, we we started laughing at it because they kept telling us he was a scientist in like the most <laughs> awkward ways possible. I don't look. We'll we'll suffice for the fucking Christmas copyright shield, okay, everybody? The yeah, spirit, the the spirit is still alive. And well. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I can hit play now safely. I got yes. an onion for Christmas. Oh, cool. Mm. Um, but yeah, one of the first lines is, Lionel, you're a scientist, not a publicist. <laughs> and it's just like, fucking hell. Damn it, Jim. <laughs> Thanks, dude. And uh, uh, some of the stuff in retrospect as well, uh, you got, uh, the, he's talking about Miles, uh, Lionel. Lionel is the scientist. We'll do as best we can, chat, to keep you up to date with all this, but it was hard to keep track even when you first watched the film of everybody. Oh, so yeah, it's, it's a do nightmare. Lionel, scientist. Claire, senator. Miles, billionaire. All right, let's uh, we'll keep repeating these things. Hopefully, it sinks in oh, a little bit. Uh, technically, she's a governor who's running for senate. Oh, okay. Governor, then, right? Um, so you're all right, governor. He's uh, he's talking about right. Miles, and he's like the man. He just he loves his faxes. He sends me faxes. And, and uh, you know, when you first see the movie, that just sounds like a weird lie. But in retrospect, I'm like, oh my god, because <laughs> 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 that's actually very important. It's so stupid. Um, yeah, and, and he's talking about how billionaire friend keeps sending him crazy ideas in the middle of the night, but sometimes they actually work out. For example, child equals NFT. It turned out to, he, he said something like, uh, it eventually became like a huge money-making idea. It paid for the building they're in. How? So, what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What does that mean? mean? Ryan heard of NFTs. Uh, yeah, because children and NFTs, that does not, um, I'm, I'm curious what the hell that was supposed to eventually become. Are they um, buying NFTs with their parents' credit cards? I don't understand this business. Well, he calls it the Crypto Kids app. <laughs> Is that like uh, cars for like kids? A I guess but, it's a parody like, thing, is that what we're trying well, to Well, yeah, it's for? supposed to be like, funny, but, like, is there actually any way you could conceive of, like, that's just, that just sounds bizarre. Like, the you're not going to be able to get NFTs rolling with children, really. That's a really weird, uh, like, NFTs are already, uh, well, so that's actually a good, good, good section of criticism, I think, for this movie. It's out of date, unfortunately. Already. It's, yeah, it's come out. Oh, yeah. I mean... It, it's desperately trying to bank on, like, current trends, but it's already falling away. Yeah. Like, um, and NFTs is just one of the things that it's like, see, NFTs makes us shit tons of money. It's like, you know, oh. South Park, they make an episode in a week. That's yeah, South Park can stay Park. relevant. Yeah. Um, and then we find out, yeah, the billionaire is asking the scientist to put a volatile substance on a manned flight. Like, oh. Uh, this this will become extremely relevant, but it's just like, for now, it's just like, damn, okay. Um and he says, oh, I just won't listen to me. He just keeps saying, make it work. That he's like, this is science, not a religion. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I just, I wish they'd called him a scientist one more time. <laughs> I, I didn't get it the first time. I don't understand. And then we, uh, we meet uh, the third character who, uh, I guess you call her the fashionista. She would be Birdie, uh, mm -hmm. Birdie J. She's, um, oh, and, and in the background of the party she's currently throwing, you can see that uh, Claire is there and she says, I, uh, I'm i a hardline on climate change. If that scares you, go stick your head in the sand. This will be important <laughs> because 
that means that like part of the 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 candidacy she's running on is to be very pro you know uh, uh, doing something about climate change which will come up later as a part of why she'll be she'll leverage basically in terms of uh, how things are going to work so um yeah i don't know what to say about birdie j as a character uh this is just she's incredibly stupid she's uh so, like, yeah. so far beyond in terms of stupid that it, you know, it's kind of just annoying. Every yeah, line of dialogue written... she comes out with, you're like, okay, yeah, how is she stupid about this? She's not going to understand what words mean, I guess. That's the main yeah. one. She's going to try to. so talk... painfully one dimensional. Yeah. Yeah, she's going to try to talk to a lamp the, like it's an Alexa. The COVID era, and she's throwing a big party. Yeah. Which would be so dangerous. Well, and, and I think someone oh, says, right. like, uh, how are you doing that? And she's like, no, they're all a part of my bubble or, or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and she says uh, she's not allowed her phone because her like handler is afraid she'll t tweet an ethnic slur again when she thought the word she used was just a generic word for cheap. And then her <laughs> handler is like, Jewy, which is apparently yeah. what she got cancelled for. Which is another uh, thing I'm, I'm almost yeah. tired of seeing yeah, in movies as well. That clip. Oh, I can imagine. But I, I just like... It's, it's like bores me whenever uh, canceling comes up in films these days. I'm like, ugh, cringe, get yeah. away. They make a similar joke, God, I think, three times in this movie, but it's, but it's a different canceling yes. offense every time. And I'm not really sure which right. one they do. Was it, was it all of them? Is it like cultural appropriation, blackface, and slurs? I think they're the three they do. I th yeah. think so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Apparently, she she dressed up as Beyonce for a Halloween party. Yeah, and, <laughs> right. and every everyone like the camera makes sure to show everyone sighing and being like, "Oh, what an awful human you must be." And it's like, okay, just <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, well, right. it, it, it comes across so circle jerky to me. It's like, alrighty. By the way, this is the good part of the movie, everybody. This is the uh, yeah, the part where it's nothing gone. really happens. Yeah, it's a lot of time where we just set up things, so we can't really fuck anything up right now. Except it's oh, hard this is kind of cringe. It's main, yeah, you're right. It's mainly yeah. cringe. Speaking of cringe, uh, we have our fourth character, Duke. He's played by uh, Dave Oops, Batista, sure. and um, he opens with saying, "It's on along the lines of like, so Jimmy Kimmel, I'd like to say." Uh, actually, I love boobs. I don't hate boobs. Also, something, and you're just like, what? What is? What, what is like, happening? Like, what's happening? And yeah, then I, I never his really understood. best character already. I don't know the <laughs> ethnic slur one is that was that's pretty pretty strong <laughs> contention, but oh no, up there. I'm oh yeah. So what I should say is, of course, that uh, and I knew parts of this. I'd heard about this that there was a there was a gamer bro right winger uh, alt right person in the movie that was like the. Like a, like a meme, just like Knives Out had one, but the, the the one in this one has a bigger role. And um, man, so uh, he brings a girl on. She's called Whiskey, and she says, "I love my boobs. They're so much fun." Oops, sorry, feminists. And then, uh, and then in the background, the, the, the he goes, cringe, "Sorry, the feminists." Audible, the the sigh that rolled across the <laughs> yeah, we were so all just like, nose, uh, it just caves it in. It's just like uh, uh, yeah. people think this is clever. <laughs> It feels like Dry Johns is in the call telling you jokes about people he's heard say things. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, I don't, but... I don't even get it either. Why is he... Did someone accuse him of not liking boobs? I Apparently, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't understand how like, that initial when session is about, like... Scene, start... I thought he was trying to, like, ward off, like, accusations of being gay or something. That could also be it. I don't know. But why I would Jimmy no Kimmel idea. be like, oh, this guy's gay, he hates boobs? Like, I don't understand how we get to here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's really funny, okay? And then, uh, yeah, he says, like, when you're asking a man to slow down so a woman can catch up, it's the breastification of America. Men have dominated the Western workplace because that's what nature made us to do. And then immediately after, he starts getting slapped by his mum for not doing everything she says. Like, ha ha, yeah. that's great. Get it? Yep. Pretty funny. Not really? while I'm live, Slurry. mom. It sounds like the kind of joke you would come up with this kind of half-baked when you're like drunk at a party. Like, would it be really funny if like a red pillow was like angrily talking about how men are amazing and then his mom is like, shut up, Billy. Oh, hilarious. Like, oh, that would be funny. Pass me the whiskey. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, that made it fully into the film. He's That's the character. Uh, and, and of course, he's like quite scared of his mom and, and is, is that, that's the point. He's not like... Not everything he's he's... Uh, gunning for, and I mean, all these characters are sellouts as well. So, 
you know, we got four of them introduced. The the you've been given basically their whole characters already. Scientist yeah. man yeah. is they a scientist. Are, they are not much more than this. The this fashionista is, is stupid. Duke is a right winger, yeah. and uh, who even was the senator lady is like not that. I don't know. She's like neurotic, basically. Yeah. It's like that's that, you've got all of your characters. And you would think that for a film that's like two and a half hours long, you would get to understand a lot more about them. You don't. No. So that's it, man. Basically, this is more or less who they are. Which, maybe that's yeah. the point. You expect them to be more complicated, but in reality, they're incredibly simple. Maybe that's the point. Just like the yeah. point of this puzzle that they're about to do is, see, it's overly complicated when at the center is just this really simple thing. So but really, we recognize the film their is brilliant. Simplicity. You get it? It's really clever. It's it's foreshadowing for what the film is about. Yeah, they have um mm. a, a setup chess game that's mate in one that they have to just move the right piece in the right place, and then that completes, and it gives them a what she calls. Oh, I recognize that. That's tic tac toe. And then she's like, it's solved, so it's not tic tac toe. And then she goes, it's tic tac toe. And then they're like, it's Morse code. The X's and zeros are dots and dashes. And in the background, just dumbass characters like, I recognize tic tac toe. Yeah. What's funny She's is stupid. Yeah. Get it? The way that yeah. I guess you could argue it's cut so that we don't see the bullshit in between. But you know how uh, it's it's clear that uh, it recognizes the mate in one thing, and she moves it. And I was just thinking to myself, like, did anybody do that for the stupid character? Because she's not even going to know what chess is. <laughs> yeah, she didn't just say <laughs> yeah. out loud what move to make. Like, you need to get the get blue one. And it, and the thing is, I could believe her mistaking all of this. So it's just like. Yeah, Maybe well, because here's a the, here's the problem. They 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 are all in a call on the phone, but they all have their phones like just lying down. It's not like they use all their cameras in a group call and no, show it, each yeah, other their puzzles. Voices. It's just voices, and they're all just like uh, the, the 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 phones are just on a table or something. Oh, yeah, I probably should have so, mentioned yeah. the reason we're seeing all these characters is they've all been delivered a big box that has puzzles on it, and they got yeah. to solve them. All. A mystery box, if you will. They're all um, homies. <laughs> So, yeah, you solve that one, you solve the Norton Cross's Morse code one, and then it opens up a thing where you've got to create the word, well, the letter N out of a bunch of pieces that are all over the place, and then move that north, and then that unlocks the final, like, face it so that it's north. And um, once you do that, you get the, the final one, which is probably the weirdest <laughs> out of these four in terms of trying to make sense of this. It's playing a song. It's a music box playing a song, and they're all like, huh, and then... Um, you know, uh, Ditsy Lady is like, oh, I'm going to get Shazam to, to figure out what song it is. It's like an app, I guess, oh, for discovery yeah. music. Um, hey, how hey, how does everybody think how they figure that puzzle out? Well, so I'm, I'm, that's why I'm setting it up, right? <laughs> that's actually something yeah. that makes some sense. The idea that one of the characters puts the song into the phone, the phone tells them what song it is, and maybe that gives you a clue on how to solve the puzzle. That could be something. Instead, yeah. as you can see on the screen... Some fucking guy just walks on screen and goes, This is Box Little Fugue in G Biden. Oh, yeah, a our fugue. helpful Asian comes in from off screen. Yeah. A fugue <laughs> is, is a beautiful really music is. puzzle based on one tune. When you layer the tune on top of itself, it changes into a new structure. He, ju he just gives them this... not only the song <laughs> name and who made it, but also like an interpretation of what you could say that the whole point of it is and what the meaning is that applies to the puzzle. Yeah. That gives he them just the comes answer. out of nowhere. It's just like, what the fuck? Like, right, I, you know, yo, Ma, what are you out, doing but... here? And, <laughs> you know, the woman in the background who's looking to talk to Alexa about her app to figure it out, she ends up realizing she's talking to a lamp. Because that's... Yeah. She's just that's funny. Stupid. really stupid. Because stupid! <laughs> Oops. And yeah, um, I assume <laughs> that's part of the intention of the joke. Like, wouldn't it be funny if there's just this expert on music that's just sitting just off screen that explains all of it? And it's like, okay... I could understand that maybe being funny in like a Pink Panther movie, but it's really weird in your like incredibly genius whodunit movie where you're just like, how do these characters solve these puzzles? It's like, well, some guy will just do it. Who's there? You're like, okay, pretty cool. Yeah. Also, Duke's mom is in in, in the background of his house. It's and she like, solves like oh, two of them. Yeah. She's solving two of them. Oh, not it's this and this. It's like, mom, shut up. It's like, ah. Okay. But the, the other thing that threw me off is that Yo Yo Ma comes in. And he's like, "Oh, by the way, this is what a fugue is." And then they're like, "Oh, well, then how do we solve it? Pull up the thing in the middle." I don't understand yeah. how that follows at all. No, that doesn't They're translate really well. at all. He explicitly yeah, yeah. says just... a fugue is a beautiful music puzzle based on one tune. When you layer the tune on top of itself, it changes into a new structure. What does that have to do with pulling up the middle? 
yeah the yeah, only so like thing a smart that person would think like oh wow what what does this have to do with it is what do we have to play it do we need another one to play on top of it do we need to play it on top of some other tune or something in this well so here's the, the, here's the thing with pu puzzle boxes so if you have like a part like this in a, on a puzzle box that's mostly in like segment uh is it called you no know, sequential puzzle boxes because yeah. it's just a piece you can move so normally when you just start figuring out that puzzle box like oh shit i have like parts here i can move but it's not really moving around uh, but all they do is like find this one button that makes it open, and then they don't touch any other parts anymore. Well, they, they, so they touch get, everything they in get... perfect order. <laughs> exactly. There's no like figuring out. They're just like, oh, we do this and this, 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 and then for some reason they think, oh, we just need to pull the middle. It's like that's something you would have probably tried anyway. It's like, oh, I, I, I did all these puzzles, put my little inputs in there. So now, oh, there's probably some some button now that has been unlocked or 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 something I can pull like in the middle. But there's like. Oh, hey, this is the music that goes on top of itself, and then it's something else. Like, this, I don't know how you get to pull the thing in the middle. Because the only thing that fits is when, when it starts spinning around, it opens up a new couple of puzzles. Yes, That's the absolutely. only thing that fits to this, but it has nothing I to do guessed. with pulling the thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I mean. There's just no connection to that, but yeah. so, like, there we go. It worked, and it looked pretty. So, all right. And then there's some very sloppy direction where uh, Dave Bautista's mom yells out, that one's the Fibonacci sequence, even though she's across the room and can't physically see it. Nope. <laughs> it's, it's like, there's, there's a few moments like that in the movie. You know, people in the past have said, well, you know, Ryan Johnson's a good director. He, you know, whether he's a good writer or not, he's a good director. And I really think he's a bad director in this one. Like, there are a lot of scenes like that that are just really sloppy and they just don't make any physical sense because he can't keep track of where people are. The whole lying aspect is definitely going to have him dock points, you know. You, oh, for sure. That's the like it, what you show us is bullshit. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, you and know, that's I. Thing. Go ahead. Uh, oh, oh no! I was just saying, like that's just kind of the thing. Like I feel like in so many instances, the characters just kind of sound like they're just reading the script, and so it's it, like reading across the table Very on something they don't see. They seem to know what the other characters are thinking already before mm -hmm. they even know what they're thinking. It's just so weird. And fucking Benny Butts over here is just the perfect example <laughs> of Butt. somebody who just reads the script <laughs> like when he needs to. And then all other times he's just dumb as a post. Yeah, and, and, and like I said, we are at the easy to understand, almost kind of like fine part of the film where nothing really goes that wrong. So if you're not having fun, don't worry. Don't worry. Way worse. <laughs> um, so yeah, do uh, they realize at the center of the whole puzzle box is an invitation to a, a secret island where Miles Braun, the billionaire, is inviting them all, and he says that uh, you can come here, have some fun, and solve the mystery of my murder, like a fun puzzle game, basically. Yeah, that's oh, like cool. a thing they do, like apparently every year for like a weekend or a week, where they just come together. Yeah, and they're, do some they're, fun they're stuff. An old friendos. We get introduced to uh, an additional character, and she's got a box as well. She goes off screen and then comes back on with a hammer and annihilates it, basically, and gets her invitation yeah. out of it. It's the only good scene. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> like it, it can be funny because it's just like, oh, yeah, that is a quicker way of uh, yeah. getting through to it. The thing about it is, like, um, I don't know. Because um, maybe you'll say it, but I, I feel like if someone delivered me this big heavy fancy box and everything like what kind of a barbarian just takes a hammer to it and destroys it and and it doesn't even seem like she destroys it in a way that's meant to just break the outer shell she just hmm. absolutely thrashes it with a hammer and you have all the puzzle pieces flying off and the colored bits and all the me mechanisms on the inside are just flying everywhere and i'm like it's fucking savage. Yeah. What are you doing? Well, given her emotional state. You, I was about to say, with the additional context, yeah. you can argue it. But I actually do think it's a fair point to say, if yeah. she wanted to see what was inside it, she is hammering the fuck out of everything, not just the opening. You know, like, not, as he said, this is evidence. I think, yeah. like, this yeah. is evidence. Well, when, when I had pecan, first, you know. Yeah, yeah. When I first saw that scene, I at least, uh, they, they came with a tag from Miles or whatever. And so my first instinct was like, oh, she's um, she's clearly doesn't like Miles very much whatsoever. And so it's like when she starts smashing the box, it just kind of made me think like, oh, she must be on to like 
his quirky bullshit and just will not even really care and just start smashing his shit just to get through it essentially so sense. it already basically said like oh yeah so this character does not like this miles and is not really willing to play along with this stupid shit so that's what i had garnered so that's actually when yeah. you said that yeah, it's a decent like one scene of the, it's like it's one yeah of at least garnered plenty it. without it being spelled out it's one yeah. of the few instances where character is built in a way that is without dialogue and non explicit you know, like, well actually visually explicit but non explicit uh, dialogue. visually explicit sure but like it's it's building character and building character in a way that's at the very least consistent which is more than can be said for most of the scenes in this film exactly we don't get a lot of these so you know take it well it is so you gotta you gotta appreciate them yeah <laughs> where, where <laughs> you can find it um yeah, and so they're all off. And hey, maybe that's the point, right? She It's foreshadowing for how she's a disruptor because she cuts oh, through oh. the bullshit to, get oh, to, the, oh. Uh, oh, to the core mystery. See, we're figuring things out as we go. Maybe we <laughs> misjudged the film. Oh, it's going to turn out to be great. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm throwing these in just so that it's clear that it's like we understand what the film is about. <laughs> like, we, got, we got it. We got it. We're just saying that it's not very. Good I don't know anybody who won't at this point. Everyone's yelling what it's about at each other. You know, it's uh, like okay. yeah. I suppose there's that, but it's just like yeah. If I understand it. I don't think it's very other. well constructed. Yeah, when a film just wants to solve itself with its own, you know, omniscient knowledge, it's not really all that clever. It doesn't come across as intelligent or thoughtful. There's no chance for anyone who's watching this to play along with the movie to well, try and discover things or think about longer. it. Yeah, There'll be opportunities later. Points, There's one scene in is. particular. Whoop. Yeah. Um, so yeah, with, with the knowledge that they're all off, you, you just catch uh, uh, Duke saying, Ma, where's my spear gun? I got a pack. Do you have a spear gun? Which is a strange thing, I guess, to want to take on this thing, but sure, yeah, he's going to have a spear gun. <laughs> um, and then we see Benoit Blanc, who is sitting in his bath, playing Among Us. Uh, well, see, that's foreshadowing uh, as well for how there is an imposter among the the group. Oh, uh, lol. <laughs> that's like all. That's like virtually all mystery stories. I feel almost I that, there's an, that one of the people in the group is not who they seem to be. Well, why isn't it clever though? Why isn't it clever? Um, yeah. I don't know. I feel like Rags already just lined it out. Like th that's just that's just normal in a murder mystery that someone is lying. Yeah, it'd be uh, weird if it wasn't that way, you know. Unless you're referring what, to the person you, who's pretending you, to be a completely exactly. different person. That's right. Well, yeah, again, all I need to yeah. do on that one is just talk about how much that makes no sense at all, which we're going to get to a little we'll later. We'll get there. That's the point. But I started to realize when this scene came up, like you know, I I skimmed it a second time. I realized, like, oh, here it is. This is another foreshadowing scene of Benny Butts here. He's going to, <laughs> like, this is basically saying, oh, look at this really stupid, simple mystery game. It's so dumb, and I don't get it. And I think that's foreshadowing for later. I mean, like, he, he oh, says in dumb. this sequence, I don't get it. prompted by Among Us, that, you know, his Achilles heel is just things being too stupid and shit, and that... He's losing his mind between cases. He's he's a fueled up race car. He needs danger in the hunt. He needs challenge. He needs a great case. <laughs> because the, the world's most movie, famous the detective way, fueled up is out of car. work. And that's the thing. He's uh, he, he is the world's most greatest detective. As apparently that's essentially just in universe the case. Like that's what he's yeah. considered. He's just a famous detective known all over the world, and he's got no work. There are no there are no <laughs> mysteries in the world, and he, they're all <laughs> well they all got solved. He solved them all. He's too good. Well, well, no, there's no mysteries because the pandemic is going on, so no one is doing yeah, mystery no stuff no more. No, <laughs> nobody's playing yeah, outside inside. with the mysteries. No, one's, no <laughs> crimes never. <laughs> no one doors. does. Nobody That's murders crazy. anyone. Crime is over. Like it's all on hold. We've what solved this crime, old? everybody. What about yep. the mystery of the origins of COVID? Maybe we could put them on that. Oh, no, yeah, there the you go. Yeah. But the Blancs can't do that. That's a spicy. Oh, so also, gonna, I, gonna how, do, how, do we, how do we feel about the fact that he's actually bad at Among Us and Clue? I don't know why. Well, yeah, that's Among what I was Us. Saying. Like, there's a load of uh, the, the. You know, it's it's a game that has the chance. To, like, he said he doesn't even understand it. It's like, sure, makes that, no that, sense. That's not commentary on the game being too simple for you to like engage with. That's just commentary on you not understanding the rules. 
Yes. What they could have done, and we'll get more of this later, is what they could have done and said he's not interested in it because it's not real. He wants a real case. It just doesn't engage him. But what they say is that he's bad at it. And I'm like, yeah. is he stupid? It's not complicated. Same with Clue. It's an, yeah. like he should be good at Clue. I, I, it's such a stupid joke. It makes no sense. Clue, it comes with essentially checklists so that you could mark off things specifically. Oh. As to Wasn't who him. did what or who didn't do what. It's just deductive reasoning. Whole, well, I hate Clue. Right in, um, <laughs> wasn't this whole shtick in Knives Out that he knew that Anna de Armas, whatever her character's name was, that she was like a good person? Like he figured Straight, that, that was out really He figured out straight away, yeah. And he saw the blood in his so, shoe knowing she was involved. He should be but he really good at Among have. Us then. So yes. he should be very good at Among Us. If you see somebody acting sus, he'd, he'd, he'd be the kind of person <laughs> Well, the kind of payoff you'd up. expect is that they all go, Blanc wins again, and he's sitting there, yeah. like, dejected, no, like, but... yeah, I guess so. Well, Blanc needs to be a different person in order to facilitate the point of this film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Never change his character like that. It's madness. <laughs> Well, uh, uh, you, uh, sorry, I didn't catch exactly what your point was there. I thought you were trying to say that because he's shit in Knives Out, so he can't. He has to be shit in this too. Remain consistent. Oh, well, <laughs> I, I, I was, you know what? Sure. Okay, sure. Let's there are people that. who think that he's really, really an amazing, incredible detective in Knives Out, though. I think it's mm. just that they like seeing Daniel Craig put on the southern accent. I think that's It's it. so bad, though. His accent is terrible. Yeah. In both what movies. do you like mean? Is it is, is so hilarious. Like it is because it's, like, charming and how overt and silly it is. That would be my guess. Because, like, yeah, it stands I don't know. Out. I feel like nobody could tell me anything about Benoit Blanc, like, at all. Like, they couldn't really tell me much. In the same way that people could about Pryro, you know? Like, or, uh... Any number or Sherlock Holmes or any number of their Frost or you know, I don't well, know. a lot of what a lot of what Mr. Blanc here has are really obnoxious forced quirks. He's got the obnoxious corn dog accent. He was flipping a coin in the last movie, pinging a piano for no fucking reason. It just yeah, and they dropped both like, of those in this one. Yeah, they dropped both, and so it's like it's just so weird. It just it's clear that they're just forcing character quirks in there to make him seem more off, you know autistic or something like that so now it's all like oh no wonder he's so smart just so he's so quirky well, yeah, the way he dresses you know, as just... well right it's it's all meant to just make him stand out but a lot of the reason why they stand out is the characteristics not the quirks quirks can be annoying if anything just like because mm -hmm. we all know why they're actually there you want them to like be... that's represent i was gonna say you want them to be a result of characteristics not there in spite of characteristics yeah, yeah. i feel like he's representative of the movies themselves yeah in that regard so it kind of makes sense. Um, oh. So they all arrive uh, at the dock. They're all going to be getting on this ship soon, and, and obviously all of them are friends, except Benoit Blanc, and they're all just like, why are you here? And then one of them is like, oh, we're doing a murder mystery. You must, Miles must have invited him as a sort of like fun, you know, adding him into the mix. It's like, oh, yeah, okay. And then Duke shows up shooting his gun. They're in a dock in, <laughs> in Greece. I don't... In a city. They're yeah. just Wait. like, Addis, they're in a city. Wait, was he shooting he just, his gun or was that the motorcycle? Yeah, no, he just goes rolling up, no, no, shooting his gun, in the, his gun in the air. Oh, I missed that yeah. part. Fuck. Yeah, because <laughs> asshole. It's um, it's the kind of shit Jesus. where I was, immediately I was like, dude, that's illegal. <laughs> you did, I don't know if you <laughs> it's know It's going to be an investigation. The police. He's like, yeah, involved. but he's right wing, and right wingers just shoot their guns everywhere. Didn't yeah. you know that? We're and not like, the ones oh, who know in better. Foreign countries. They they wouldn't be the ones who know better. I don't even, this is what I mean, like, I, 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 it's such a clowny, like, perspective to have, that they'll just shoot everywhere, it's like, as, as opposed to being more familiar with gun safety it's, and it's, rules it's, than it's, most. It's the Simpsons yeah. Texas guy, he just shooting guns in the air, just every time he's happy. Yeah. No, I'm talking about the Texas Yeehaw. guy from the Simpsons. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's not the same since I've loaded blanks or whatever. What's the, what's the uh, <laughs> who's the character, um, Yosemite Sam? Uh-huh. Yeah. He oh, just shoots his gun up in the air. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just again, it's just like sigh with it. It's like, yeah, okay. Um, so then something <laughs> weird happens. They're all wearing masks. This is COVID times. We've had plenty of references to it. And then Ethan Hawke shows up with a special <laughs> medical gun, quote unquote. I don't even know if I, uh, I don't know what it is. He sprays it in everyone's mouths one by one. And all he says about it is, you won't be needing your masks anymore. You're good. You're good. You're good. Well, actually, nobody asks what it is. Except Benoit like, Blanc. Oh, yeah, okay. Spray it right in there. In the yeah. yeah. The... <laughs> <laughs> I 
This, an, like, this annoys me so fucking much. Everybody mm -hmm. just accepts this guy blowing bullshit into your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like, I struggle to believe any one person would do this, let alone everyone yes. here. Well, the joke Especially here is that the crazy right-wing person who thinks COVID's like a conspiracy or something has this crazy little medical thing that they got off some infomercial or from some podcaster, and they spray it into everyone's mouths, and then they take their mask off erroneously. That's the joke. Not that it actually works. Yeah, this is what I mean. Yeah. He basically... What we're supposed to understand about this is it's a, it's a COVID cure for everybody here. And it's just, but he doesn't say that, and I guess it's to avoid making this any more yeah. complicated than the, the Ryan wanted it to be. He well, wants getting us, rid of it would be the way of making it less complicated. Well, never, you this? never had to acknowledge it in your universe. Yeah, COVID never <laughs> had to be a thing. Um, but you know, the reason we're bringing this up is because COVID is like really a fake. Go ahead. I think it's just weird that like Benoit Blanc is just like, yeah, what's this thing you're shooting in my mouth? Like, <laughs> he just is chill with it. It's kind of like yeah. when She Hulk just like scrolled through the Marvel NDA and didn't sign. It's like you're a lawyer. Like, this is the thing that you're supposed <laughs> to be put into. It's the same here. It's like you're a detective. You know, like yeah. Well. I mean, we know like he's been brought. Like, especially given the information that we know later in the story, how does he know that like Ethan Hawke? Isn't aware of like other dynamics that you know are absolutely. Playing. You should well. We can say what it now for poison? the sake of it. <laughs> Basically, the, the lives are in danger here, as far as Blanc is aware, uh, and the, the, yeah. the, the, there's there's a lot of concern about exactly what's happening here. So the idea that someone has a gun, puts it in your mouth, and just shoots <laughs> liquid into it, and you're just like, he's like, what what is that? And he just goes, it's good. You're just gonna make you good. You'll Don't worry fine. about it. Yeah, and then yeah. shoots it. And he's like, okay, but seriously, what was that? He's like, now you're good. That's it. There you go, and then he leaves. I think I have I I have a right to know. Well, it's the <laughs> Hang on a sec. Let me check the script. Oh, we're good. Open wide. I have I have open oh, wide. <laughs> All you have to do is a wide yeah. variety of medications. Like I said, the, the 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 COVID is out for the rest of the film. It's gone now. Any references to it? Are, yeah. I don't think there are any references to it at all in terms of even the COVID. Only... No. I feel like literally the only thing it was there to do was to show the one stupid chick with the mask that was just like the. Open netting thing to show. Yeah, that she's just yeah. So it's like, well, oh, they I have, have there's 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 reason behind that. Like the right wingers don't have a mask. She has the super thin one. The senator has it over her mouth, not over her nose. And then the scientist, I think, is wearing it properly. So is Benoit. Yeah. Like, so uh, it's like this very brief, like, oh, look at who the assholes are in this movie. <laughs> they're just all at assholes. a glance. <laughs> okay, COVID's gone now. Um. Oh yeah, uh, really, really weird choice to show that everybody's just on board with getting that shit in their mouth. I never, ever, ever would be. I, dude, I'd hesitate to accept it if they told me what it was. Yeah, I'd be like, uh, okay, so when when did we agree to this, and why is this necessary? Why well, you got to shoot me in the mouth with it? <laughs> yeah, and like, what <laughs> yeah. is your like, what is your like authority? Who even are you? Like, are you his well, I mean, person? I'm Ethan Hawke, the famous <laughs> actor. Yeah. In universe, he's Ethan Hawke. <laughs> Yeah. No, I'm I'm the the guy from Moon Knight. I got glass in my shoes. See, glass onion, glass shoes, it all. It's all. Makes he was sense. uh. Hey, hey. He he was filming Moon Knight, and that's why he was able to do this. Apparently. Oh, I was it. He like was he, in the area. Yeah, like he was only available because of where he was at. For that's Moon Knight. funny. That's um, pretty funny. <laughs> though I remember reading that he still had to take a flight to get here. So maybe oh, like this well, small flights maybe that actors consider like the something. same as we would yeah. a taxi or something. <clears throat> Well, I guess he was close enough. Yeah, he you was know, closer Greece, than he would normally money, be, you know? I think, is the point. He didn't have to okay. fly across the world. He was already maybe in the Mediterranean area. The old Roman imperial and then, like, provinces. He shows up on set, he's got all of the blood trailing beneath his feet. It's like, oh yeah, I like to keep in character even when I'm <laughs> offset, you know? Just that take it for the um, also, role of, uh... I'm not sure what happened to ER. Hopefully he'll he'll pop back. Oh, Seems maybe he's, he's gone. Well. Could be yeah, internet, could be nothing, I don't know. COVID got him. He no, should have got real that shot. Uh, got yeah, that he shot got the, the shot in the mouth and it killed him. No. Shit. No. <laughs> Used the wrong gun, damn it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, and uh, it said real quick, but uh, uh, Duke says about that little, little gun spray thing, no pineapple in that, right? Duke don't dance with pineapple. Uh-huh. Like, okay. I'm, I'm saying right, that. that. Because you don't like, you don't like pineapple, got it. it. Yeah, he doesn't like pineapple. Um, so hmm. anyway, uh, a glass, question mark, doc, lifts up at the island, and it's like... Uh, Lionel's like, whoa, is that a Banksy? And then the pilot just says, piece of shit. And then piece he's like, shit. piece of shit. Oh, wow. That's what it's called? 
Yeah, like, for some reason, Lionel doesn't pick up what he's saying when he says piece of shit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, that's going to become relevant. That's why I'm bringing it up. You guys know what I'm yeah. talking about, but yeah, there's a dock. Why would a glass dock be a Banksy? He's like Don't a know. Because he's rich. Don't you get it? He's rich. Yeah, he does glass. Okay. He's stupid. Anything he has would nope. be the famous something from someone. Yeah, but Banksy's not... Eh, whatever, it's fine. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> he's so rich, even Banksy was convinced. Um, or something, so, I don't know. Uh, Miles, is, we see Miles, Edward Norton. He's playing a song that was written for uh, Birdie. And she, and then he says, uh, it's the say, there's a very guitar it was written on. She's like, whoa. And then he spots... Wait, um, it wasn't, wait, it wasn't written for Birdie. I thought it, I, I can't remember what he says. No, it's a Beatles song. It's a uh, Blackbird. Oh, sorry. I thought he said, I thought he said it was written for you. Um, cause I don't fucking know what's happening in this world, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, it's yeah, a Beatles said, song and this is the guitar Paul McCartney wrote it on. I thought when she said, you're serenading me with my song that it was... Uh, to be honest with you, I oh, had two well, different theories. I was like, is a song she wrote? A song that someone wrote for her? The song I think she just like, likes it because yeah, yeah. bird. But, uh, well, the, maybe she's just so vain she thinks the song is about her. <laughs> Seriously, that's, that's why uh, she wore uh, blackface. Yeah. I wasn't 100% sure of what I was supposed to gather from it. So this is this is good that we have this moment where I figured out. The point I was going to bring up, though, is that he, <laughs> he tosses the guitar to the floor when uh, he goes to see the next person. It's just like, ah. Yeah. Which um that, is, that for gave me, me uh, physical pain. Yeah, for me it's already like, oh, he's a cartoon. They're always a cartoon. Like, mm -hmm. why? No, he wouldn't do that. Obviously, he wouldn't do that. If he recognizes no. the value of that thing, even if it's not to him and to a friend, he wouldn't just toss it to the ground. I think he says like kidding or something, or not really. Does he? I don't I think. That. Yeah, yeah. He says uh, he was just joking. He just wanted to see her expression. Oh. Well, so why would you toss said... a guitar to the ground, though? No, because... no, he d he doesn't say he was kidding. He says the look on your face, it was worth it. Like, getting the guitar just for this moment. Oh, is that? Oh, I thought he meant it was worth lying just for that little joke. I didn't think he meant it was worth destroying a guitar that one of the most famous musicians yeah, no, I think it's the, in all history. It was worth getting, like, the trouble of getting that guitar just to see the look on your face, I think is the point. Also, right. if, as people have pointed out, it's a right-handed guitar and Paul McCartney's left-handed, so that doesn't make sense, but fine. Oh, oh no! Whatever! Or my, or my interpretation was correct. Get that's that. possible. That's possible. I, <laughs> oh. Possible. Always. But I would still so say, even with Rags' interpretation, why the fuck do you just toss a guitar? Yeah. Because he's oh, so he's jerk evil. And okay. Care. Well, and and yeah. by the way, I guess like there's so many ways you could run this. I was about to say like, well, then why would she care about it so much if he was to be just like throwing a guitar that means nothing to her technically? But then it's like, oh, well, maybe she's too stupid to pick. So you know, the answer with her whenever she does anything is she could be that stupid. <laughs> mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I suppose just points of interest, and I consider these things to be you know small pluses in and among a disaster. He hugs Claire oh, and her expression. She's like really happy to see him and good for a hug. And as soon as she crosses past his view, she's like very much unhappy. And then when her face is back in his view, it's happy again. Like it's, you know, it's the kind of stuff it's like, okay, yeah, she clearly doesn't like him. Um, but you know, stuff like that, I kind of like because it's a little bit more subtle than everything else. We get. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Duke hugs him. and It's all great. But then he spots Andy and has a similar reaction to a lot of people. Um, but his is, seems to be the most shocked. He's like, oh my goodness, what are you doing here? Kind of. Yeah, ER. Yeah. You okay? <laughs> what are you doing here? What are you doing here? We thought Ryan got you. <laughs> Maybe he did. Maybe right. yeah, he could still. That could be Ryan right now being like, oh shit. <laughs> no, he's they got me. Listen, listen, for the Morse code taps, he's trying to tell us something. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and the way they do it as well, like, his shock is very strong. They focus on it quite a bit, and then it's just gone. Mm -hmm. It's kind of funny yeah. in retrospect, because yep. the first run through the movie, this is his shock to see someone who he wouldn't expect to come here because they have bad blood. That yeah. is what you're supposed to have contextualized this as. But second run through, this doesn't really make sense at all, actually. Like, no. This would be Especially flooring in terms of him seeing her. Yeah, this should be like one of, like a... This is where the shattering kind of things to the this point where, where he would say, You guys see it too, right? Yeah, <laughs> or even worse, but we'll get to it. Yeah, <laughs> um, 
So, uh, yeah, and Benoit Blanc's arrived and he's like, what the fuck are you doing here? I was like, oh. Also, the last character to introduce is Guy. There is just a guy on the island. He walks around sometimes, he says hi. There's nothing more you really yeah. need to know than that. His name is Herring, he's, Red. He's just a random hippie or something. Nah. He's, he's, he's not even a Red Herring, he's nothing. He's, he he's even... nothing, he's just in the movie. He was like, for me oh. a bit, because I'm like, okay, well, he's going to play a role in this, right? No, nope. no. <laughs> I kind of figured from the beginning that he wasn't going to play a role. Actually, I could I figure that yeah, Ryan would yeah, commit to having him be absolutely point, useless. Exactly, yeah. he's worthless. See, because you're overthinking it too much. Not everything is related to this central mystery that you're buying into. I'm smart. Well, I guess <laughs> yeah. another example would be they have the hourly dong. What is the what is the value of that other than just? Oh, I'll tell you the value of an hourly dong, Mahler. <laughs> oh my god. Go ahead. Later, not here. Not All right. Here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> actually, uh, not PG. I'm just fun, making a promise. Fun thing to know is that the, that that sound is is Joseph Gordon Levitt, who has a cameo in every one of Ryan Johnson's movies. That's a fun fact for you. Good for okay. him, that's I fun. guess. Yeah, it's a very. I think for this cast, that's kind of the fun fact of right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I accept that as information. Um, but yeah, it's a, it just goes dong for every for every hour, and I I, I think that I'm just mentioning it because uh, he then says I got Phil Glass to compose that dong, and they have dumbass characters say who's Phil Gas, like not like oh. you said Philip Gloss. It's, it's just an it's a knee slapper. <laughs> like, is what it is. Cat, uh, she's so dumb. My favorite it's, character. It's, yeah, it's really. She's so dumb. She can't even hear. <laughs> she can't even hear. <laughs> she can't even hear. <laughs> Then again, I guess, yeah. So funny. Mm. Yeah, um, it's real clever. And this is, I know it's a dumb joke, but why would, how, how, do you, how does Philip Glass compose one single dong? It's that's just what, a bell. That's, th this is a moment where they would say, you don't get it, do you? That's what's I funny about it. <laughs> yeah. Glass, it's funny because you get someone so talented to make something so small and stupid. Ah, he's right. very the money rich. He's, he's Zumbo. rich yep. and he throws it around. He's Zumbo. Have everybody else do things <laughs> for him. Uh, Why didn't he say he got Joseph Gordon Levitt to do it? That might have been funny. That would actually probably make because that would be more confusing. Just like <laughs> yeah, what? yeah. He he got someone who isn't in any way known for being a musician or anything. <laughs> yeah. like that to compose yeah. it, and it actually is his voice. So that anyway, it's fine. But they um, have to stay on theme, so make it dumb. We we learn. That they have rooms. They are assigned by the chakra they are most closely associated with by Miles. And uh, using their biorhythm monitors, you can access your rooms. It even says it acts as a key. Oh. Wait, wait, real quick. Monitor. Wow. Real there, quick. This can is we rewind? Oh, okay. Yeah, go back. Go back. Sure. Okay. So after they're starting to leave the beach, and Benoit's like, is someone going to get our bags? I guess, okay. I guess we'll just leave them there. Then Andy and. Um, Benoit introduce themselves. They like they introduce themselves, even though no one is looking at them. Oh, you, 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 I assume you want this highlighted now, just as a because yeah, this is a little. That's something perfectly that... normal on the first way around, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I think so. That's fair enough. Makes perfect sense the first time around. I would agree. <laughs> Only. Um, anyway, so yeah, uh, uh, the, the I, I was just gonna say it all as reality, and then people can comment as they wish. So they've got little wristbands. The wristbands have a chakra associated with them and it'll have a biorhythmic monitor that acts as a key for the individual rooms and uh, these wristbands will lead them to their rooms using haptic features. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay. So all of this pretty annoying. Well, all this to me is just like yeah. wow, what crazy <laughs> bullshit. Just give me a fucking key card, dude. <laughs> it also it doesn't even matter. It's not it like... It doesn't matter at all. Yeah, it, you're right, it never comes up. It only gets in the way. No, like I said, yeah, he's Why? throwing in like a bunch of red herrings essentially, and I'm pretty sure the dong was a red herring and the oh haptics was a red herring. Uh, but when you throw a red herring, like generally you throw it someplace, but you don't like throw it down where you're walking and then slip over it. Well, the problem yeah, is that would it, causes, be it causes problems because it it goes out of plan. It's like, well, how does certain characters get into certain places later in the film? They all left if the doors this open. This is the way that they work. Ah, yeah. All right, well. Good thing they did that. That's what I mean. Yeah, if he hadn't later. have established you need a key to get into each of these doors that they all have individually, then there'd be less issues because we would all just assume, exactly. oh, I guess you can, they all trust each other, they can get into these rooms easily. 
But I think what Regan's basically trying to do is being all like, oh, you know, those of you who are familiar with the whodunit genre, oh, maybe you should pay yeah. attention to these. But then neither one of them ever come up, and I think he's just like, ha-ha, it's so funny, because you guys thought but it would again, lead somewhere, but it didn't, because it's stupid. Of, it's, it's worse than that, Das, because it causes problems <laughs> as an element in the story. <laughs> well, and so, do. Uh, just with just to help me out, what does it mean to be haptic, by a wristband, to be haptically guided to your room? What does that mean? I know it like vibrates the way that it vibrates or pulses. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. sounds incredibly more. fucking annoying. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You remember how like, like every... when you're playing in, in God of War Ragnarok, right? When you need when you're looking for the pieces of the mask and then you you whip out the mask and the <laughs> oh, controller is doing that. It'd be that just forever though. And you're yeah, like, can you just tell me where to point in the direction of my room? And he's like, No, you gotta figure it out with your haptic feedback. It's like <laughs> I got the <laughs> mystery. But the part well, of this I'm is funny is like off, I can see someone being like, "Yeah, it isn't." That's the point, isn't it? He's such an idiot. That Miles, he's such a fucking moron. That that's what he would do. It and it's like, but how no far are we going with this stupidity thing? Can't he just be normal? <laughs> very, very far. No, it's a subversive. <laughs> Bad. Here I am um, being punished for thinking about it, wondering, oh, you know, maybe he put trackers in them, and he's going to use that to his advantage later. Ah. Mm -hmm. No, you know, since he's very clearly the bad guy, obviously the whole time. No, I thought maybe, no. <laughs> I thought maybe. Oh, okay. Well, there's probably trackers in those, and that will come into play. Bad guy is clearly uh, Ethan Hawke. Ah, uh, yes. And he's given them all it. a poison injection right at the beginning. There, they're all going to die. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what if that was the murderer? The, the whole time. injection is haptic. Yes. <laughs> so I'm um, stomach. Yeah, he uh, he drags. Uh, well, he says, "I'm happy you're here," to Andy, and then says, "Benoit, gonna need to have a chat with you." And uh, Mister Blanc is like, "Oh my god, oh my god!" He's like a kid in a candy store. It's kind of strange. He's like, "Look at that! Oh, this is great. Gee whiz, Jiminy Willikers!" And he's like, "If there's any role you'd like me to play Jiminy in this Willikers. murder mystery," <laughs> um, and then he gets cut off. He's like, "Is that a motor car?" When a the, motor car. Like, yeah. Why, no what, why, why you, motor car since Why would you say it that way? Because he's quirky. He says he's things quirky. like that. Yeah. And uh, this is one of the many examples of just how much this character sucks. He's like, uh, the response to him saying that is, is um, Edward Norton being like, well, it, it goes with me wherever I go. And then he says, why is it on the roof? And he's like, because I, I can't really drive it around the yeah, island. There's no roads here. Yeah, like, uh, and, and see, to me, I'm just like... Wherever he goes, that's foreshadowing for where it goes at the end of the film. True. A gr genius film. Uh, that's, I, yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm here for, to just highlight all of those brilliant foreshadowing. It's just that this is one of those moments where you 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 could picture uh, Benoit looking at it and knowing exactly what's going on with that. It's, it's, it's clearly a prized possession of his that he's got in this position to show off. It's like a big old... Amazing trophy to him. It's not even for driving necessarily. It's like a uh, an achievement. But he's just like, why is it on the roof? You can't drive it on the roof. It's like, okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> is that a horseless carriage? <laughs> 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 what what modern wonders look, will look they at, conceive of? Look at how uncomfortable next? those chairs are. Yes. Look at how shit they are. <laughs> well, the desk, desk, it'll give you like chairs. bumps on your oh, arms. Oh god, you don't want to put your arms on that. <laughs> Look at it. See, but on Miles' side, audience. it's not a normal. On the on the guest side, it's not. So oh, they get to suffer. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. Then uh, I agree. Then Benoit says um, the wooden box was sent to my home with some simple children's puzzles to solve, and they have a little reaction shot of of uh, Miles being like, "What? Like like you know, partial offense, partial confusion." Um. I was going to, happy to talk about this one because I, I mentioned it while we were watching it, and um, there's a couple of ways to read this. Uh, I think that go, make it go from making sense to not making sense to making sense again, and then not not making sense again. And to run it through, be like, you see, he's a great detective. So puzzles like the puzzles we saw at the beginning are puzzles that he would consider to be children's ones. And I think the mm -hmm. counter to that is no, he's a detective, and he's aware that he's a detective. He knows the difference between an adult puzzle and a children's puzzle. He should know very well, that the puzzles he was solving, as much as they may be easy, they are not children's puzzles. Um, whether or not a child can solve them. I'd be like, okay. Mm -hmm. but to say that, you'd have to be either an idiot or just kind of a jerk. Oh, wow, see? So this is... This is, this is, this is though. That's the thing. This is a counter to that counter. He's doing it to <gasps> piss Miles off. We know that he wants to uh, kind of shake his ego a little bit uh, when we find out more. Mm -hmm. So you're like, you could argue that. And it's like, 
Well, no. Why would he do that? That's just going to make him look a little bit more suspect when there's absolutely no reason to do that. There's no benefit he gets by making fun of Miles here. If anything, it just, it just makes him seem... It to me like a Benny character flex. Well, so I'm actually curious. What is the intention here? If it is uh, on, the, on behalf of, like, just Benoit's got a bit of an ego, and so he wanted to let him know, yeah, I fucking aced those puzzles. You know that mm -hmm. he didn't beat those puzzles. He yeah. just got given the broken ones. So really, it's just about hurting Miles' ego, right? That's why he says that? I think Essentially, so. Essentially. Sure. But I think at the, the same only... time, I think it's just spelling it out to the audience, all like, oh, the puzzles were simple. But they and weren't. so it's all like, oh, foreshadowing. Yeah, but they, they weren't, weren't, though. Yeah. Well, you know. I, couldn't, I wouldn't have been able to solve these puzzles. I mean, well, yeah, remember, the music one was just Yeah, the like, music one isn't even about... Not even, it's not the name of the song or who puzzle. made it. It's the meaning yeah. behind, like, the nature of the songs and then what you're supposed to do on the board with that. It's like, what, you think everyone's figuring that out easily? I don't know. If we just have a handy Asian dude sitting next to us, like all of us. Yes. Yeah, we're, <laughs> all all easier. Easier. we're all friends with Yo-Yo We're all friends with Yo-Yo Ma, and we just keep him around for stuff like that. So, yeah, um, I always found that, that comment... To be more so, it's fun for the audience to be like, hey, 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 yeah, your puzzles, they're children level. And it's like, we're all sitting here like, as if you could all solve it. <laughs> like, all those <laughs> puzzles. And the um, other thing, the other layer, if you will, is that we've already established that he's bad at children's puzzle games. Yeah, he said his, his Achilles heel mm -hmm. is simple puzzles. Yeah. yeah, he's bad at those. Feels a bit, except for when he isn't. Feels a bit jumbled to me. And yeah, I, um, I think his goal, as I think even gets the point of stating it is to come across when he's here as, as sort of welcoming and warm and chill as possible to ease information out of people as much as he can. Uh, yeah, so, you'd think so. So making fun of Miles here isn't exactly like the best choice and I honestly think Miles should be able to pick that up. Just be like, if I was sitting down, I'd be like, he just described those as children's puzzles. Why? Like, are you just trying to annoy me? Or because the funny thing is, he didn't even design the puzzles. I worked hard on those two. Yeah. Right. He, the, the, this is no. It's a point of criticism ben from Benoit in this film that he didn't design those puzzles. They're not even his. And it's like, so you're not even making fun of him at that point. Yeah, it's who he hired. Do you know what I mean? There's there's a lot. The more layers you peel, the more like, wait a minute. Did Ryan even think this far, or do you just want to throw that in? I don't know. But you see, the more. Then this will be the defense. The more you look into it, the more it doesn't make sense. It's just how sad yeah, are we for wanting this Glass Onion movie to make <laughs> some level of logical sense? But at the same time, it's brilliant, though, guys. Because yeah, so else is like calling them simple might be because he didn't actually solve them. It's like I I think we have so many explanations. It's impossible to tell because I think all of them lead to different motivations, different goals, and a lot of them fall apart in terms of like why would he be doing that now? It's, there's so many options, I don't even know what to do with it. Uh, just, so we could just keep going. Um, well, I mean, there's a much more relevant problem here in that why would Miles at all let this guy stay on it? Oh, we're nearly there. For any reason. Oh, <laughs> so, just because that's a huge plot. Yeah, I'll go. We'll that. Yeah. It's a massive I'll, one. Uh, I'll summarize the conversation. So he's like, Is it the do you, um, it, Miles is like, do you have it. the invitation? He's like, yes, of course. And he provides it. And then he's like, uh, this is just like all the other ones. And he goes, is there some way to reset the box? And then he goes, oh, someone reset it and sent it to you as a gag because we're doing a murder mystery. And he's like, oh, I am mortified. And then he's like, why? I have the pre-definite detective at a murder mystery. And he's like, Mr. Braun, I've learned an anonymous invitation is not to be trifled with. Which I guess is a reference to the first Knives Out. Because that was anonymous. Um, mm -hmm. And then he's like, I'd love to have you here. You're officially invited. Try and solve the murder. It's going to be pretty amazing. Like, he basically just sells it as like, top-notch. And yes, uh, that is a very fair comment, ER, both before and after completing What's the film. Why the hell did he allow Benoit to stay? There's yeah. problems with this scene, I think, both right now on its face and also after we after get the, after we learn, learn everything. Oh, yeah. This scene gets worse with age. Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it, it does. Um, and even here, there is this element of you have the world's most famous detective and you set up this little murder mystery party for all your friends. You don't. That's like, um, <laughs> I don't know, it's like maybe like maybe you, you've got a daughter and she loves volleyball and so you rent out like a volleyball court and she gets all her friends and they play volleyball. Yay, we're having a good time. It's wonderful. Oh, look, there's pickleball. And then you also invite like the world's <laughs> champion top gold medalist volleyballer <laughs> and she just fucking demolishes all those little shits and she puts them in their place. Yeah, and um, she... oh, 
and to do just uh, pretty much the same analogy, but just really help drive this home. If you created a mini golf course, like 20 courses, all for your friends, and then just the fucking best mini golf player in the world just turns up yeah, and says, can I play too? Tiger Woods or whatever. <laughs> and and to remember, it's even worse than that, because the way this should work is first, per let's just call it this, first person to actually, you know, uh, pot the, the, the balls in uh, the mini golf tournament, it's over for the rest of them. Let's just put it that way. That's how it works. If it were like that, it's like, of course I don't want a fucking expert here. What do you mean? This is going to ruin oh, yeah, everything. Yeah, that's right. It's not even like mini golf because you everyone yeah. can play after yeah. Tiger Woods finishes and loops you three <laughs> times around. Everyone can still yeah. have fun. But yeah, but once it's solved, it's solved. No one else can solve it. This now. is like, it doesn't get more clear than the example. You created a murder mystery. Everyone can guess the second they think they have it. And the person that does it wins and it's over for the rest of them. And you're inviting a guy who that's his job. Yeah. Why? You don't even know him. How is this fun for you? And the, the answer to the question, of course, is, well, but he needs to be in the story. You're like, oh. <laughs> oh, well then. Yeah. It's really, really lame. Uh, this is one of the many ways the whole film crashes, unfortunately. <clears throat> of course, if Benoit mm -hmm. was not here, there would be extremely different results. Oh, yes. Yep. So, uh, it's kind of annoying, but that's that's that. Yeah, he's staying. That's, that's the decision that uh, Miles makes, so... Continuing on, um, there's some hard kombucha that was sent by Jared Leto. Uh, that everyone... It's Morbin Juice. Once again, his <laughs> name is associated with quality. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the thing is, it's, uh, it's a part of a clue, kind of. It's in a little model version of uh, Miles' car, all the bottles, and then Duke is like... Oh, that, you know, that car, Baby Blue. Remember the time you almost pancaked me with that car outside of And... And then he gets cut off, and Miles says, Anderson Cooper's birthday! Coop's parties yeah. are memorable. Aim. Which is really weird in retrospect, and I almost yes. really want to talk about this now, but I don't know if... It's hard, it's, I don't know if I'll remember to talk about this later. I'll but, um, remember. I'll write, it, I'll write it down. Write it down. Oh All right, my cool. god. Do, 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 do. We'll talk okay. about that I just, later. I just... Uh, what what we'll say now is that conveniently the camera cuts away from Duke, so we don't get to see his response to that. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. That's uh, right. He more lies. Well. More lies. <laughs> lies. Um, you see, if you just don't give people relevant information and go out of your way to hide relevant information in this Who Done It, that's really, it's really clever. So then uh, Duke shoots his gun again. Because why not? As they do, yep, he, yeah. he's asshole man. I mean, his people, gun, I mean, like right wingers. Uh, in this murder mystery, the gun may become pool. relevant. Don't you worry. Hmm. Uh, and then Benoit, because he is an incredibly talented detective, stands in the middle of the pool and stares at two people having a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> maybe just thought they were hot. I was getting so fucking frustrated with this shit, man. <laughs> like, I, I, this is the kind of stuff where I'm just like, you're a world renowned detective. How? No. <laughs> you can't even all you need is, like the the way I find it more believable is if he was like walking backwards or pretending to sort of swim while getting near enough to them to kind of listen in. He's just fucking staring at them. And uh, mm -hmm. by the way, they notice he is staring at them once we see them in a different angle later on in the film. Yeah, it looks a bit like a creep to be honest. Well, and, so and they're like detectives staring doing at me ever. Ex the, and, yeah, yes. and, and they're like oh shit. He's close. Well, he's not close enough to hear them anyway, so I don't even know what he's fucking looking at. <laughs> just the like, fact what is that he they're talking. He what just is he accomplishing? He wants to creep them out. Yeah. Uh, if the world famous detective goes around staring at people in pools, it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna be a little, you know, it's gonna. So Maybe then, that uh, was the trend back in 1947 or whatever time period he's from. <laughs> <laughs> the time machine he stepped out of to get into this movie. Uh, yeah. So. Peg and uh, Birdie, the fashionista, they're having a chat, and Birdie's annoyed. She's sad because she used to be the cool, popular one that uh, Miles wanted to hang out with, but, you know, if anything, it's now the reverse, and she, she thinks that sucks. She wants it to go back to the other day, day, days and times. Now, when you first go through this movie, you might have been gathering from kind of what they've set up that Miles is going to have a quote-unquote murder, 
and you have to figure out who tried to kill him. Now, I, I, I even thought this when I was first watching it, that he was going to die for real, and that we'd have to figure out, Same. oh shit, who's yeah. the actual yeah. killer. And so what they're doing here is like, see, she kind of has a motive, and I'd just be like, no, she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a motive to kill someone jesus i mean she's really stupid so maybe it doesn't matter yeah you know her. it could translate that's true see yep. you just misunderstood the movie you fucking idiot damn it yeah everything is stupid and that's genius everything is stupid either stupid or arrogant and that kind of covers all the bases oh pretty much joy so benoit <laughs> comes out of the uh the bathroom and he notices that in the i guess i don't know if this is like the living room or whatever in this place but he's like is that a fax machine why fax is that machine? here and and they're like, well, Miles on. doesn't even have a phone. <laughs> I can imagine uh, LeBlanc going to the wall and just like flicking on the light switch, and then the light pops on. <laughs> like oh, the power of the sun and the. How do you harness this magnificent magic? I just want everyone to know, uh, Miles is what they refer to in this film as a tech billionaire, and he doesn't have a phone. <laughs> That's okay. Tech cleaners yeah. are quirky and strange. Instead, like, he has. I want everyone to understand this. Sorry, because we've already gotten over this. We've had several days to process. Never will, Mueller. But there's they people in will. chat who've never heard of this before. Miles does not have a phone. He instead, in every location that he owns throughout the world as a billionaire, has. And brace yourselves. Sit down. Put your belts on. He has I've a. I've got my fax, belt on. Fax machine. Fax right? machine. Everywhere in the world, and it just automatically prints out any and all information that's sent to him. Be it sensitive, it could be the most sensitive emails you could imagine. It's a fax mm -hmm. machine, he has one in every location he's familiar with, and they all print out a copy of whatever anyone's sending to him at the time. Yeah. Well, that, this, Why to me, that, what? is on par, if not, I don't know, which one do you think is worse? This, or the vomiting whenever you lie shit? This... Um... Um... Yeah. The fax uh, machine is this ever, seems like, actually worse. relevant. Yes, it it, it, it lends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we we can get to how the, this clues them on as to how Miles is a major suspect for how this could have happened. If you um, we'll get we'll get there. Like, was, yeah. Well, wait, I'll I I'll put it in chat. It still so. work with just a phone, you know. Well, keep talking, okay. to somebody, so I can tell him. <laughs> Well, it's like well, see, the thing with the, the thing with the lying in Knives Out is just that it's like it's such an insane impossibility, you know, that a character would even have that trait in the first place. Yes, like, but at absurd. least it's even also. just a little bit more understandable than the stupid fax machine thing. Because I can imagine if somebody feels like on under pressure, they can at least feel like kind of queasy. I guess maybe not to the point where they barf like five seconds later. But it's or a like, minute depends. Yeah, but a, a, a tech billionaire who could be anywhere at time, and somebody needs to get a hold of him to call him for anything, is just using fax machines at fixed locations. Like, how the fuck does he even stay in business? <laughs> that's that's a very good question. I think the thing with the vomiting is that people don't treat the uh, the she can't the fact that she can't lie to like they don't use that throughout the movie like you could solve the movie pretty quickly if you just asked her more appropriate questions and then no one ever does that i don't know yeah it's close they're in the same league i would say yeah they're they're in the same league but this fax machine is so much less plausible by a country mile i think it's, it's a, a it's beyond absurd and like just destructive in terms of something you have to make me believe. This man has faxes everywhere that just openly print everything that he ever has sent to him <laughs> yeah. the, to any level of private yeah. information. Who knows who takes care of all these buildings? It's just there. There's nothing secure about it. It's just, just in there. case Miles has I mean, to walk at... into that room randomly and there's something that he needs to have, then there's a fax there that three weeks ago spat out that piece of paper. Look what's being printed right now. It looks like a series of numbers it could even be bank account numbers don't know <laughs> yeah. whatever it could be anything. benoit blanc can it's... have a look see if he wants why not yeah and the other thing he says is that i just really like analog this is not yeah. analog that's the point <laughs> i i wrote that down I know, too. He's stupid. He's he so likes stupid. analog tech like a fax machine <laughs> Why doesn't he, like, use a telegram or something instead? Yeah, LeBlanc knows what those are. Well, that's, that's the thing, because he <laughs> believes that that is analog. But again, the tech billionaire... Is that meant to be the joke that he's Yeah, so yeah. Does, does he not have anybody to tell him what analog actually is? Or does he... 
<laughs> no, that's the point. No, you don't understand Maul. The point is <laughs> he has a lot of dumb ideas, but nobody tells him because he's oh, rich. Okay. That's well, here's the, the, here's the thing. Based on, that. based on how he's characterized, I literally think it's impossible that he's a successful tech billionaire. I just yeah. I cannot believe it at all. When you Somebody get to that extreme, dumb. where he just doesn't understand like basic anything, it, it, you know, Birdie is the same way, right? Like she's just too mm -hmm. stupid to live. <laughs> like <it's... laughs> she has to be reminded to breathe. Well, we actually made that joke when watching it. One of the characters oh, does yeah. indeed die from what looks like asphyxiation. We were like, they forgot how to breathe. They're that stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um. So this is where uh he explains himself. I guess, and all of this to Benoit. He's like, we're a team because disruptors recognize each other. Uh, Birdie was on top of the world as a disruptor, and then she did the Halloween costume tribute to Beyonce and everything fell apart, but she disrupted her own disruption by making sweatpants during a pandemic, and she made a killing. Mm -hmm. and, and he's sort of sitting okay. there like, uh, oh, what? Okay. And then he says, oh. look at Duke. People think he's just like a slab of meat. And then he went on to become the first influencer on Twitch to have a million followers. Whoa. Wow, Twitch. I've heard of that. Is that disruption? No, that's, <laughs> I don't know. That's, no. that's the opposite. Mm. That's playing within the bounds of the established He's building it up. That's like just models. seems yeah. normal, yeah. This is just operating on that's a like gradual growth. This seems like the opposite yeah. of disruption. Disruption well, is like, I burn Twitch down. But is that the, the point? Because he's stupid? I don't know. We'll be asking that a let's, couple times. Let's rewind Maybe very Maybe it's briefly. because of the kinds of opinions yep. he has. Because right. Benoit yeah. asks a very important question that I wonder at all times while watching this movie is, why are they even friends, any of these people? He says, you know, you're such an eclectic bunch. And then uh, Miles says... That, oh, disruptors recognize or know other disruptors. And based on the way he describes everyone, it makes it sound like they all became friends recognizing their own achievements in different fields. And that's how they met uh, and got together. And but we're going to find out that that's not true at all. Yeah, <laughs> because when they met, they all had nothing, basically. Yes. Yeah. So, no, you Which are is... absolutely right. I have no idea how this group of people became friends. They are all completely no. disparate and they had nothing when they met. Yes, it's bad here, but it gets worse later. The one thing I'll say before we skip past Birdie is that her, her story makes absolutely no sense. So he mm. says that she was a fashionista. Okay. You know, she's on the cover of magazines, all that sort of fun stuff. He describes that as being part of the establishment bullshit. So she's not a disruptor yet. She becomes a disruptor by uh, wearing blackface and getting canceled. And then he makes it Hell seem yeah. like she invented <clears throat> designer sweatpants. I don't understand that. In 2020. <laughs> yeah, I widely don't understand that. I guess she made really, really good ones. Maybe because it's the pandemic, everyone wants to chill at home but and they need sweatpants. Surely there, there are companies sweat. that are making that and already. She... Yeah, yes, but man. she makes them so good and so cheap <laughs> they make the killing. That's not disruption. I don't know. I, I know. <laughs> How is that disruption? <laughs> well, the way he describes it, she disrupted her own disruption. So is he saying that she tanked her own career with the the uh, inappropriate Halloween costume, and then she tanked her own tanking with making more money? Like it's just he's contextualizing just the things that happen as disruption, and I guess that's yeah, the that's point. The yeah. See, you got it. Why did you have to think about it so much? Oh, I just, I just find that so beyond unsatisfying. Among all of the bullshit, like contradictions, that that's what I'm getting from this character. It's just like don't understand anything he's saying because if you do, you'll realize he's stupid, and that's it. You're know, like, okay. And then the problem is that there are other characters in the film who also say things that don't really follow logically, but that's like not like the, the detective. Point. It's a, it's well, it's a fuck up, right? No. It's a mistake. You've you've made a mistake writing these characters. Madness. <laughs> but in this case, he's never heard of there are no flaws purpose. with TLJ that he's heard. I'll have you know. Uh. Yeah, he says um, Claire is a soccer mom th in beige, throwing grenades into machine politics, and Lionel <laughs> oh, didn't God. wait ten years, licking on the taint of academia to push boundaries in science. He just did it. First he off, science him. Yeah, I think once again we were just like, <laughs> oh my God, look at him with his science. You go, science man. Um, yeah, and he says, if you want to shake things up, you start small. Some norm or convention or whatever. You break something people want broken anyway. That's the infraction point. But then, well, you'll break more things. Bigger things, break something no one wants you to break. Because it turns out, nobody wants you to break the system itself. That's the true disruption. Everyone here got to that line and crossed it. And that was uh, 
That that yeah, that's supposed to be, I guess. See, it, it's foreshadowing for something that happens at the end of the film, maybe. Yeah, that speech you can come back to what they meant, but we'll get there. You can come back to that speech for a lot of things that happen in this movie. Um, it's just it's especially confusing in terms of um, what the hell Ryan was going for. Does he believe in it or does he not? Because it is the is almost the villain about speech. Himself, and he's the disruptor, right? Like he comes into genres and yes. franchises and then mixes them up, really? which is so, kind so of funny, thing. right? You've written a story that is to now maybe that's not what he meant at all. But if it could be interpreted as what a story that venerates his own process of uh, making films. Well, because yeah, hmm. this, like I said, villain speech, but. It seems to apply to the quote-unquote hero of this movie. At that's least that's right. what I think the film's going for. In which case, yeah. are you validating the perspective? And in which case, are you applying it to what you did to Star Wars? Because a lot of people have said that's what it seems to be. Whether or not they're in favor of the film, I've seen people saying that. Mm -hmm. But, like, there's no robust argument against that perspective in this film. The the perspective, the counter is like a caricature. Well, the counter is you're an if idiot, right? That's what it is. It. Right, okay. <laughs> what, the, 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 only, the only reasonable counter is that you're stupid. Well, and you have the, the, the quote-unquote hero being like, that's some real red pill stuff, Miles, which is a little <laughs> bit confusing to me. That's Pretty, uh, uh, that's a pretty <laughs> embarrassing line as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it's a lot of those, though. It's only embarrassing if you're not based. Um, yeah, and then she does the thing. She. This is all stuff you could have tried to draw. Um, if, if not a little bit vaguely, sometimes I think overt. But she just goes around the room and says, Lionel, you work for Miles. Miles bankrolls Claire's campaign. Miles is invested in Birdie. And when Duke... I can't believe this one, guys. Those ones... Uh, what I was criticizing with those ones are that just, just, we could have figured that out for ourselves, but you've just Thank told you. us explicitly, yeah, so we understand the story. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. But the just last one... there was any room for misunderstanding yeah. these caricatures... And instead of feeling, one, yeah, instead of feeling, you know, that it was explicit with the last word, she says, when Duke got banned from Twitch, Miles <laughs> set him up on YouTube and promoted oh. the stream. <laughs> what? He made him a YouTube account. <laughs> he made him a yeah, YouTube account. He opened account. him a YouTube account. Yes. Oh, do you make a YouTube account? I don't understand what, how this What does works. it mean, Ryan, with for, my a gun? for a billionaire to set somebody up? Does it mean that he, like, paid for ads or something to roll? I I like can his, I can understand if he said he promoted travel? him, but the reality is, if some let's just say Elon Musk had a stream where he promoted EFAB or something, um, it it, it might it, it'll like give us a boost of some kind. But if he did it once and it was like over, that it, it would just be dead. Dwindle immediately, yeah, because people aren't that interested in that kind of thing. There needs to be a yeah. big crossover. What is the crossover of that? Well, it's just he set him up. Don't think about it. Just this leave what I mean. It vague, it, so it's just like oh, what Brian, happened if you had. <laughs> Right, he, he, he just wanted to reference YouTube and Twitch and stuff, but he doesn't understand these ecosystems. Yeah, because it comes know. across as he though he's know. aware of Among Us because he maybe watched AOC playing it, and then he was like, <laughs> oh, what is yes. this on the site? And it's like, it's on Twitch. What's Twitch? It's a site where people play games and they have followers, and they didn't. he's like, oh, my character will do that. My there he goes. He's like <laughs> LeBlanc in real Blanc life. Dead Batista, yeah. It's like you can't. You couldn't have gone one dude, one gamer bro could be like, oh no, you wouldn't well, say that. Well, maybe there was one gamer bro who said, well, you we probably wouldn't say that. It's like, shut the fuck up. I'm the fucking writer, you <laughs> dick. Like, yeah, you're just, you're just the gamer bro here on set. Oh well, maybe not. You know, I don't know. Maybe um, everybody was like, this is fine. It's part of some broader like objective with this narrative. Either way, she's made the point real clear, and then she ends with saying, all of you are holding on to Miles' golden titties, and you won't let go. Oh, thanks for spelling it out. Yeah, yeah. And, she, and she says, like, Next and all of you, and she says, all of you would stab a friend in the back just to hold on. And so, like, thank you for declaring something that will happen later in the film. Well, it's worth because they she she makes this point even grander and again in not ten minutes from now, and then again later on. Yeah. And it is so it mind-numbing in terms of, like, I get it, man. Like, because well, yeah, these characters, but... you know, we, we are... By the way, I don't know if you know this, chat, but we're getting close to 40 minutes in. Yeah, we, uh, the how much first, like, hour well, and 10 really. minutes. Just It's insane how little, hour. how little progress we've made in terms yeah, of story. There, remember that the whole box opening thing sequence? It just had... It's just cut it. Like, it just doesn't... Yeah, it could have just yeah. been an envelope. It literally could have just been envelopes. Yeah. He introduced all of the And then it would at least make sense, a little more sense, why Benoit Blanc is right there. Here, anyway. Oh, I forgot to bring that up. They can't figure out how, uh, who 
played the gag of getting Benoit Blanc to turn up here, and I was just like, why don't you just ask? <laughs> now, you might be yeah, like, well, because yeah. people will just say no. It's like, no, 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 you don't know. Like, he believes it's a funny thing to do. That's a fun thing to do, to bring the world's best detective to the murder mystery. Ah, I kind of like that. It's like, so who, who did actually do it? And then I was thinking, man, if the invites just had two and then person's name, we'd know. Yeah, or there is some, there's something on the card that has a marking in the I, I'm not even going that far, because um, he, be looks, anything. he looks at the card, and it's, so it's, it would have been... I mean, we're almost there, but you guys know whose card that would be, and it's not like he can fake it, so... It, well, yeah. I... Uh, that's another thing. You probably should be in a position where you can make them so they can't be faked. Or you have a tracking pin in them. Or you have a unique ID. Anything. Well, nah, he mean, loves analog. He, what, no. Well, why <laughs> would he, he do likes, that? If he likes why analog, would... why wouldn't he send something that's more fitting with analog this? Well, but also, like, why would he do anything like that when he has, like, zero cameras in this entire building? <laughs> Not if, he, if he enough. does have cameras in this giant building, then that changes everything. <laughs> It changes so much, so we have to assume that there are no cameras here. We Good actually do have on. to assume that for many reasons. The whole film falls apart yeah, a if, times. Well, the whole film falls apart. The protagonist goes to jail for a long time. If, the tech uh, billionaire. Name the one tech billionaire in the place that has yeah. cameras. I bet you can't. Yeah. God, we're gonna get. Yeah, he's got then again, I mean, he uses fax machines, so I guess he has no cameras. Fortunately, well, he, he thinks... does. Otherwise, the whole film plays out in a very, very, very different way. But like, do you well, understand what I mean? Though go everyone's he doesn't have one. If everyone's sitting down, and he just goes... <laughs> so anyway, who did invite uh, Benoit? And they're all looking around like, well, it wasn't me. Not me, not me, not me, not me. And then, you know, the person who did it would also say, not me. And then he'd be like, nobody wants to own up. It's, you're not in trouble. I, I think it's great that he's here. Just, who, who, who did none of you? And then, like... Everyone just show me your invites. Exactly. And there's going to be a yeah. person without one. <laughs> like, it would be like... <laughs> Isn't that a yeah. thing where you have to, you'd have to show your invite, like, show no, your invite, or it's the, like, no like, rags, no, you just needed to know where the place them. was. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It's so dumb, because okay. then he'd be like, like, you guys know, right? We already know this is bad enough on it is, but it's even worse. If he'd done that, and there was, he realized who brought him, he might be like, oh, shit, you brought him? Yeah. Oh. And okay. then, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, anyway, uh, uh, she shits on the whole parade, and, and, and then Miles gets up and goes, but, uh, you, a couple of lines up to this point, Birdie's been talking about how she's just a truth teller, she tells it like it is, and nobody likes that, and, and to be fair, yeah, I've met people who say that all the time as well, um, and, uh, Benoit says, it's a dangerous thing to mistake speaking without thought for speaking the truth, and then she goes, are you calling me dangerous? And it kind of annoyed me because I was like, he, he, come on, he pretty blatantly insulted you there. That wasn't well, sneaky. she's a glass half full kind of gal. <laughs> she, she, she hears that and she interprets it, you know, yeah, yeah. But that's almost or a whatever. smarter move than a stupider yeah, move. That's, yeah, but I... Because, you know, if it was yeah. a smart character who said something like that in response, you'd be like, ah, oh, they're side, sidestepping the whole you just called them stupid thing to take the dangerous. But because she's so stupid, I think the point is that she didn't even recognize he called her stupid and only recognized <laughs> dangerous. It's like, yeah, uh, okay, you know, you know how it goes, or do you don't? I don't know. Um, oh, there's it's just a small thing, but I kind of hate that no one there uh, responds to Andy like in their own defense. Everyone's nope. just like, yeah, you're right. They all just sit there and take it. Well, they're all evil. <laughs> and they know, exactly. and you know how evil people always accept guilt for the things that they've done. Yeah, it's not like they yeah. create any number of rationalizations for the choices that they've made. Yeah, um, some eavesdropping Got happens. On. I don't want to talk about the eavesdropping until we get further along, because my god, that's a uh. subject. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna leave that alone for a sec. So they end Alrighty. up uh, in. Yeah, I'm gonna leave all of this for now. Basically, there's just lots of things being picked up in terms of information. We're gonna get a whole scene talking about all the stuff that was picked up later. So we'll just keep moving for a sec. Um, something that's annoying. Especially on my latest watch through, I realized he gives them all personalized drinks. They're all their favorite drinks, and everyone's very happy with their drinks, too. He knows them pretty well, and he's got them all their drinks. If you look at the glasses everyone gets, or at least the containers for their drink, all of them are extremely different. Except, it just so happens that Miles and Duke have almost the exact same glass. That is oh, incredible, you're right. lucky, considering yeah. that the event that plays out was spontaneous. Uh, exactly. You know what I'm getting yeah. at? 
Yeah, that annoyed me. I was like, oh, great. Because, of course, if Duke liked any of the other drinks, then uh, that would have been awkward, wouldn't it? Why didn't he just make all of the glasses There's look an... basically the same? That would have been <laughs> a smarter move, like because that? Ryan doesn't redraft. He will refuse to redraft. <laughs> See, what was cool is, like, he's handing out someone, you know, a very specific, like, scotch glass. Someone gets a wine glass, and then he gives a peg, like, a party cup. You know, because he's like, I guess that's to imply maybe that he doesn't take her seriously, or it implies that that is legit her favorite kind of drink and environment. She she's like a student or something. You know, it, there's plenty of control from it. That's great. But then it's like, well, it just fucks up a huge payoff coming, but that's fine. Don't you worry about it. Uh, so yeah, this is just, I guess he's gonna start explaining, I guess the glass onion. Um, oh, sorry, I didn't want to go too far. Um, Benoit starts eating, like, a wrap, and then says, uh, oh, that has a kick, and he's like, oh, yeah, because you're using Jeremy Renner's hot sauce. And, um... Another name. And Jeremy then he says, this. yeah, he sends me a whole bunch of those hot sauce. You should have some. Just keep, keep a few. Go ahead. That's going to be very relevant uh, later. Very relevant, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would argue it's going to be hyper relevant later. <laughs> and you know, when someone tells you that you can have some hot sauce and you're visiting, what you do is you don't like take it back to your room. You don't put it in or your just, luggage. Like, put you don't set it up in your room. And say, well, I'm not going to. Or right then you. Like, well, oh, well, Fringy, you see, <laughs> here's the thing. That's where you're wrong. You you keep it on you at all times. Whenever something needs to be sauced, it is there. <laughs> well, yeah, but maybe the sauce helps. Yeah. And this kind of shit, I really I like this. I guess is better than out of nowhere stuff, which he does plenty of. But this is still really annoying. Where like you know we're just playing a chess game at the beginning of movie two guys, and then one of them is like, "You beat me at the chess game. Here's your reward. It's a collapsible ladder." And you're like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> and like, enjoy your collapsible ladder. There you go. And then later on in the movie, you're in a cave, and there's this really decently sized chunk of land you can't get past. Like, if only we had like, oh, and then he gets his collapsible ladder. And you're like, what? What? Come on! Like, what? That's like I that's knew like this coming from handy. handy. That's like a comedy thing. Ridiculous. Yeah, Where it's someone just yeah, happens but this to is, need this the is extreme. partially a comedy. This is partially a comedy. Shut up. <laughs> well, I guess it's all. I guess that takes care of that. That takes care of that. Yeah. Well, the yeah. other thing okay. is, he doesn't now even it's seem no longer to en- stupid. He doesn't even seem to enjoy how spicy it is. It looks like he's not yeah. enjoying it. So why would he take some with him? Yeah, well, he exactly. says it, he he says it has it. a kick. Maybe he did enjoy it. It didn't look like it. He's like coughing. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> then we have a really weird line. Welcome to decipher as as you wish. Uh, she uh, uh, Claire says, "Why do you have the Mona Lisa in this room? It's like having a Shea poster in your dorm room." What's a Shea poster? Like a Shea Guevara? Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand what connection Shea. I don't. Does this mean I? I'm not clear on what she's trying to say. Having the Mona Lisa in your glass onion is on the level of having that. I, I... Well, doesn't doesn't <laughs> she say that? Precious, you don't maybe? even understand that oh. reference. That you don't. Wait, even... I've. I thought the idea was that everything else is very like modern and expensive looking, but she's like, "Oh, and well, you have I a think, fake I think the, print." I think the conclusion is, yeah, fake print. Like, oh yeah, well that why not the a hell fake print, have... but not the real thing. So why would you have yeah. just a print of the Mona Lisa in a museum that has all these other? Original so she, oh, so she's under the impression that everything else is real. That's fake. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Which, which, um, I guess you could. Well, I was about to say, I guess you could say is reasonable. I don't know what's in this fucking room. To be honest with you, I haven't checked. But, yeah. Um. Obviously, yeah. I think it is reasonable. Most people would assume that is a fake Mona Lisa, not the real one. That's that's of course, fact. because the real one would be <laughs> yeah. Because you're that not going to have insane. the real one. Nobody would have yeah, it. Yeah, other than not gone happened. That would be insane. Clearly. So anyway, that's the <laughs> real Mona Lisa. <laughs> oh fuck! Oh, how, God that, damn how is that it. even oh, possible? Fist. That that happened. Um and yeah, so I'm just gonna it, yeah. So first of all, that's the real Mona Lisa, and here's here's how it's the real Mona Lisa in universe. Um, Miles says, the Louvre closed thanks to the pandemic, France <laughs> needed money, and so I bought myself a little short-term loan, the costs were mainly in the transport, don't tell the insurance guys, but I installed an override button for its security, I need to be able to look at her in the eyes without the glass between us. Uh, oh. He's... Um, oh, like an if he guy. hadn't, if he hadn't done it like that, man, it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> the, the if only no way. So, the fact that he even has it, of course. Uh, it all, like, okay, sure, dude. So all I right, think the important part to point buddy. out here is it's not his. It's no, on a it's loan. A loan. 
this is on this, loan. This is everything. This, this is not, why it's in the it's in the thumbnail, it. right? We were happy to never. spoil that. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, you would never have it in a million fucking. So years. what do we stop? Where well, do you, you know wanna, what I, I would like to point out him him calling it the Louvre. Um, it does not even make uh, sense when uh, everyone he would have spoken to and all the transport shit for this. He would have heard everyone else calling yeah. it the Louvre all the time. Like that kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't get. I don't well, see how you could before, possibly right, with Philip Philip Gas like that happened again with that. Remember. <laughs> Well, I guess you could argue that one was misheard, Sorry. as in, like, someone says glass yeah, and then she goes gas. Her. But this one hey, is like, he's only ever heard the word Edward pronounced Warner. correctly, surely. Yeah. You want to come walk through the Louvre? All right, here's the Mona Lisa in the Louvre. And then he's like, ah, yes, in the Louvre. Yeah, he's it's been like there. The Stewie Griffin, it's the Stewie Griffin cool whip. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and then he's like, so why is it here? The Louvre closed thanks to the pandemic. I doubt it. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> well, even I, if, I mean, does he mean like close temporarily? Well, it, it, he means temporarily, yes. right? Well, but you move on. You, the next line is France need money. It's like, um, oh, I, 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 <laughs> France I, would rather I, France would I rather die than give up on Mona Lisa or just any other means by which governments raise money for themselves. No, they loan no, out they the Mona Lisa bills. to billionaires to have on their islands, I guess, and then they make sure all that the they time. Can all Island with absolutely fuck all security measures except for this little thing that can be overridden. Well, yeah. Good so if thing. I can explain, even. if I'll explain, <laughs> yeah. So there are no cameras on it. We have to assume there are no cameras in this film. Uh, yeah, which is insane. Which is insane. That there would be no cameras. There were eyes all the time on that. It's painting. the honor system. The French would give ah, it to the billionaire, the and, and on the honor system, <laughs> please just make sure it's well taken care of. Don't scratch it. Don't drop it. You know. Um, you know. <laughs> well, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll just, for the sake we don't of send any guards, no cameras. Just, just take care of it. All right, we're, we're cool. For, right. For the sake You're of chat, cool. oh, for the sake man. of people listening, the way this works is it's in like an encased, secure thing that protects it from everything. However, when you stand far enough away from it and leave it alone, uh, it'll come down. It'll be nice and safe. You could even theoretically, you could just shoot it from a distance. And well, actually, <laughs> I was about to say, I wonder if that the the shield would come up from the sound of the gun, but the bullet would reach it by the time it's done, and that. Of yes. course, yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much. All so, are, yeah. uh, whenever a loud sound or a significant vibration happens, a shield comes up, a glass shield. And, Except uh, for when it doesn't. That's well. So that is its form of protection. Already, that's incredibly fucking stupid. I don't even know mm -hmm. what. Very dumb. What the fuck? It, it would just be. A, you need this thing under every secure thing. And if Miles had a way of looking directly at it without the glass in the way, it wouldn't be a little doll that you press in front of it. And neither would he tell everybody about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. allow me to show all of the, this gaggle of idiots. Just like, we're just going to show them exactly what it is to my most precious possession. Yeah. Really? Well, he probably doesn't think he's the, they're idiots. Right? Well, so the response right. to this is, of course, yeah, but he's stupid, though. <sighs> But so like, I made even, even stupid people can love something so much that they'll want to protect it from everything, right? Are people too yeah, stupid this... to not know preciousness at this point? It's almost he like they would be the setting Lisa. up the character that he's dumb, but he he adores art, and that's the thing that he's super like on well, the wavelength of in a way. He uh, he adores the Mona Lisa. He loves it. It's right. like one of the most important. Yeah, and they make it clear world. that it's he talks about how much of an inspiration it is. He he has like a little yeah, thing. Uh, he says, uh, my mum took me to Paris when I was six. When I looked at her, it changed my life. Uh, da Vinci invented a brush stroke that can leave no lines, and that's how you can look at her and her expression will change every time. This simple thing you thought you were looking at, it can suddenly take on so many layers and so much depth, uh, and it can give you vertigo. He's explicitly talking about how it makes him feel, and it's an inspiration of many sorts. Like, it's, it's kind of awkward to do that. And then, like, treat it as though, like, he... You, what you want, right, is the villain to be like... I have this because of how much it's important to the world, and that's, that matters to me, that I have something that's important. You don't want him right, to be, like, than... talking about what it actual, the value it has as a piece to the mind, sort of thing. Is that, yeah, like, an artistic earnest. smart thing to do? That's like well, earnest. it just makes it harder to right. hate him uh, for that. You, Seems like, to be an art lover. Especially, like, I'm trying to, like, lover. awkwardly set up the motivations between the two people who fight over this thing, and how <laughs> we're supposed to be on one side, when it just feels a little <laughs> uncomfortable to be on that side. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, just to go back, I'm still stuck on the fact that he has it at all. So, for the record, uh, France shut down for COVID. Let's say they shut down the Louvre then, I'm not really sure. Late March, and this takes place in May. 
So it's been like less than two months, and I guess France is so broke already. They're like, here. <laughs> yeah, they've already resorted to writing out the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa. Yeah. yeah. All of uh, the has only that, thing now, keeping France afloat somebody, is maybe, Louis tourism. I don't know if that's like, has that <laughs> ever happened ever? Like in no. terms of in modern history? I can't imagine it. Um, if the, if we found out that was a thing that happened, I'd just be like, you fucking kidding me? What, what were the crazy oh. level of things that had to happen to make that happen? Governments loan paintings? Is that something that happened? Like, I'm sure that that's something that happens. How often and how expensive are those paintings? Out of curiosity. Yeah. It's, it's like taking an old I... gothic cathedral and renting it out as an Airbnb because you need money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, I think that's the mechanics explained. That's going to become super relevant in however long it'll take us to get there. Um... So, well, of course she asked then, of course, like that, that, that explains how you got it, but why is it here? Why is it here now? And he's like, I want this to be in the room when I announce something that's going to change the world. And they're all like, uh-oh, getting awkward. And so he yeah, uh -oh. throws a little rock to uh, Mr. Blanc and explains, this is clear. That's what it's, it's called. Uh, it's like, a no, new solid not. hydrogen fuel. It's incredibly powerful. It's radically efficient. Zero carbon emissions, and it's derived from abundant seawater. Clear with a K is affordable home power. It's an affordable home power solution. Basically, he's cracked like super energy, uh, and it's in the form of this this hyper fuel that he's found. Like, hmm, hmm. Okay. So that sounds really good. What's the catch? And then uh, I think it's it's Lionel that's like, no, I was clear with you. We need two years to test if it's safe or even viable. And then uh, he reveals, oh, it's viable. And and everyone's shocked to find out the glass onion itself is powered by clear. Wow. That's actually going to become relevant to be later. Working, yeah, uh, it seems yeah. working great. <laughs> Highly relevant. But also, like, what does he mean when he says, like, yeah, it's good to go? It's like, has it been improved by, like, several different governments? Like, what what does that mean? Well, and what the should we wait? Do they understand the chemical properties of clear? Do they know what it is? Well, so I would or actually, I would go as far as saying best faith interpretation is that it's passed enough tests that Miles is willing to use it and that the science man is like, no, we need to make sure it passes every possible well, stress will... test ever. That is the interpretation well, I would likely go with without additional information. Ex well, without additional information, because yes. the additional information uh, is coming later. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. get to that. <laughs> the additional hey, information the way, destroys baby, the whole movie. Rock back? Yeah, essentially. Oh, it's like, that's hey, another baby, good point. Yeah. Back, by the way, he doesn't. He doesn't ask for clear back. Uh, Benoit will oh, now hold on to that yeah. for the rest of the movie. Oh shit! Right, you're right. Right, oh, right. hell. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. He gets hot sauce, uh, he hot gets sauce, hot sauce puts it. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and let's, it's a little goodie bag. And let's please, uh, like you know how this would go if you highlighted this. If you said all you need to do is ask for it back, and the whole movie changes, the response would be, "Yeah, but he's stupid." But I'll, the I'll, ultimate I'll, hero. I guess all the problems. Problems. Touch on the Mona Lisa thing, as people have pointed out, like, you know, paintings will get loaned out to other museums, like, they get moved around, sure, but like, you it's know... The like, <laughs> that, that, it's the Mona Lisa! No, so that was, that was what I was about to say, it's like, yeah, but the Mona Lisa, though, like... It's the Mona Lisa. It's used as the it's example like, of like a priceless thing. Like it's the Mona Lisa of well, things. it is which, priceless. It is priceless. It's the Citizen but, Kane of basically. art. It's I, kind, of, kind I, of. I wonder if that's even that might be understating it. It's like the most famous painting. It's in the, the most value. It's it is the most. I'd say it's the most everybody knows famous what the Mona Lisa of is. all art. Well, that's what I was. In I was stumbling out to try and say. I was about be, to say yeah. it's the Mona Lisa of art, and it's like. Well, it's correct. There is no equal. There is it would no probably equal. be more accurate to just say it's the Mona Lisa of human civilization. Kind of yes. Mm. And it's just sitting there. It's just sitting there in this guy's house with no security. Because the no security, no back. cameras, and it can be Behind... killed by someone pressing a little statue in front of it. I can Wait, what do you this mean movie and make the French the real a little statue before? What do you mean it can be killed? <laughs> That's with what. A little... <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? Well, the the potential to kill it is. You know what? The potential to kill it is still right there. It's not that great of a defense system. Yeah. Exactly. He he went ahead and it's he showed it to the all. disruptors how to take it down. <laughs> I'm sure the guy who him fire his gun off randomly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and before yeah. So he, before we move before we move ahead, I just ahead. I think this is a really good example of what we sort of mentioned earlier how, about how bad the dialogue is in terms of getting from piece of information to piece of information. This is a really good example. So he just gets through saying how important and impactful the Mona Lisa is and has been throughout his entire life, and he 
he clearly, like we said, he's an art lover. He collects and owns so many expensive show offy things. And then he says he wants to do something mentioned in the same breath as the Mona Lisa. And Blanco's, what does that mean? As if it isn't perfectly obvious what it means. Yeah. And then Verdi <laughs> starts explaining the very, like the perfectly obvious explanation of what that means. And Claire cuts her off to say, wait, why do you have the Mona Lisa in your living room? And that leads him into his thing about his clear thing that he's going to do in front of all those world leaders. Yeah. But that question makes no fucking sense. But it's just there so we can segue into his thing, thing that he's going to do for all the world leaders. Yeah. No, yeah, the, this still... is the thing. As much as it's going to take time and effort to point out all the contradictions, like the basic just getting information uh, presented to the audience is really amateur. Uh, and it has been throughout the whole fucking movie. He does a lot of that sort of basic just, this is this. And you're like, thank you. That's that, I guess. This is blatant. This is gonna mm -hmm. I figured you'd be better than that at writing. Nope. And conversations don't follow. It's just like... No, they it's don't. The... Ugh. I hate it. I hate it. Um, That's a good example, though, of, what, of that, yeah. where it's just like a non sequitur. It's like, this has nothing to do with anything. What? Ryan Johnson can't write for shit? How dare you? What? Brilliant writers of like the current age. So, um, yeah, the, he, he explicitly mentions the heating, the cooling. Even my fax machine is powered by Clear. It's like fuck even off. the fax machine. <laughs> oh, wow! No. <laughs> so A crazy person, absolute mad lad. Um, yeah, he Lionel says, dialogue. "I'm done. You're gonna get someone killed." Which is like, huh. wait, what? Like, that's, why? Whoa, what? what? Whoa, we need to be concerned? He, what do you mean? It's interesting that he says that, considering what happens at the end of the film and the uh, the zero casualties that result from yeah. it. Yeah. Um, it's then, what we call you know, plot dangerous. Well, and it's even worse because his yeah. response to that but, is, you're not getting out. It's already happening. That's a that's a pretty bad response to somebody saying. Kind of a threat. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're, you're stuck, buddy. Better shut your mouth. Well, so and that's that's actually important because uh, again, because this movie is pretending to be a different movie, like on purpose. The idea there is ah, now Lionel has a motive to kill Miles. Ah, yes. Mm. See, they've all got motives, and we, the film, planted the seed in your head that there was going to be a murder mystery. Well, and you know Sorry. what? Uh, it's really wait. your fault for for uh, paying Didn't attention. Lionel well, already mentioned he signed off on this anyway, though. He did. You're right. He did indeed. So, it, it, uh, there is a manned he... mission with Clear that's going to be happening. We'll get to that in a bit. Yeah. But yes, you're right. Mm. Oh God, you're right. Fuck. Though it's really uh, that weird that he's before. like. <laughs> I get. I guess his line <laughs> isn't. Sudden. His line is before releasing it to the world, but after releasing it to people. Maybe the uh, the yeah, move yeah. here would have been to say, well, now that he's surrounding it, or now that now that it's around him, he's concerned. Yeah, but when other maybe. people take the risk, it's fine. That's not what the film says, but that's. It's so interesting you say been, that, Rags, because um, I think you've correctly concluded what? that from the information they've given. But nobody seems to have any problem with standing in this room for the rest of the film. No, <laughs> it's yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, but you know what? I've we I've jumped ahead, arguably. You Lionel knows something that none of us know yet, and he, he's going to tell us in a flashback. So we'll get that later. Uh, oh, yeah. thank you for flashback. No. Well, it's something. It's something that uh, what's her name knows too. Catherine Hahn. Yes, they both she know. Knows it too. I'm pretty yeah. sure Miles knows it too, but he's stupid, so it's fine. Well, of course, I mean, oh, okay, to, yeah. right? we're gonna we're gonna but, so yeah. totally get to that. That is something we are so <laughs> gonna get to. Um, but for someone who just said, I'm done, you're going to get someone killed, he seems to cave and fold pretty quickly and just yep. sit there for the rest of the dinner well, party. Because he's yeah. final. Um, something that the, I think the film tries to forget about a lot of these people at some stage. Yeah, it's pretty yes. convenient so the plot can keep going along. He's yes. stupid and he's arrogant and he's spineless. It's all so convenient. So... We get to the fake sort of surface level murder mystery fun game that Miles has made. And he sets it up. He says that you have the weekend to figure it out. I will be quote unquote killed, but you can still talk to me about whatever you want. I'm just not going to give you clues about, you know, who killed me in this game. And, uh, you know, first person to do it wins. And it's pretty much as simple as that. There are clues in the island. There are, you know, little hints and stuff. And you can, you can, you know, talk to each other, try and figure it out, but you don't want to give it away because only one person can win. It's like, <laughs> all right. And then uh, Benoit is like, so does it start? Oh, no, I think um, it's Duke that says, like, do you have to die? And then it starts, or is it start already? And then, you know, Miles is like, well, you know, it has, yeah, it started already, yeah. And then Benoit Blanc just explains the entire thing. Because well, he's already I guess figured it, it out. Worth, uh, yeah, it might be worth I noting that it cuts to showing so all of the... Like, I guess bef before we, we jump into that, it might be worthwhile that the camera's, like, showing all of their faces, and they're all 
they're all unhappy, everybody around the table, except for Benoit, he's, like, super into it. And it's like, ah, see? Because they've all got motives, like, the crazy thing that Lionel just said, and um, the fact that, uh, oh, well, we, we skipped over that part. But it's also funny, it's like, but also Birdie, because, like, the, 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 he doesn't really care as much about her anymore. It's like, ah, yes, that motive. Well, the other, the other like, thing with just... Birdie, didn't they mention this before, something about the Bangladesh... Uh, statement that she has to make. We didn't get the that, full picture yeah, of that. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. We're getting, yeah, we've, this is the thing. All the stuff we've learned in the opening, I'd say, 40 minutes is about to become irrelevant. As in, like, yes. <laughs> most of the things that you think are directing a story are not worthwhile. We're about to get new information that's going to reformat the whole story, which uh, mm -hmm. I think is a criticism a lot of people have of it. I think it can work. I don't think it works here at all because everything becomes yeah. incredibly crap and stupid. But we're almost there, chat. We're going to be basically reviewing a whole different movie in a second. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like you can't <laughs> recontextualize a lot of this information for later. It's like, no, thrown out the Throw window. Throw it out. <laughs> yeah. 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 Forget about it. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, Benoit basically just explains the whole thing. And I'll read it out as he says it. And then we can talk about it. He says, uh, Birdie has planted a remote device to activate on the crossbow to fire a shot that'll kill Miles, and he, she's doing it because he stole her famous Ren diamond she wore in a magazine. Uh, she is sitting opposite to the crossbow, and the crossbow is aimed at Miles, and I believe if you inspect the crossbow, we will likely find a remote triggering device, and the crossbow itself is a vintage Jayhawk brand crossbow, Jayhawk, Birdie J. And then he says there are some clumsy clues that he actually got as well, like the hedge grove spelling a B for Birdie, and Birdie's room is the sacral chakra, which is blocked by guilt. That is everything he has. Yeah. Um, so upon further inspection, this is <sighs> bullshit. <laughs> yes, every word of it. Every B word of it. for yeah. bullshit. This, I would immediately be like, Miles, why did you do this? And he'd be like, what do you mean? Yeah, how did you, how be did like, you why, really find out? Yeah, why did you tell him the answer? What's the point? And then Benoit would be like, no, I figured it out. And he'd be like, no, you didn't. <laughs> like, yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> what you just said You're is not... absolute fucking horseshit. You should never have figured it out. From no... well, well, The, the yeah, thing yeah, that really triggered me was when he says... I believe if you check the crossbow, you may find like a remote triggering device. He hasn't even looked at the crossbow, like in yeah. order to inspect whether or not it's got a remote trigger. No. Unless he was so, being cheeky, like, well, if you check it, you just might find, and like, it, like that kind of attitude. Uh, like he's just being the, a cheeky. That's the best you have. But the, the thing from is, from where he didn't went witness. That's the thing. The, th the thing about it is uh, spotting the crossbow is aimed at Miles' chair is possibly the best thing to predict that that's going to be how he dies. The funny part is, mm -hmm. that's information that was going to be given to all of them in about five seconds from now. Yes. Yeah. So that's not even that interesting that he's he's got that. The most interesting is, how did he know it was Birdie, quote-unquote, in this you know game? And he says the, the big clubsy clues are that there's a bee in a hedge grove, which is like, you can fucking see letters all over the environment on this island. What do you mean? <laughs> like, you spotted a bee in a hedge grove. What do you mean? Like, if he had said it's the hedge grove outside of Miles' room, like, something more specific that links to it in some way, but A, B on the island? Okay. And then the other one was the Birdie yeah, has Yeah, it the... wouldn't be for Braun, his last name, would it? No, no, it couldn't possibly. Uh, that's the funny thing is that again someone would be like that's the genius of the movie it might not have anything to do with the clues and you'd be like oh my god oh <laughs> so then why are we <laughs> fucking here and then, and then he said uh, the birdie chakra is blocked by guilt it's like man that's a leap like yes <laughs> <laughs> um you know because the guilt for what so exactly what is the guilt here yeah what if <sighs> no i'm not even gonna bother my point is just that uh, <laughs> he's got nothing oh mm -hmm. uh, it's Fast that you might not notice that uh that it's just bullshit. Yeah, yes, and, and it's it's, it, this fire. is a moment for Ryan to be like, "Ain't it cool? He's quite a smart detective." And it's like, "No, this is you. What you think a smart detective does, yeah. <laughs> which is just making shit up." Like, what do you mean? This, you didn't figure shit out. And once this is this is just illustrative of the fucking whole movie. What were we supposed to be doing with any of this? This is just him telling us everything we didn't know. We didn't see that B. Yep. We didn't read well, about yeah, it. I guess that's the that's the meme, right? Is like we never get to know about any of it. it. Yeah, I guess. Have you yeah, it's have just you guys one seen big joke? Have you guys seen H Bomber guy's video on the Sherlock yeah. series? Yeah, yeah you know how... I was about to say it's just like a, a Sherlockian joke from that. Yeah. Yeah, so the basic one of the everyone else can't. 
Yeah, one of the big criticisms is, unlike Sherlock Holmes stories that are written in a way that if you were really clever yourself as an audience member, you could perhaps put the clues together and figure out the puzzle yourself. Unlike that, the character of Sherlock just solves things without with information that you couldn't possibly have. Well, yeah, the but, exact same way for this. The, the, He's yeah, so much thing, smarter than but, you. But this is, we're doing genre bending, so you can't make that argument. Yeah, he's... Oh, genre bending. ER will like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love it. I, I love it. He never said it was a whodunit. It's just a movie. It's so just you're something that's going on, yeah. Any so, act, you're coming into it with expectations, despite the mm. fact that the film actually tries to set up some level of expectation <laughs> by framing the faces of the characters and trying yep. to establish their perceived motives and then intercutting those reactions with him discussing the fake murder mystery. Well, so he forgot that genre well, is a it descriptive isn't, thing. It isn't the film, well, huh, well, yeah. Well, the, it's, the, the point is, you're not allowed to be bitter about the fact that you <laughs> were trying to buy into the murder mystery and get yeah. all those pieces of information only for it to kind of not matter. Well, I, yeah, I want to mention your fault for caring. This criticism that it's like the Sherlock ones in terms of he had all the clues that we didn't have and he concluded it. It's like yes, but even that would be better than what we got, which is. Yes. He had all the clues we didn't have, and those clues do not conclude and, that it's Birdie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> For example, yeah, that, yeah. even with that evidence, the information that we don't have, yeah. it's still like, man, that's a that's a big old reach right there. Have you been playing a lot of Halo Reach? Because my god, hey. that fucking hey. reach. It's just like it's just J Hawk, Birdie J. Remember Reach. There. Remember the Reach. And it's like there yeah. could be any it's, reason why there's similar. Like there's probably something on this island called a Duke. There's probably a painting that has a Duke in it. Does that mean mm -hmm. the Duke mm -hmm. did it? Like, what? <laughs> yeah. What is this? And it's like, yeah, but it's the crossbow that kills him. And it's like you fucking guess that shit too. Yeah. yeah what to, if it didn't be fire like two seconds later, yeah. like it does? It'd just be like, well, that's fucking awkward. It could, yeah, because like, it's been that his <laughs> meal was poisoned. Remember, like I said, th there's there's so much to this. It's so annoying because like that. I, if I were on the table, I just would have been like, so you cheated. There's no fucking way you should have known that from what you just said. That's nothing. And he said, like, mm -hmm. oh, there's loads of other clues, blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, you didn't mention any of them, like, except these oh, they don't goofy exist. clues. They don't exist. Fucking clown clues there is what they are. Clues. And when well, he walks maybe in... there are. You know? Who knows? So when he walks into this room, which I believe is the first time they're all walking into this room, they're all, they all kind of marvel at it. They all enter together, this place where they're having dinner and drinks and seeing all the pieces of art. We see uh, Blanc pass by the statue with the crossbow very briefly and then next in like a second or two later he's eating that wrap with jeremy renner's hot sauce on it and but so we have to imagine that from passing by that statue in the span of maybe 10 seconds at most he i guess he just has an encyclopedic knowledge of vintage crossbow brands he would though well the, the label was <laughs> on it and that that did it it's great it's so good. Also, um, why, would the, good. why would she, as the killer, leave clues that she was the one? Well, it, to be fair, well, this is the fake one. one yeah. yeah, I know right? the fake ones. So... Just even the fake ones. Well, poorly I was actually going to bring yes, that up. <laughs> so, <laughs> my my last question about this. Well, yeah, actually, we have to talk about the last thing about this whole game, which is he says um, the motive. She famously wore it, and uh, it's likely in your locket around your neck because it's out of keeping with your breezy island style. That one doesn't make any sense. So, like, whatsoever. Yeah, <laughs> that seems you like meta. This seems like meta knowledge. It just meta, seems like bullshit. Knowledge. Is what it seems like. Yeah. He's he's basically yeah. like you would have to have the locket for that motivation to make any sense at all. I only have one thing to go on. You have a locket around your neck that could probably fit it. That's in there. You know, yes, like, okay. The and then more well, and that's the that thing. The writer's like, what reason would he have? It's like it's out of pocket with his style, and it's like anyone can wear a fucking necklace, man. With whatever yeah. outfit you have. What do you mean? Not, not people style. without necks. Molo, what oh, do you know shit. about fashion? What do you know about fashion? Yeah, I happen to know that how humans does... are weird. How yeah, does you can um, watch... we wear something that means something to you well, without yeah, but it being not like stylish. clashing with you. Yeah, but, but Dash, it's not stylish. That's the, that's the point. <laughs> and he knows okay. that. Got him. Being a, a purveyor of fashion himself, I presume. I don't, like this version. Blah, blah, blah. I don't like this it's version of Fringy. Can we have the old one back? <laughs> I'm just throwing out. I, look, all right, I'm just presenting a lot of the counter arguments that might be made. It's mainly the same counter argument over and over again. <laughs> and in response to these criticisms of the film, okay? 
Okay. So rather so, than play by our game, he's being devil's advocate for the rest to, in order oh, to well, deal with this. Well, I mean, I I'm, doing, it, I I'm doing it, it in a very derisive and scornful way. <laughs> <my Yes. goodness. laughs> Fair if enough. Something has put him into a derisive and scornful mood. I can't imagine. Not what imagine it what it be. is though. Yeah. Uh, so what kind of movie would do that to me? One of his clues, by the way, is that she is sitting across from the crossbow, but like so is Peg. So is. The person yeah. opposite yeah. her. People actually, oh, it's even worse. He says, uh, look at this. The first thing he says in trying to explain this mystery is, look at the seating arrangement. She's perfectly triangulated. What? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just That's a actually, remote. <laughs> That's actually Anyone a fucking right angu- remote. That's actually a great point. I, I, I don't know what? how I missed that. I just registered it as with, she's in line with it. Not that, like, why does he say it's, she's triangulated with it? Because that sounds smarter than <laughs> well, saying that she, Isn't that the thing like, he makes fun of like Miles her? for? Yes, yeah, but it that is. means it exactly. fits perfectly into this fucking movie. Yeah. It's all stupid. And so regarding... I think he's, he criticizes Miles for words that aren't words. Oh, okay, wait, to clarify, because I was just thinking in my head, like, when he says triangulate, he means there's three points of interest being the arrow uh, shooter, Miles, and her, meaning they form a triangle no matter what. And it's just like, yeah, but it would always form everyone a triangle. Else. Yeah, every yeah, everyone else form has a triangle. the same thing. Unless he means mm-hmm. it's a perfect triangle in terms of distances, which is like, how the well, fuck did you figure perfect, that out? Like, but it's yeah. Remote, why the fuck would it? What triangle though? Like a perfect which one? Like an isosceles. Three interior right angle, angles of the triangle. Which, uh, are at 60 it's degrees a Kepler each. triangle. Is, is he, is, I guess he did the maths in his head though. That this two, the square root of an ice. Oh fuck! Like down to the fucking to inch. Are they, are they equal distances between each other? Is that the point? I mean, like, why would that matter? Well, and to be honest with you, difference. it doesn't it doesn't matter because it wouldn't be. She's of a shorter distance to Miles than she is to the arrow, so. But it wouldn't. The crossbow, but it's sorry. a remote. Down, or it's just a remote. Have, like, what a weird thing to say, that, that it triangulates <laughs> perfectly. They would all yeah, triangulate perfectly, because it's a triangle. Well, yeah, why wouldn't Andy uh, triangulate perfectly with it? Yes. She, Everyone is that facing it, is, is, or is that actually the hidden that you'll see in an analysis of the film? Isn't it clever that they put her right there? She also tries. Well, but if she perfectly triangulates perfectly, then so does low. Peg. By the way. All well, three. Yeah, everyone uh, in the end, room well, does. Uh, well, all right. Would, <laughs> no, no, I'm, right? I'm saying I'm no, no. I, I specifically, because Peg, I believe, <laughs> is in line with Andy there. If you can see, if you drew a line to the crossbow. I think that's Peg. Right, is is Peg it. on her right or is she on the left? I can't remember. I don't know. You need another it, shot. It could be um, through. it could be Claire as well. I'm not sure who's sitting there yeah. to her right. Everyone in the room. Everyone. Yeah, everyone yeah, in the room makes a triangle, triangle with it though. From every yeah. point. Yeah, yes. they should not have said triangular. You know what? Just <laughs> not there's three points. There's three points every time. Like, it's, it's so <laughs> you're, it's never. so clever. It out clevered every cleverer. Uh, Oh and that's God. God. That's when, us. When Benoit Blanc actually had a really stupid idea here about like the the mystery. Um, yes. So yeah, that's, knowing that's all of that kind of with the locket, the blah, blah blah blah. Does this sound like it would be fun to figure out if we were all at this table? Miles set it up. It's like go, and so we'd be like, all right. No. So that arrow came from over there. We go check, and we're like, it's a Jayhawk crossbow. Okay, it's got. It seems like it's got a device on here that was activated remotely. Now what? Yeah, that's like the dead end. It's like empty your pockets, bitches. And if one of you said J or J Birdie Birdie J, Birdie did it. I'd say like, oh, that's (laughs) coincidence a little bit. That's a fun little theory, but like, you got anything better than that? And then I run outside (laughs) and go, guys, 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 there's a B. There's a B in the hedge. (laughs) (laughs) That yeah, but like uh, that means she she trimmed it herself. Uh, I don't know. (laughs) Well, here's well here's the the other thing. We're making fun of how many dead ends there are because there are a million of them. But another one could be that he gets shot in the chest with the arrow. They go inspect it. They see a locket. They open it up, and she's like, "Oh my god, that's my diamond!" And then, Someone's and then trying is it to over? frame me. <laughs> so, <laughs> that would be good. Yeah, diamonds. So, I mean, here's a question. So, the the stupid proposed motive for this crime, and it's also it's also weird that Birdie J isn't in on it. So, she, it's a surprise to her as well that she was the killer. But Which you would strange. have to know all this beforehand if you're going to play the part of it. A... Yeah, you'd have to be in on it, right? But yeah, she didn't not. seem like she was in on it. No, she's not in no, on it. Johnson what if, doesn't even what know does how the fucking me, what mystery What does it mean, though, to me, from like a amount of mystery if it could just be you? Like, you could be well, the one so that's the thing. I, I, is that, I, is that, is that the like idea that you go, you? it was me and I did it for, like, kind of like... It's like Clue. Yeah, like Clue. Okay. I think that can work here. 
How could yeah, but how could how could Miles like create any motive? Like how could he? It could be anything, well, so, right? Like yeah. yeah, that's the thing. You can make this really unfit. Like if if you said like uh you know Lionel did it by trying to frame uh her, his motivation is the clear stuff. We saw it very blatantly <laughs> uh, that uh, saw it, yeah. he gifted you that uh thing around your neck to to make it look like she had a reason to do it and sold it blah blah. You know, and and then he goes, no, that's not it. And it's like. Okay, but mine works though. Probably better than what you have, actually. Yeah. <laughs> like, also, uh, like, okay, okay, Birdie, where's the remote device? Uh, I don't have one. That thing kind of went off as planned by someone else. Yeah, I'm not sure we're supposed yeah, to gather from have that. One. No. Like, I guess we. I was about to say like maybe it's planted underneath the table. As I thought, but I was like, well, that would just give it away straight away. So I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Someone in the comments said that it's kind of like Clue, where you could be the killer, and it's like, yeah, but I thought he was bad at Clue, so why is he really, really good at this? And also, well, someone else wrote Clue this. Clue as so a board game go. is a good like blueprint to set up a murder mystery. No, especially it isn't, if you have all sure. of these characters good who for have a comedy film, though. supposedly characters. You'd want to yeah. have the way that they do the crime in some way correlate with who they are as a person. Like if you had Scientist Man, he could do something involving science, you know. The, that would be, uh, he's gonna play his strength <laughs> and if you had what you know face that about Poly him by the way well word on the street is, oh uh, you can't Birdie say told that. you that's racist Birdie yeah. told you yeah. <laughs> Birdie told you <laughs> the uh, science of streets so yeah street I don't think this science. would be fun to figure out no, no. Would be lame. this would no. suck no. it would kind Especially of fall if... in it would just kind of go in circles, and everybody would just get frustrated. Yeah, this and then would suck balls. Uh, Benoit is like, to... "Gosh, that was so satisfying! Like a crossword puzzle in the Times magazine." It's like, okay, <laughs> Buddy, okay. okay. The fuck up. That's what I mean. It's just like, what the? Fuck? Are you just being a dick? Are you like you're being? I think a dick. so. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's the idea. Just insult him even more. Even though, again, he didn't write the murder <laughs> mystery, so I don't. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's a very small thing, but um, Miles says that he got Jillian Flynn, the woman who wrote Gone Girl. Oh, to no, write yeah. this murder mystery, I'm like, why would you insult a real writer? I don't know. Yeah, like, attaching yeah. them to this <laughs> stupid shit. Oh, do you think she actually wrote it, or do you, is that just the film saying that? I'm, she I'm sure. It's, I would assume Ryan's friendly enough with I other would, directors yeah. that he can maybe have asked you. Can I name drop you for this? Yeah, Fuck but no. Get out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> Suck. But it, but it, all it really does is imply that Jillian Flynn, the real writer, wrote this, this stupid shit. mystery that makes no sense. It's like, why would you do that to her? I don't know. <laughs> Ryan doesn't know what he's done. Uh, <laughs> he does know. Correct, once again. Um, and yeah, so uh, mm. he starts complaining to him. It's like, dude, this was not simple to set up, and you've, like, you know, ditched the whole weekend now. And you just, you can't help but thinking, like, so why did you have the world's greatest detective be a part yeah. of it, you fool? Maybe, maybe take him aside, like, hey, can you, like, chill out a little bit? Like, I've set us up for my friends. Like, I didn't want to have you here. You're probably really good at this, so if you can just chill out. No, if you like, know, please the, just play along. I'm trying if to If you know the here. answer, just come to me. I don't want you to spoil it, like, immediately, because you're probably yeah, going to get it. We were watching it. The observation here is to be like, okay, so like you're here. Let, let's assume the rest of the film doesn't exist, and this really is just like a fun little murder mystery for his friends. All right, let's just go with that. Hey, um, if if you feel like yeah, uh, you because know, you're gonna be mingling among the guests and stuff, and kind of a different vibe than me, because I'm the one who got murdered and setting this all up, right? If they're having some problems, if they can't quite piece anything together, just kind of nudge them in the right direction. Maybe drop a little hint here and there if you yeah. think they can actually figure it out, because ultimately. I do want this to be solved. You know, it's it's not as fun if no one solves it. And I don't want to come across as being like, ooh, aren't I so smart? So yeah, give them a hand here and there if they need it. But obviously, don't solve it instantly in front of anyone else before we have the chance to do it. Because you'd it's, be a huge prick to do that. Especially not before everyone else knows what their roles are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which I guess they don't know now before. Like, ugh. So yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. And the, but then Benoit says in response to that, "I ruined your game on purpose. You've collected up several people on a remote island who all have good reason to want to kill you. Like, and that's why he's done this, is he wants to warn him about that. Like, oh, okay. He says, <laughs> Lionel, you threatened to destroy his reputation. Claire, same thing. And who knows? Maybe you'll support her opponent in the election. Birdie." You got the Bangladesh stuff, you're making it take the fall. And then he duke, you know, you, you know why he wants to kill you. And then he's like, he doesn't know about that. And he's like, he does know about that. And he's talking about uh, sleeping with whiskey. Mm -hmm. So again, she's like, okay. 
like it feels like the same information you get told about all these characters again and again and again because that's the subversion the movie's pulling off. It's like, see, they all want to kill Miles, don't they? Which one's gonna do it? Which one's gonna do it? Ah, oh, he didn't die. Someone else does. Ah. What? Bet you you're shaking Man. now because you can't figure it out. Aha. Shaking in my boots. You got me. I'm shaking so much. Uh, which actually leads us to uh, him sort of talking a bit around a lot of what's happening, and then uh, we get a little bit of history, a little bit of exposition about the famous napkin that was created that the, all of <laughs> Alpha is based on. Alpha is like his company that is everything. Um, now, I think we should probably wait a little bit before we talk about what is written on that fucking napkin. <laughs> okay. We'll yes. get there. I'll leave it for now. Oh, I can't um, wait. In the meantime, Benny won an iPad. Yay! Yes. Uh, Benny but And so, yeah, it's like a photo of them all in the, the bar, the glass onion. And, uh... But, but before, before we go to that, the, the whole the blonde asking about the, the what does the winner get? That's a totally normal thing to ask, isn't yeah. it? Unusual yeah. by yeah. any stretch of the imagination, and the film just, like, poops on him for it as a joke. When, obviously, there's, like, a fun little A, the winner gets... You know, something kind of fun, even if it's yeah. just symbolic of your victory. You mm -hmm. know, winning something is typical of what we oh. call contests. He what does have his coin. Das, I just saw him. He's holding a coin. Oh, he has a he coin. He doesn't flip oh, it, though. He do oh, he doesn't flip it anymore? I don't think he so. He fucking have it. He's got, he, did, he just has That's what it. I mean. I was like, how did I miss that? And it's like, yeah, because you can just make it. The subtitles almost stop me from seeing it. But he's just he's holding it uh, as this scene plays out, and he's just fiddling with it. Because, funnily enough, that we're almost at the point of the genre flipping. So, um, <laughs> I'm sure some video essayist is going to point that out. And it's going to be the best film ever. The masterpiece <laughs> we never deserved. Yep. Well, we didn't deserve this, I oh, agree. Yeah. Monster Queen. No one deserves this. <laughs> no. Um, Do you think anybody's going to be talking about this film in three months? No. Dude, I don't, like Probably I said, not. I don't believe the people who made the like Knives Out as a masterpiece don't remember the plotline of Knives Out. I don't. Yeah, I'd be, I <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna go. Rewatched it honestly. It's gonna go. It's gonna go for a swim after the the initial hype. Just gonna float around, and then the third one comes out, and then all of a sudden there's like, oh yeah, those were all really good. They make an incredible trilogy. Yeah, because we, as we've oh, seen on uh, when we look at Netflix, like Knives Out One is like number four most yeah. played right now. Got a big old like, boost. People... Yeah. Um, we go back to them chilling out in the room, and because of that clear conversation, I guess they're all feeling pretty rough, and they almost want they all want to kind of leave. And now that the uh, murder mystery thing is in done, the club. they almost just want to go. Then we see that um, Duke's phone is pinging all the time from his Google alerts, and he's set Google alerts to just fucking alert him whenever certain things show up. And one of the ones it includes, he's got a Google alert for the word movie. I don't yeah, even he's know a film it, lover. What does that even mean? He's a cinephile. It's very regularly. Because <laughs> if you well, look at just, just to give you guys an idea, right, this is what it says. You got Google alert. Five new articles about Claire DeBella. He's got an alert for that. 22 new posts about Apex supplements. He's got things about that. 2,987 new posts for movie. <laughs> and he says the reason for this is he likes movies. Do you understand, if he like, likes them so much, why doesn't he check his notifications for them? Yeah, you're right, he doesn't even weird do that. If um, but like, that's is this something what happens, that an alien would say. Is this what happens when stupid people try to write stupid people? What? Mm -hmm. How dare you? If you like movies, if, you, if you're into movies, and you know specifically what movies you're looking forwards to coming out, and what kinds of movies movie, you like. Not just movie, yeah. Not just movie in general. Maybe go for a genre. <laughs> Maybe go... It's okay, you can even have stupid. some fun references by doing that, but never mind. By the way, this is a huge setup for important things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, it, like, whenever a character does something that's absurdly that's stupid... Set two minutes ahead of time, by the way. Set yeah, yeah. them up a good two, three minutes before it pays off. That's what it means to do a really good setup and pay off. It's when you in the scene. When you see this it shit, it's like, why would a character do something so dumb? Movie, has it? No, it, it hasn't. Really no. No. What was that, sorry? Just now, when it's plot relevant. It hasn't been going off for the entire movie until just Yeah, now. no, you're right. We haven't heard his Only going off at all. Only just now, people on planet Earth have been looking up movie, though. And why, uh, wait, also, why, why is he allowed to have his phone here? Isn't the whole thing that he doesn't want to be heard when they talk about weird stuff or whatever, so no one is allowed to have their phone when they're chilling out? I don't think that's a 
actual rule he I don't makes. Think he, he, just, he asks gave that, that um, Benoit doesn't have his phone smart. on when he's talking to him, and he says, "I don't have it with me." Yeah. Okay. I thought they. Made, I thought there was like a thing. Well, they. It's, it's actually not made a rule, but you'd be forgiven for thinking that because throughout the movie they all kind of leave their cell phones in their rooms, and no one has one when yeah, they, they really use one. They yeah. have to behave like oh, non-humans. The tech billionaires don't even have <laughs> phones. The the yeah, scientist the does not have a phone. Seemingly, the fashionista seems to, well. She's not allowed to have a phone, but she tells us she has a secret phone that she never uses. Or she's not allowed to have a phone. Because of what she tweets, but she also says, I have a secret phone, but then we never see her using like, said secret phone. She's not allowed phone. to have a Twitter account. Mm. Same, yeah, same not, thing. I'm not allowed to have a phone. No, yeah, of course. That's ridiculous. Um, like, yeah, then Duke has one, but it's only become relevant in this scene, and there's a reason for that, <laughs> because of how badly written all of this is. Um, all right, all right. So it, well, you know what, we need to keep that in mind, because it's going to become relevant many times over, the, the, the state of the phones in this movie, which is something I think state you... Do you bring it up, Rags? You were like, there needs to be some kind of a collection of examples of how much there phones be, destroy movies. There, it, it's something, maybe one day I'll make it, but there needs to be videos on the problems that phones and guns <clears throat> cause in plots, yeah. right? <laughs> Having a phone... Is an insane amount of plot ability that you have. You can call for help, call for backup. You could search up things on the internet to get all the human knowledge at your fingertips to come to you when you need it. It's a recording device, both visually and for audio. It is an insanely useful device True. in films. And now that they're just ubiquitous and everyone has a phone, you need to keep these things in mind when you're writing your plot. And guns are the same way. Guns to a lesser degree than phones are, because not everyone has a gun on them at all times, like a phone, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, guns give characters incredible amounts of power and killing potential and threatening slash bargaining ability. Interesting you say that. If you're going to have... Yeah? 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 Right now, in this very <laughs> screenshot, we've got a phone and a gun. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Hey, now, yes. this, this is kind of oh funny. It's like a, char a character holding a phone to gun. I'm like, Ryan, are you sure you're ready for this? <laughs> Can you really? <laughs> That's why I always leave my house with a phone and a gun. Unironically, it's gonna be causing problems. So yeah, just you know, that was worth keeping in mind. Those bits of information. Um, and whenever his Google alert goes off, it it alerts the uh, painting's protection. It, it actually the security system goes on whenever it has the Google alert, which makes you wonder, like, how is it not going off from people talking? Yep. Yeah, yeah. it's super inconsistent. At certain points, people works. shout and it doesn't go up. Um, yep. Yeah, but then it goes like oh. ping and it's a bomb. Now it's closed. Uh. It's like what the fuck? Yeah, are you doing? just <laughs> la like women's laughter set it off over and over again. You know, it's no like, fun allowed. Uh, 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 bitches, <laughs> women. Really, uh, really stupid, but yeah. So, um, sexist, actually. You, uh, we, we move on to uh, Andy walks into the room and everyone is like waiting to sort of talk about the thing because we, we, we heard about it before on the boat um, over. Uh, uh, the, the, there's, there's, there's something's going on basically. She's, she's unpopular with the rest of them and they start being like, mm -hmm. let's address the elephant in the room. And uh, uh, Catherine Hahn's character says, do you want to know why we all did it? Do the math. It's easy math. And I was listening to this like, well, no, she already accused you like, like half a day ago that you did it all for the money. Like she did this already. Yeah. She had that big speech about how you're all on his golden titties or whatever. So what do you think she means by <laughs> on that? The teeth. Like, so it's really weird to, to like, like Catherine Hahn's character is outraged that she won't just see the obvious truth. We did it because we sold out because the money was good. And it's, it's like, you know, that's what she accused you of. Yeah, 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 we did that. Thank you. And you said nothing in response because you believe it to be true. Yeah, yeah, so this to me instead is just like it reeks of, well, we need to generate that argument again because we need to have it in this scene. There's a, there's an additional reason this is happening and it'll be explained later, but for now, yeah. And then uh, she ends it with, you got yours. Now, I'm going to stretch into additional context for a moment. Uh, we don't need to know much more, but uh, canonically speaking in universe, Andy got nothing. You got everything taken from her. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. We'll go over that in more detail soon. I'm just pointing out now to be like, when she says you got yours, it makes no sense at all. Yes. She shouldn't be saying that. She knows what happened. She was in the fucking court. She she knows how it went. I don't know why she's saying you got yours. Um. So then, yeah, she says, do you want money? Do you want revenge? Just, just say what you want. She says, I want the truth. And uh, a duke says, we all played the same game and you lost. You couldn't hack it. Which is I guess that that would make sense. He would. He is the character that would probably say that, and that's probably what he thinks. But you could like, mm -hmm. there. There you go. A line that makes sense. Whoa. Yeah. You, just, if you want to? Go, you guys want to throw a party for that? That's all good. 
<laughs> I enjoy parties. Yeah, parties general. are pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. not yeah. all of them, but in general, you know. So yeah, uh, I think so. They all kind of want to leave, and and like I said, I think it's over the clear stuff. But it's it's all very strange to understand because as as like I said, we find out soon enough they've signed on it. So it's just like I don't I don't know. It feels like you wouldn't leave. You'd want to have many discussions with Miles. Like, try and figure this out. Stop it ahead of time. Or figure out what your damage is going to be to you. It's certainly uh, Claire and Lionel. They're the kind of characters that yeah. want to do that. Instead of just, I want to leave. Where? Like, I don't think so. The first, yeah, the first person to say that is Duke. And I don't know why he wants to leave. No, he really just... shouldn't want to leave, considering his motivations. Yeah. I've, it just seems like, oh, well, there's no more mystery, so I'm headed home. Even yeah. though there's never been a mystery to any of these other yearly engagements. Well, and he's always seemed like he's excited to just go to this place rather than do the murder mystery. Yeah. Uh, so, it's, yeah, it's pretty strange. But um, Duke is getting some alerts, and he spots one, and he goes, Oh my god, my views! They're blowing up! You gotta see this! It's all over the internet, Miles! And then Miles looks at it, and he looks a little bit like super excited, happy, possibly concerned as well. And he says, uh, yeah, it's blowing up. This is fire. This changes things, right? And Miles is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, hmm. wonder what that's going to be about. Definitely coming back to that. Believe it for now. Yes. So then Miles seems pretty excited about it all too. Everyone's in a really great mood now. It's oh, so good. And he starts preparing his little drinks and stuff and things. Camera shots of the security for the Mona Lisa keep going up and down. Everyone's sort of chilling out. Miles has a sit down. And do you think it's, do you guys think it's fair to point out what is shown here? Because uh, this would be, I, yes, I think, the, mm -hmm. the biggest example of a lie, right? <laughs> Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's like yeah I yeah. think it is worthwhile to highlight this one. Yeah. So, well, yeah. Uh, Miles goes to sit down, and he passes his drink directly to Duke. Yeah. So it's like, okay, that's weird. It like if you're watching a film in slow motion, pausing and stuff, which you know, not at all how they are intended to be consumed, I suppose. But I think plenty of films hold up this way. If you did see this, I think if you could pause and think, you'd be like. Why did Duke do that? He has his glass right in front of him. Why is he grabbing the glass from Miles? Yeah. Kind of strange, but alright. Um, also, VSC is fucking chewing up this movie right now. And, then, <laughs> um, and by the way, their names are on the glasses. Yeah. Again, it's just... Big, hmm. big old letters. And then, um, and of course, the coincidence that their glasses match, for the most part. They're not quite there, but, you know, on a casual glance, I suppose. Very similar. And then... Uh, Yep, they all drink up, celebrating, and Duke fucking dies. Yeah, whoa! Bum, bum, bum. That's not Miles, Finally. that's Duke! And I what want to know, most people when watching this, when Miles did pass him that drink, most of you, I think it's reasonable to say, wouldn't even remember what happened in that moment because you're watching a movie, stuff is just happening. You don't necessarily register every little detail. Mm -hmm. I mean, I... I I, did I, I don't know if I pointed out, but I did see that he put it down and uh, Duke grabbed it, but I didn't really think anything about it. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't make the connection mm. in my brain. Because, yeah, movie. But I, I think I realized that happened. Where I was like, oh, that's odd. So, yeah, Duke dies, and they're like, uh, police? And then uh, I think someone says, like, are you treating this like a crime scene? It's like, well, it, it's, yeah. Well, I mean, it's not <laughs> even that. Police uh... will show up when someone dies. Yeah. It's just normal. And to be fair, the movie has another character say, well, that's just protocol. And it's like, so why the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> it's like someone's dead. And he's like, oh, po po police? I don't know. Um, yeah, and then uh, Claire is like, oh, God, I can see it now. Governor jets off to Greece with the men's rights YouTuber who dies. Get it? Which She's is, only uh, concerned about her uh, What it's going to say about her. Yeah, yeah, she doesn't care about Duke at all. Nobody cares about Duke. They just care about how yeah. it's going to affect them. It's like, cool. Yeah, they've definitely been lifelong, fr well, not lifelong friends, but they've been friends for over 10 years. I totally believe that. Absolutely, yeah. Yes, I, I say it's safe to say, like, strong friends for more than possibly, like, 12. Like, the implication is that they went to the Glass Onion all the time. Yeah, and that was nine years ago, and then could probably put ten some years, years on top nine of Nine years ago was when it shut down, which is another oh, right, right, coincidence. Oh, right, right, Yeah, you're right. So, yeah, it's at least that amount of time, plus X amount of years. So, yeah, there you go. So, yeah, um... Uh, Lionel says you'll go call the police, and then, uh, uh, you know, it's gradually realized that um, Benoit is treating this like a murder. And so Miles is like, whoa, 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 you're thinking this is intentional? 
And he says, my guess is something was put in his drink intentionally. <clears throat> and yet, he does not check the drink. <laughs> no! <laughs> so, this is the world-renowned detective. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he has described what he believes to be the murder weapon, essentially, but he's not going to look at it. He doesn't even see anything missing it's on the so body. So bad. It's so bad. We'll get to that one, here. That's even funnier. You know, yeah. what? for now, we'll just yeah. pretend like. Wait, it's fine. real quick, real quick. I I just wanted said that they give up on trying to save his life really fast. Yeah, they're just yeah, like he's yeah. dead. Oh yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, he's dead. Like, he's no, don't really uh, like him. He chokes and shit on it, right? So, like, can't he just, like, jam a pin in his neck and unscrew the top and make give him a little tracheotomy and shit? You could have no. thought to try that. I guess, you know, maybe that none of them know how to do that. Um, not even super superhero Benoit Blanc? No, not even. <laughs> to be honest with you, he probably wanted Duke to die, so he'd be like, finally, I have something to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this I mystery was so case. boring. Now he made a better one. Just Gotta keep him now. dead, though. Let's see if I can use my hot sauce for this. Um... So, <laughs> unfortunately, we find out the police can't reach us because there is only one landing point on the island. Miles' dumbass <sighs> Banksy dock was set to low tide height. It is not buoyant. It is a piece of shit. So they can't get to us. Get it? Piece of shit? Was, uh, piece of shit? Good thing that it's, it's not good. Otherwise, the whole story doesn't happen. Yeah, if the yeah, police... I was about to say... If the um, police arrive, if, it fucks everything. So they can't. It changes absolutely everything. Yeah, hey, that was one of the thing. issues with the D-Day invasions, dock. really, is that there weren't any docks on the beaches, That's so it was really, really difficult. The Germans should have just told us beforehand. They just that, That's why there were no what? docks there. The Germans specifically didn't build docks so that it would be impossible for anyone to get ashore from the water. I'll just say it now, because fuck it. Uh, a second person gets murdered, and when they do, uh, Benoit says, I don't care if they can't make it because of the dock, they can beach here. Oh, like really? Once, once a second person that. is yeah. murdered. Because <laughs> <laughs> if one person's been murdered, it's not like that's it's already like, uh, a big enough deal. I don't work. like I guess now. It's kind of urgent. Murder is too much. That's what I mean. I, I like. I, it's so beyond stupid and brain dead. You're just like, what am I supposed to do with this? Like, and people are saying, what about helicopters? It's like, no, don't, they don't have they that don't kind feel. of technology. Okay, <laughs> it's just yeah, it's one in a million. The the this is Greece. They have chariots. They can't get there. It's impossible. It's they so have, they're fucking probably like stupid. water chariots. No jet skis. No <laughs> police boats. Nothing. It just you just can't get on the island if there's not a dock. It's exactly. not possible. Doesn't fucking work. And this is what I mean. Like, what a pathetic excuse. You're sitting there writing the story with him, and you're like, "So the police are going to come now." And then Ryan's like, "No, no, no. They can't come because it'll it'll fuck up everything later." And you're like, "Oh, so why? What are we writing for? Why?" And he's like, "The dock is stupid." Yeah, and then I've, people go, go like, yeah, but Miles is really stupid. It's like, no, 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 someone built this who knows this kind of stuff and told him, or yeah, should have told listen. him, he that's not going to work when there's low tide or high tide. Yeah. He didn't listen, though, because he's stupid. Oh, uh, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 answer for you guys. You're not satisfied with that answer. Everything happens because he's stupid. And then anyway, he infects everybody with his stupid as well. There is even reference to that in the film with Benoit. He's oh, like, man, no. this was just so stupid that I couldn't even see it. It's my Achilles heel, bro. So, yeah, that's just a reality. Let that sink in for now. And then uh, Miles, when everybody's sort of planning on how they're going to deal with this, we're moving on, uh, he realizes, oh boy, that drink that... Uh, uh, Duke drank out of. That's my cup. I think um, I think it was at this point that I guessed, or it might have been a little bit later. Oh, so Miles is the killer. <laughs> well, the thing is, with everything we've talked about, <laughs> this film fucking hates him. So, uh, well, well, yeah. So the problem is that it was clear that Andy is the actual protagonist. Yes. Um, and it was clear that Miles was like the bad guy. So at this point, I guessed. I think, yeah, like Miles did it. And and the problem well, is just irredeemable. Like, like, like because of the matter, white guy, hmm. yeah. they keep like shitting they, all over him. But to be fair, they shit on everybody except Benoit and Andy. They, they do. Mm -hmm. That's true. But like him in particular, yeah, him in particular, he's Satan. Like, Which is why it would have so been the, yeah. it probably would have been more interesting for him to not be the killer. To be honest with you. Which well, is weird, yeah, because that would have been, been out. Funnily enough, that would have been subversive in a sense. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, and like Benoit thinks it's him. 
would be the person who's like the most potentially damaging and evil of them all to be a corrupt politician, but instead it's just the weirdo who streams. Well, like, I never would have well, believed thought... this Birdie. She, like, I don't believe she can operate a gun. Like, there's, there's, well, there's too much limiting her. Cause, unless that's the, the meme, right? She's pretending to be stupid because yeah. she's actually very intelligent. You could do that. That, that might be, have yeah, been That would be more conventionally who done it. We're not doing that here. We're doing fucking genre bending like stuff because that's the focus more so than like the focus is subverting your expectations on a meta level more so than within the story. Yeah. Or at least it feels that way. Um I mean we're not quite to the parts that start to justify having that perspective on the film. Um, well, yeah, uh, but, we, we're yeah, getting to the get big to old thing, you know, but um, he points to the glass and he says, he picked up mine, and then it shows the scene, but the problem is, if you didn't remember what we were shown, you'll now assume this is what we were shown, which is a completely different thing. It's Duke yeah. picks up the glass after Miles put it down, Miles isn't handing it to him. I think what Ryan wants to go for is, you see, Miles is telling people what happened, and so this would be the visual, I suppose. But the problem is, like, well, no, we didn't know that that was an important thing to be looking at. So now when you show us, like, a flashback, we see this as the truth. Mm-hmm. But what do you, like, there's this thing, this is going to be flipped back later on in the film. And it's like, you, but, 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 <laughs> like, what, you, like, you're relying on your audience to have photographic memory of every scene as how it ran in the first time, so that you can, because if you did, you'd be like, so this is a lie. This didn't happen. Yeah, this is just a lie. Or this you might be like, wait, which one was the lie then? So, yeah, uh, not a fan of this. Funnily I enough... hate it. It's a trend that needs to die. There's it something that be... is like this in Knives Out that I actually thought was okay. It's one of the th few things I kind of like. It's when I think three different people describe Ransom being Chris Evans' character leaving the house. Uh, when it's described, I think, by Ransom himself, he, like, storms out. When he's described by... Uh, like Marta or whoever else he storms out. When it's his mum describing the story, as he leaves, he like puts his hand on the grandma as if to say like, you know, goodbye, uh, hope you're okay sort of thing, and he leaves. Like, like that has no bearing on anything. It's just it represents what how she sees his son versus how everyone else would see him in terms of recollecting an event. But it's much clearly d delivered. This is one of the most important pieces of information in this whole film. Did he hand him the glass or not? Mm-hmm. And so now, yeah, the, he didn't, you could consider then... this like, well, now I, I, I guess he did, uh, didn't. It's like, no, he did. Like, oh, so what was that? It's and... like, that was him recanting it. It's like, so why did you show that instead of just having him describe it? Wouldn't that be the best way to do it? Well, because if you show it, then that reinforces the belief. Exactly. That's kind of what I'm getting at. If he said um, he took my glass off the, the desk... And someone who was like eagle eyed would be like, ah, no, he didn't, you fucking liar. Exactly. And they can enjoy that's that knowledge. Do it. But if you Give have it shown that he out. literally yeah. did pick it off, that you're like, oh, was it that? Oh, shit, maybe it was. Yeah, that. because most people who are watching the film are not going to rewind to check. Well, what about um, the, the fucking theater? It's, it's like, can you rewind? Yeah. Well, yeah, right. Like, <laughs> Pause. Can you rewind? I think the yeah. movie lied to me. I doubt the film that, that it was written with them knowing, well, I mean, it's on Netflix, people will rewind it. I highly doubt that that was the way it was written. I think it's just, just put that piece of information in the viewer's head. They'll believe you because the viewer is kind of primed to trust the information yeah, that you give them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that was a mistake, right? Trusting that throws you off of the, uh, I think throws so, you yeah. off of the, uh, the scent. So how do we feel about that? Are we, are we okay with that? <laughs> or, uh... Or, what do you think? We don't like it. What's the yeah, yeah. Us, what, do you <laughs> what do you think the counter-argument would be if somebody said, well, no, actually explain yourself, why? Well, the counter-argument well, would be something like what Mahler described in Knives Out, like, in that, you know, sometimes it's okay. It's like, uh, have you ever seen Rashomon? Or read the story? Anyway, it's a story where there's a murder and then we get we see the same events from different people's perspectives and they contradict each other, right? So, okay. So that's it's a very famous example of that. So what this is is like, oh, we're seeing it. We're like this is the image that is being put into everyone's head in yeah. the scene that Miles is telling this event to. But the problem Especially... is Oh, go for it. But the problem is now we as an audience are like, oh, that's what happened. Because we right. also, this is the first time I believe in the movie we do anything like this. 
yeah as well I, so we haven't established right. yeah. it the idea that this is all style. from the account of an unreliable narrator that's taken kind of to the extreme that's a really interesting idea um but that's not what this movie is that's well, just flat out not what this well, movie is because it's funny that you say narrator because of course as edward norton one of the things i was thinking about is like well in fight club they don't you know like you see tyler like as a, a guy who's there talking to the narrator and like interacting with things in the world um and being like an active participant uh, and then, obviously, later on, a lot of those scenes get recontextualized with, like, new scenes where it's Edward Norton talking to himself, or Edward Norton was actually, like, Tyler Durden giving the speech in Fight Club, and it's like, well, so what is the difference between that and this? What is the difference? We have um, no re like, the, the problem is he hasn't said it properly for us to, I think the, the information that came to a lot of us was that that is what happened, not that's his version of events. Right. As yeah. opposed to when we have a f the narrator is the narrator of the story, all of the scenes are framed in his perspective, and there are sufficient clues beforehand to to allow you to potentially figure out the twist. Like said, Whereas the... here, it's just got to be. I hope you remember that two second shot um, that you never would have been paying that much attention to. Yeah, and that shot uh, determines yeah. a, a significant plot yes. point. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it is uh, instrumental. You could say. And so it's, it would be uh, it's interesting with if there was ability. an early scene that established this kind of idea to the audience. Like some character says something, and it's not that consequential. It's just an early sort of wink, wink, nudge, nudge that a character might say something that like legitimately didn't happen. So you know maybe that's something you should keep in mind. And like LeBlanc could point it out. It's like, oh no, no, it was Billy was the one who put his coat on the rack or something I like think. that. Stop, stop calling him LeBlanc. That's a League of Legends character. LeBlanc. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's Benoit Blanc, not Benoit, Benoit Blanc. Blanc. Benoit Blanc. <laughs> I, I think uh, it was, I can't remember who said it before, but it should have just been that Miles said, I passed him the drink. They shouldn't mm -hmm. have shown the shot. But the, yeah, the you don't need to show if it. They, showing the shot allows you to trick the audience better. Yes. <laughs> um, and well, that's the better, purpose it serves. That is, that is, yes. Yeah, that's explicitly yeah. the purpose. It does its job well because a lot of people would be like, oh, I thought it was the other way. Oh. <laughs> But it's not an O, oh, it's like... No, it's not, to you me. just told me that's how it was, and then you said it wasn't how it was. It's like, okay. Yeah, it's just like, oh, you lied. It's as casual a shot as any other shot, right? And so the idea that we'll remember every action that's taking place in it, or every expression that's happening in it, so of course not. So when you tell me this is what it was, it's like, alright, that's how it was. Mm -hmm. That you need better indication that it's an unreliable narrator. But the thing is, I don't think he wants to to frame that as a possible unreliable narration because that'll cl clue us no. on to the reality of the twist, which is oh, so it was Miles. Yes. Like I said, if everyone remembered that first shot, we'd be like, he did it. <laughs> like that's that's mm -hmm. it. Well, well, so the reason why I thought he did it, I was partly appealing to Meta, but one of the reasons was because they'd said so many times, like. Uh, They've given the speech at this point, right, about the nature of a glass onion, and, like, that. Uh, is that before yes. this point or after? No, Benoit when, says it right after solving his dumb mystery party. Right, because I think once he gave that speech, it's like, right, so you're fucking with me then, right? Like, you're trying to set up in my mind that there's going to be, like, a murder mystery going on here, and you're making me focus so much on Miles and the reasons people have to kill him. I bet you that's what you're doing. You're trying to focus me on, on that to make me not realize that, like, Miles might have reasons to do something. Of course, the problem is, you have no information at this point that could, like, lead to that conclusion other than, what are you playing at, Ryan? I think that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's the attitude I had. Uh, legit, Play meta my games, win meta prizes. Right around with Mel on this movie, I'm pretty sure I said, I thought he was like, okay. Like, I'm pretty sure that's how I dealt with the new shot. I was just like... Mm -hmm. Like, like, in my own head, I was right. like, was that how that went? And it's like, okay. And I have a feeling <laughs> that, that, that Ryan and many other people would be like, aha, that's kind of the point. That's how Miles gets people, is he'll tell them what the truth is, and they'll kind of just buy it, because they didn't think more thoroughly about it. And I'm like, mate, this is, it's a oh. movie. I don't, like, I can't remember every single frame when I first time go through it. Like, what do you mean? It's not really a matter of thinking it through logically. It's like, I legitimately can't remember what I saw. And then I, well, and, and yeah. that combined with what film, what information do you want me to be operating on right now? Because I can't, I'm not actually sure. So I'm just, I'm going with whatever you just told me, I guess. And it's like, aha, that was so clever. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and that's going to be flipped again later on. Don't you worry. What? Again? Oh yeah. Uh, Damn. So yeah, they, um, they then realize 
Oh, this gets really weird, actually. So they the, the security system is tripped again because of uh, the phone. Um, and then they're like, all right, we need to get his phone uh, and turn the alerts off because that's annoying. Oh, man, I don't know how to explain each of the problems with this. It's so bad. It's like, I'm just going to go silence Duke's phone, right? So it, it plays here. I think I think I want to jump ahead a little bit, all right? Because we kind of revealed Miles <laughs> has done this. So Miles stole Duke's phone as well. Okay. Right. He's got it mm -hmm. in his back pocket right now. Miles does not have a phone. That is what everyone knows. But you can see it in his back pocket. It is very fucking obvious. This is a really weird move from Miles. The only justification is he's an idiot. That's it. And that's what everyone would say is true. He is indeed an idiot. You can see it right there. So he's got Duke's phone. Ben Wise is also an idiot, apparently. Wait, wait, wait. He hasn't silenced it. It's he still playing the fucking yeah. sounds. Mm -hmm. Absolutely insane. Now, th this is the thing that when I was watching it, and I was like, how long does it take for him? Because he needs to access that phone and turn it off. He needs to put it on silent. The sounds go off, and then they go, oh, we need to go and get his phone and turn it off so it stops fucking with the security system. You don't see his hands touch that phone for a good while, so if only another alert went off, it would start getting real fucking suspicious, especially for Benoit, who's right next to he would uh, it. Duke's body. He'd yeah. be like, so that's not coming from Duke, that's coming from you. And mm -hmm. that's yeah. a huge deal. It's like, you stole his phone. That's weird. <laughs> that's very odd. Mm. And and you were just mm. talking it's about us. how, like, you don't definitely... And it's like, that's what's, what's going on, man. And then, of course, while he's searching for the phone... Because, again, as this scene is playing, he can't silence the phone. He's literally using his hands to talk. Um, Benoit spots that the gun is missing. Mm-hmm. No, but he doesn't spot it. It's, uh, it's Lionel that spots it. Oh, Lionel spots it, you're right. Um, oh, right. And then he's like, oh, that. my God, the gun is missing. It's hard, to, it's hard to be clear about this. Benoit's had access fully to Duke's body for, like, yeah. ten minutes at least, and he hasn't... Dis Maybe worth checking if the the gun is on his waist. If it's not yeah. there, you're gonna notice. Yes, he's a detective. It's a little bit of everything else that he hasn't seen. So everyone else in that party is gonna notice whether or not someone carrying a loaded gun with him at all times. It's probably well, nervous as fuck. That makes me want to roll this back. Actually, it was like, wait, when did did he have the? It's like he had that gun when I was showing it earlier when he was talking about his Google alerts. It's mm. right at the moment he tells Miles about his awesome view count. That's when Miles takes uh, his gun, I think. Yeah. Which, first of all, Just, are you a fucking yeah, sleight of hand how person? How notice. did you do that? <laughs> like, I feel like uh, that's the, when you hug someone and you take a gun from their waist that's between you both. The sound of it, the feeling of it, the weight of it's gone. Yeah, that's, that's at least a good couple pounds being taken right off his junk. It's like, yeah, yeah it's really hard. Yeah. But then Absolutely. you can hear the retention when it gives after you pull a weapon out. Yeah, and you want me to believe he's a crazy right winger who shoots his gun all the time. It's like, so he's gonna know the second his fucking gun is gone, isn't he? Yeah, he just he just takes the gun away in that moment. Uh, I don't believe it. I just don't. And then he puts it in the back of his like, uh, you know, uh, in his pants at the back. It's just like, man, that's so easy to spot as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You can see it as he's walking around. There's just a gun in his back now. <laughs> yeah, it's so Benoit sees literally everything in hyper detail <laughs> until he doesn't at all. This is what I mean. Mm -hmm. This is why yeah. I, I struggle with movie. Benoit as a, the world's greatest detective. He doesn't just miss Quite stuff story. that would be cool for him to catch, like him having a phone. He misses everything. <laughs> yeah. Like a man who's famous for having his gun like, Got it. being dead, and he doesn't check his body for his fucking gun. Can you see the the gun like on? on uh, no, not the. You can like, see that he's got something in his back that's uh, outlined as okay, a gun. Okay, so so like, what am I meant to believe that the film shows me when later we get another shot that is the same as the one before, but with totally different information in it? Yeah. Well, you mean you trying to tell the difference between um when like is a the continuity film, when error or the film or not? You know, Th like that's kind of like the point that I'm highlighting, which will become more apparent with one shot in particular. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, if you can see the gun here right now, it's like, what's well, interesting that there was a shot earlier in the film where you just hid somebody completely. Like, you completely... Yeah, we'll, we'll get to it. So, yeah. Uh, like I said, it's, it, it, these are things that it would be cool if he could pick up because he's a detective. The kind of shit that I would expect to see in, like, uh, the Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes type stuff. He'd be like, I saw mm -hmm. the outprint of a blah, blah, blah. But, uh, yeah, I think, I think it completely breaks when you, you can't have him notice... That his, his gun and phone are gone, and that the what you've defined as the murder weapon, you don't even look at it. 
like the two yeah. most important things that he owns that guy his phone which was highlighted and his gun which he just fires randomly the two critical items that you need you don't <laughs> and notice that they're gone this is what people <laughs> are more like we've not even started really but this is what people are referring to in terms of like wow this film is stupid and it's like yeah don't you get it it's supposed to be it's like I don't think Benoit is supposed to be a shit detective. Uh, I don't no, know. He's yeah. supposed to be the only non-stupid person in this room currently. <laughs> Apparently. Didn't yeah. achieve that very well. Uh, nope. <sighs> yeah, he literally goes, Oh, fiddlesticks, where's his gun? <sighs> when did his gun disappear? Wait, yeah, and then when 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 uh, when uh, Miles is like kind of grabbing him with his back to LeBlanc, shouldn't Le, uh, now I'm saying LeBlanc, Le, <laughs> Benoit Blanc, uh, shouldn't he feel the fucking gun on his on his back? You should feel something hard. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my. He's already God. tossed into the. Uh... Well, he's not like hey. he's a detective, dude. Hey, Miles, is that oh, right. a gun, or are you really just happy to see me? You're saying, yeah. And well, Benny didn't hear the phone chime on him either. Like, what the fuck? No, he couldn't. He, the sound was just that vague that he couldn't tell. <laughs> okay. You know what? Sometimes I, I wouldn't be surprised that after that first shot showing the gun in his back, that they shot all the future ones without the gun in his back. Uh, you, you know what? It yeah, looks like they've taken it out either. at this point. Yeah. Then again, yeah, um, if he's, he's already if you remember, yeah, he stashes it in. He stashes it in one of the stupidest fucking places ever. He puts it in like the ice box for the drinks. <laughs> does, yeah. So, you know the place that people would regularly be checking at and, a party? It, well, the funny thing is, I have just made it sound more secretive than it actually is. I'm talking about, like, they're all open and it's just like a, a, a you know, like he, a like, bucket for ice. He tosses it in. He, like, yeah, he just throws puts it in. It in. Just throws yeah. it in. So it probably, it, it, it probably like, is oh, a way by that point, but then... Situation. This is what I mean. It's, it's, it's like, it probably would have been better if it was in his back the whole time than in there. Absolutely. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a regular place to put your gun if you're trying to conceal it in the small of your back. That's where I keep mine, typically. Well, I guess it's been pointed out, though, that then he wouldn't have been able to, like, lean against uh, uh, Daniel Craig, because otherwise, then he definitely should have noticed. Well, yeah, but then all you need right? to do as a writer is just not have him flip not himself him around, that, yeah. you know? Yeah. But that's funnier, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> This is so stressful. I need a drink. What? <laughs> so, uh, then Miles starts panicking, and he's like, oh god, oh no, the game, the murder game, the game, oh god, I was gonna have it be that now, now at 10 o'clock, the, the lights are gonna go out, and then they do, and it's super dramatic and scary. Yeah. Timing. Convenience. Uh -huh. it's, it's just, yeah, because then uh, Ryan clearly wants to do a different kind of scene, which is the, how do you go from... The fact that the lights are turned off is just like, okay, well, I mean, they've all got phones. They can just turn their giant lights on on them. And yep. Like, phone lights in the, these days are amazing. Um, even my parents are always shocked by them. They're just like, oh my god. It's like, yeah, I can light up a whole fucking room at this point. But, sure, fine, that happens. What, how, what, where are you going next with this? It's like, we're going to get it to a point where everyone is just running around expecting to be <laughs> murdered, terrified, and then someone will, will die. You're like, why would they do that? You're like, um... That's that's what humans do when they panic, right? The lights went off, they panic, and they all run away. Okay. Uh, because instead of just yeah, instead of just sitting here and just asking uh, Miles, hey, how long until the lights come back on? And it says this much time, and then we go, okay, well, we'll just sit here then. Seems like they'd all be safer if they just you know well, hung out in the same first, fucking room. Right? Um, well, so funny enough, the first thing I think that happens is that uh, yeah, uh, whiskey comes into the room with a spear gun. And says it was Andy. She killed Duke, and she tore our room apart. I saw her. Yeah, remember when it was just a funny meme in the beginning? It's like, oh, I'm gonna get my spear gun. Ha ha. No, he he actually brought a spear gun. And yeah, here he was it is. able to and there transport is. the spear gun. And uh, mm. and in response to that, Miles says no, not today, and then runs off on his own into the darkness. Really weird choice. But, yes. If Andy <laughs> is the killer, why not just hang out with everyone here? That's where you're safest. Of course, everyone would of course stick together. You would never isolate yourself from the group. Yeah, yeah. And so Benoit goes to chase oh, him, and obviously yeah. they split up. And then, then everyone is just in different parts of the place, all running around doing things. And we find a knife is missing. We know the gun is missing. So, um, <clears throat> real quick, before before the lights go off, there's a dumb thing that uh, Blanc does that bugged me. So, right when they discover that the gun is missing, he says, "By the way, where's Andy?" 
and it kind of puts the idea into everyone's head that maybe she has the gun or something. And it's mm-hmm. like, well, surely, as we'll find out later, you you kind of want to protect her, don't you? Yeah, why are yeah. you calling why attention you do that? to her? In fast why forward, it makes more that? sense. That's actually true. Yeah, he shouldn't want to do that at all. No, but he does. It's not just protecting her. It's that she's on a current job. Yes. Mm-hmm. That he sent her on. So that's really weird that he did that, yeah. Another thing, I, there's there's a lot to think about in this film th- th- for all the wrong reasons. Uh, <laughs> yeah, everyone's just running around. What could possibly be happening? I don't even know. And then uh, uh, Benoit catches up with Andy, but he calls her Helen, which is a bit strange. This is like, what's going on? And then uh, they're just clarifying what's happened, and he basically says, like, I've I've got it. I can figure it all out. There's just one last piece of information that someone has. But as they're talking, someone with a gun is aiming. Oh, Lord. And then, right as he says the last thing, the, the evil gunman shoots. Oh, gunwoman. Pew, Could pew, be pew, gunwoman. Pew. Oh, that's true. That's true. And uh, <laughs> it hits Andy slash whoever Helen is. And um, I think that's where we switch into a different film, basically. <sighs> well, after all of the people, I the like lights come back on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah you know what? That's like, still functional. Yeah, we should probably say how this actually runs out is that um, the gun is dropped. She's fallen to the ground. We get shots of the whole place being in darkness. And then Benoit is, uh, is crying, basically, and everyone's surrounding the area. And uh, there's, a, there's a dead lady on the ground with blood, apparently, <laughs> on her. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, is it is. What do incredibly... you mean? Incredibly convenient to think that the killer whoever it was even though we already know who it was it's incredibly convenient that like the power outage that was already planned ahead of time coincided with him receiving a piece of information that saw him kick off this set of calamitous events uh with the drink the yes. timing man it's incredible it's all wrong. oh mm-hmm. god i just oh uh, you know what I'll, I'll i'll hang on to it it's it's coming later hmm <laughs> Yeah, it was funny because when I think everyone, when you're first watching this, she is so obviously super important that it's like she's not that dead. You know. yeah. He's not he dead. He had no <laughs> screen time, barely any screen yeah. time so far. Yeah, she had the look away and look over her shoulder, yeah. look at the star. She's yeah, too yeah, protag, yeah. man. Oddly, that would have been subversive. Again, yeah, if they'd killed yeah. her. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It would have been a really interesting story, and it would be a lot for uh, Benoit to deal with. Like, because mm-hmm. he would have kind of killed her. At least he why can feel some like that. What do you mean? Yeah, why that? was why was the gun dropped? Because oh, stupid. Sucks. Yeah. I don't know. Actually, that's a good question. Uh, but anyway, he, he tells everybody to go back in the room. Nobody feels the need to check on the body. Nope. <laughs> they even no one lost. suspects him either. They even but almost do, but then Benoit's just like, nope, nope, she isn't going anywhere, which is a is really going. strange thing to say. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, really? Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, and then he says, uh, Peg, radio the police, tell them to fucking beach it if they have to, which is, again, I just think that's funny as fuck. Which they would have done fucking anyway. Now we care. They would have done anyway, because mm-hmm. there's been a murder. Not the only a murder, a murder with, oh, on the island of a guy that's this important to... You know, like a billionaire. Like, come on. Yeah. Oh, God, this movie's about to... So, like, try and understand that this is going to get difficult because we've got to re-talk about lots of different scenes and they're all going to get Ooh. way stupider right. now. Let's uh, kick it. They're like, explain what happened to us, please. And then he's like, I could peel back the layers, but what lies at the center? <laughs> Only one person <laughs> can tell us who killed Cassandra Brand. And then it's like, cut to black. <laughs> And we are resetting hey. in terms of events back further than when this movie began. Yeah. When we decided to watch this, and then we, we <laughs> warn our younger selves, no, no, don't do it, don't do it. Well, so this, this, is, this is a moment, and it, I love explaining this to people because it's so funny. It's like, we are one hour and ten minutes into the movie. What do you think is going to happen now as a big twist? And it's like, turns out the lady who just got killed, she has an identical twin sister. And it's, it's like one of the yeah. most generic, like, oh, what? I, I felt much pain at this point. Hey, fun fact, Ryan Johnson claims that he was forced to do this. What? What? Why? What? Why? Yeah. 
There, I he. I, I don't know why he doesn't say. He just says he was forced to do this. He, I'm, I'm like, I'm pretty sure he's full of shit. But <laughs> what? Well, that's the that's that's the main twist of your movie. So you were forced to make a shit movie. What are you talking about? Yeah, he was forced <laughs> to do it by nobody he mentions and why. He just what? says he was forced to do it. Really if he doesn't want to say this. why, then just don't say that. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck we're supposed to do with that. Also, information um, then. Dragged you know, kicking you can, and screaming. This is a meme though, right? I gotta like, see this. this. Okay. I mean, that's kind of interesting what? if it's true. It, this but the thing of it like is, he's, he's so is vague about it though. It's... Mm. North Weird. East Mississippi Daily Journal. What is that? <laughs> this seems like a meme. <laughs> what, like, are you sure that this is real and not just some bullshit? Well, I mean, I, like, I, you know, if you if you just Google Rian Johnson kicking and screaming, like, there's several articles just keep on quoting it over and over again. So I'm not even really sure. Well, I can believe it. Like it seems pretty simple so far. The 49-year-old director admitted he tried to consider whether or not the audience would accept the twist, and he thinks the placement of the reveal makes it work. He added, I thought, will the audience ever forgive me for this? I think we get away with it because it's not like the reveal at the end. It's a complication in the middle that leads to a deepening of the stakes in the story. No. Definitely deepens no. it. No. <laughs> Uh, he said, it's a joke that I thought was pretty brilliant and I ended up giving it some serious thought as much as I take the murder mystery genre seriously, I take the genre of Muppet ah. movie seriously. What? Okay. Oh, that's <laughs> this this has Collins. to be a meme, come on. He's responding like, to fans calling for a it's... Knives Out crossover with the Muppets. Oh, I see. Oh, can you imagine? Fucking hell. Poor so, by the way, that, that was Don't ruin the Muppets I... as well, dude. Come on. Don't be a Muppet. Don't be a muppet. Yeah. So for, obviously, so for the for those listening, that's that's the reality we're dealing with here. You're in a murder mystery. We're this far in, close to fucking two hours, and they're about yeah. to drop on you that one of the recent victims has a twin sister, and it's going to recontextualize everything. It sounds like something in in Futurama's The Scary Door or or some bullshit <laughs> where it's like there was a twin sister all along, and you're like, oh. uh. now yeah. someone would be you, like, and Wait. you might want you might wonder, hey, what what are we actually going to do now, like? This can't be too long. Like we, we already had the murders happen, and we're about to reveal everything. So I don't know. What we got? Like another twenty, thirty minutes? <laughs> no, mm -hmm. like an, an hour left or something at well, yeah. this point. To, to, sorry, to make sense of what I said, this reveal and the recontextualization, I didn't mean it happens in a minute. This happens in the course of like forty minutes. Right. It is long. <laughs> it's the next stretch of the film. And it's yes. this is the part where I was like, "Fuck, you've destroyed the pacing of your film." It's like, yeah, annihilated. Um, but anyway, someone out there is going to be like, "Hey, so you're saying it can never work to reveal a twist twin?" And it's funny because one of my favorite movies of all time has exactly that in it. <laughs> it's just yeah, that, um, that's right. But it's the, an actual subversion in that movie, though. Well, it's fucking that's fantastic in that movie. First and foremost, the whole movie is about magicians that use doubles all the time, and it's presented as an option throughout it we're shown the trick in many other ways with doubles and one of the characters keeps saying it's a double it's a fucking double i bet you it's a double and everyone's like no no it's got to be more complicated than that it can't be that it has to be something else this movie i'm sorry where was the reference for how we even thought of a concept that there would be another andy where was that a thing <laughs> <laughs> where did you it's pull totally, this from it, and is this <laughs> does this does this link into the whole idea of the glass onion being see it was really simple all along. She had a twin sister who impersonated <laughs> her to go onto the island to figure out who killed her sister, who had been killed by one of these people. Wait, uh, you know what I mean? Like, yes. it's, it's just this totally new, absurd piece of information. It doesn't fit the theme of the movie at all. It doesn't all. fit the theme of the movie. It directly contradicts it, I would say, because yes. this is not a simple explanation. This no. is absurdity. And it also just means that you're in a position where any amount of speculating you were doing before, at this point, you got to be like, oh, well, I guess, fuck that, right? Fuck like, everything that I was trying to it, figure yeah. out beforehand is now gone. It's out the window completely. And maybe that's the point. I don't know. This, maybe, to me, maybe he <laughs> is so out of left field, because, like, the 40 minutes is going to contextualize why this is a meaningful twist. We had no concept for why this is a meaningful twist yet. He's going to explain no. why the twist matters after the twist. Like, that is an incredibly <laughs> awful way of trying to do it. Um, and part of the... It would be like if you had, like, you know, uh, a billionaire is killed, and there's five people that might relate to it who will want the inheritance, and then halfway through, you're like, the billionaire was a clone, by the way. 
Like, you're like, yeah. okay. Uh, this changes. I mean, this doesn't really. Yeah. You, you, well, you're asking yourself, what does that change? Like, what have what have we? And it's like, let me explain how this changes everything. You're like, okay. All right. <laughs> I'm glad we bothered. <laughs> All right, let's hear it. This you may have wanted good. to do that ahead, but okay, fine. Yeah, so here it comes. Um, man, I got to redo all of this basically. So, yeah, this you have Andy, who uh, I think she she goes on to explain this. Uh, she was sitting around doing a thing, and she gets called and told her sister Andy is dead. Andy is dead. This is Helen. She is a different character. Helen Brand. Her sister is Cassandra Brand. Andy. That's the one that we've been seeing in the whole movie. In reality, yep. she died well before we even uh, got to the island and stuff, right? So that's actually Helen. You're like, okay. Accepted. How does this change anything? It's like, so she received the call that her, her sister was dead, and then she went to her house to clear up some stuff. She thinks it's, it sucks that this happened, that sort of thing. Then she gets, uh, I think the first thing that happens is that uh, the, the gift arrives, the box, and she's like, mm -hmm. what? Um, so it's already a bit like, oh, that was coincidental that you end up getting it and that you, you were there to grab it when it comes along. It's not like a place that you live, but sure, fine. And then um, she starts getting all Hi. suspicious about this, the whole nature of everything. And so she's like, one of the first things she mentions is that uh, she checks her emails, which she can just do. <laughs> um, it is, it ain't, as far as I'm aware, the average person just doing, their, like, I think if I asked my dad or my mum to go check my emails, I don't think they'd be able to do it. Uh, in terms, well, first yeah. of all, they wouldn't have the passwords. Well, I think but... the implication is that the, it's just, it was just left open on her computer in her house. And somehow the police just never thought to check that. Well, so yeah, I was going to say, you, you, you lose one way or the other with that, obviously. Uh, yeah, one way yeah. is too hard to get it's into, terrible. the other way it's easy enough that the police should have had that and there's an investigation. Uh, it's it, it's oh, literally two I hours two hours see, after the email bro. was sent. Uh, that's when she died, and the email is like, "I'm gonna ruin his life," something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, yeah, like I have so seen stupid. that. So, wow. uh, but but uh, you know what? That's all great. It's excellent, and that gives her the motive to f to <laughs> seek out Benoit to discover whether or not she actually killed herself because she doesn't believe it. And then she says, uh, "He's like." Um, you know, like, why, why are you involving me specifically? And she said, I, I googled best detective ever, and you came up, basically. <laughs> as, long, as well as I mean, your address. I, I guess so there, I suppose. Um, yeah. In this world yeah. where he's the super mega famous detective, I'm like, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and by the way, this is what the email reads, or I could be paraphrasing, but basically, I finally found it. I'm going to use this to burn his whole empire down. You know where to find me. And uh, she sent that to four people of interest, being the uh, Duke, Birdie, Claire, and Lionel. Not Miles. No. And uh, and then she she ends with saying, "I couldn't find that that envelope in that picture that she's threatening has everything she needs to destroy his empire. She couldn't find it, so it's gone." And then Ben was like, "Compelling." And then he says, if I was to get these people alone without, like, an army of lawyers surrounding them, like, I'm able to get some information, do some kind of investigating. You want me to go to the island, yeah? And then she's like, yeah, it's stupid, isn't it? And he goes, I'm not Batman. Yes. I can find the truth. I can gather evidence and present it to the police and the courts. The implication it's with that line that Batman is... Batman can't do. <laughs> this might be there's such a weird line. I was like, uh, is he saying that he can't kill them? Because he's not Batman. <laughs> well, Batman. Well, I guess these you know days I mean? he kills a lot, but I think. Well, I think he's better known typically as not fucking killing people. So I don't know what he's implying with that. I think he's saying that he's not a vigilante. He can only do these things within the yeah. Constraints but she the wants them That's taken to law. For when he does, he can pull some strings. She wants them taken to law, though, right? I, I guess he might be thinking, like, do you want more than that? Like, what exactly well, so, do you, like, I can't guarantee anything. I can just do my investigation, and then that's that. The backup issue to be that is, wait, Benoit, do you not believe in that? As in, like, do you consider your position restrictive? You'd like to be able to exact some vigilante justice? Is that part of his character? Well, I imagine that, <laughs> I imagine the steel man would be, no, like, the point is that that is not who he is. That's the way that he operates, and that's the way he always will. Well, you so, know like, what? There's only so much he can do. Keep that in the back we'll pocket, eh? We'll put a pin in that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, of course we'll put a yeah, pin in that. No, we're not putting a pin in that. We're getting an enormous steel stake, and we are hammering oh, that into God. the yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a vampire. This movie's like a vampire, and we had to put wooden stakes into it. Yep. 
So, uh, she says, uh, yeah, like, I understand your position, but you are going to be better at this than I am, which is fair point. And, mm -hmm. um, and then he says, wait a minute, your sister's death, it, 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 I don't think I've seen that in the news. And then she's like, oh shit, was I supposed to announce it? I don't know how any of this works. I, you don't I, need to announce that. Did you know that, um, I, not, I, you, you go ahead, because it's, <laughs> it's a crime to not this, disclose this, that you've come across a death or a body. This is a very casual thing that I have just said, and it destroys the entire movie again. Yeah. Because basically, I think we should go a little bit further ahead, then we'll row back. Basically, no, it has not been announced that his sister is dead. And he says, mm -hmm. you know, oh, why don't you pretend to be your sister, go to the island, that's going to rattle them enough to possibly talk about different things, this, there, and that, and, you know, we'll be able to maybe coax some stuff out. You pretending to be your sister, and I'm there as an investigator. We'll be able to. We'll crack this case. So, mm -hmm. you know, if if it was public knowledge that she was dead, when she turns up, they're all going to be like, "You're dead, aren't you?" Yeah, basically, the whole mm -hmm. movie can't happen. Yes, uh, unless this <laughs> is the way that the arrangement works. Now, oh, I, just, I, just whoops, wanna... I didn't notify it, the world. If I can roll it all oh. the way back to the script making process, where I was probably this is like, interesting "Ain't it interesting as an idea logic. a twin sister to investigate the twin sister's murder as that person because they know one person committed the crime but the others did not, and therefore the only one person that knows is that she's like a zombie right now." You know, it creates an interesting dynamic, right? It's like, "How are you going to pull yeah. that off?" It's like, uh, "Well, we'll uh, we'll have it be that." Oh fuck, we need to have it be that she's found, but we also she's uh, famous, right? Like, she's yes. pretty famous? Uh, well, yeah, so I was actually famous. going to bring that in a little bit later, but yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's decided, <laughs> she dies, and it, ha it hasn't been long enough that it's made it to the papers yet, but it has gone to the coroner, and the autopsy has happened. Uh, mm -hmm. And so how, how exactly. we just find this, uh, the, sister, the sister's supposed to announce it, and she didn't. There you go, we've done it. It's up to the sit because the family gets to decide. Is that a thing? Well, it, does the family it, it doesn't work. The, honestly, they fucked it up when they had her say, I don't know how any of this works. If they had asked her, you know, to make a statement and how they want to do it, she would have done it by now. Exactly. Because right. yeah. she didn't, she didn't, it was like she only just got asked. It's like, oh, is that something I'm meant to do? Somebody there would have said, <sighs> well, like, well, so what's happening? Of course, yeah. We, so the, you also have to imagine she has no other when, family how? members at all. She's been I processed. Guess. There's there's official like information that regards this, but there's also exactly. Do you remember when? I can't believe I'm fucking having to do this. I have to though. So when it gets announced officially, and we're going to come back to that as well. She her phone blows up in seconds. She has like 36 messages, I think, from people, oh, individuals right. talking about like, oh, I'm so sorry for your oh. loss, that sort of thing. It's like you're telling me that when your sister died, she contacted nobody, no one. <laughs> She, Which she doesn't have any because... friends or family. It's like, well, you can't tell me that because I already know she has loads of beloved friends and family. Because first of all, she's a yep. wonderful, perfect person. Of course, everyone in the world loves her. But the... Like all of the fucking protagonists. And Absolutely. Goddamn her phone films. blew up. People are desperate to give her condolences. She, of course, has yeah. good relationships with plenty of them. She would, of course, be like, my sister has just passed away. Uh... This is well... This would have been well before she had any reason to be going to Benoit Blanc. Exactly. Or yeah. like doing any yeah. of this investigatory stuff. Exactly. There's the fact yeah. that she is a human being who just found out that a family member has died and would be destroyed. Yes. Um, and to be, you want to get to the bottom there. of it as soon as possible. To oh, be, oh, yeah. Okay, guys, she's done. Oh, uh, wait. At the Except time, not. At the yeah, time that um, Helen is talking to Benoit um, on, the, on his little terrace. Uh, she died four days ago, and she found out about it two days ago. Oh my god! So oh, yeah. it's been two days after Man, finding out. I was going to say that. I say that the, uh, the the circumstances well, that the film has created are pretty uh, implausible. Well, yeah. yeah to be fair, right? Way. Just to echo what you were just saying, Frank, is that this is where I'll bring it in now. So you know all of that, precious, precious audience. Put on top of that. Benoit actually eventually says, I thought I kind of recognized you because you looked like her and she is incredibly famous. She's famous. Uh, she was one of the people who you was can't, part of the company of this tech billionaire. You, can, you struggle to get away with it with just a normal person, non-famous yeah. person, but the idea that a famous celebrity and you manage to accidentally hide it from the world. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. And, and the accidentally only, part is perfect. All only in that was the whole plot to happen. Recognized by face alone. This isn't even someone who's famous and no one knows what they look like sort of situation. Or really does. This is the, Benoit recognized her almost 
just by her her twin sister with a different hairstyle, right? Like it's mm -hmm. I don't know why you cripple your own movie by doing this. Cuz <laughs> fuck it. But yeah, uh, it destroys the whole movie as in several ways. We're going to get to that eventually if the information came out. Uh, it, it destroys it in a very big way specific to this film. There's something that happens yes. if someone finds out that information. Right. Um, oh, yeah. So yeah, that's really bad, but we can keep going. <laughs> this yeah. Why not? I stop there. I think She's... it's worth emphasizing as well in terms of the whole, could you have figured out this twist? It's like, well, we have no. no point of reference for who Andy is or how she behaves. We never got to see that. No. We never see Andy. She's been dead the whole film. So the only point of reference that we have for who Andy is is framed through the lens of her sister. Pretending so, to like, be her, nothing. which is all we know about her. Yeah, yeah. and we never exactly. knew she had a sister. Do any of the characters exactly. know she has a twin sister? I don't think There's so. Nothing. They nothing. don't, and it makes no fucking sense. She never so mentioned like, she had a twin sister, I guess. Dude, Miles exactly would know. Good. Miles would absolutely fucking know. Well, they, they do know, right? Do no, they, they, they yeah, recognize they her. They, they do mention wait. it. When don't it they say, don't up, they say, but... wait, are you Helen? Oh, okay. Don't I they see. say that? Like, or... So the problem yeah. is, so doesn't that do make it that. worse, though? That I mean, does yeah. make it worse. It dramatically because, worse, of yes. course, if you know that this sister has a twin sister, which you're gonna know, then if someone looking like the person you killed shows up, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, well, yeah. 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 What well. everybody thinks is not this person has returned from the dead. Mm. They're going to think, "Oh, this is the twin sister trying to fool me." Well, Cuz so I've seen right? every, well, remember Rags, yeah. not everybody, specifically the person responsible. Yeah, which is the Oh, yeah, that's right. It's even worse than what I said. Yeah, I, I keep, one we keep we not explaining how bad it is consistently. Damn. No, it's always I, it worse. was mentioned before. You didn't listen. So oh, I'm pretty okay. sure Mola just mentioned it like 5 minutes ago. Wow. About which out. about wait, about which thing specifically? Laying out the groundwork specifically for like isn't it like Ryan Johnson probably thought it was really interesting to have a scenario set up where this is the case, where people have access to different information. That That's not what I was... And, like, what I was saying was every single time that we, like, as a group, talk about it, we don't go far enough in explaining how bad well, it is. Well, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> this, this is a bit of an onion. It's... No, I didn't... I didn't... Yeah. <laughs> it it, it I said sounded... a different thing. No, 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 because before you laid out the whole thing of, like, well, wait a minute, like, if, if you know that she has a twin sister, then surely you would also deduce, like... Wait, this is the twin sister, not that she's alive from the back from the dead. That was a point. This was just to support the second thing I was gonna say. Oh, okay, yeah. Which sure. was the oh, how every time on. we describe it, it's like it's actually worse than. It's how just we that it, it sounded like you said it as though it wasn't something that's already been mentioned. That's, well, that's all. all right. We have not even okay. gotten close to the bigger things yet, by the way. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Yeah, it, it, I think I saw someone in the comments, by the way. Problems with their plan. Oh, well, well uh, I was actually going to say next, right? Auto. This one yeah. actually annoys me a lot, is the she says, is this safe? And then he's like, no. One person no. knows the truth, the killer, and they will want to kill you, and they will likely actually be willing to do so to cover their tracks for having killed you before. <laughs> so well, Absolutely, you know, if they're willing to do it once, then they'll yeah. then, think they'll yeah, try and then, to kill the same person again. Yeah. So that, that sound, and then he says, I'm not a bodyguard. I, I can't help you. And then she Body says, God, no, God. one of them killed my sister. Do you think we can get that son of a bitch? Basically, mm. he says, you are not safe. And then she's like, all right, let's do it. It's even, it's <laughs> even worse than that. He changes his story when he's explaining everything to uh, um, everybody in the room. That He says that everybody in this room had a real life uh, reason to wish this woman harm. Everybody <clears throat> on the island had a reason to hurt this lady. Oh, yeah. Not just the killer. So he put her in incredible the danger. Lion's den, yeah. Alone yeah, and, and, on and, and an specifically, island. the reason is because if he goes alone, it's going to be weird to try and bring up the topic of Andy. But if she's there, then it'll be easier to pry them open on it. But yeah. really, it's just a, a measure of, oh, so you're just not very good at your job. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, you're He's a fucking world-renowned detective. What you have to do is find... You need to talk to Helen forever about those stupid journals and figure out every last angle you can come in, figure out how much of this information is public. For example, Miles, 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 Alpha, uh, I thought that was, wasn't that you and um, uh, Cassandra something, right? Didn't you guys run it together? And then he can be like, mm. huh, 
Yeah, we did. You know, and even if you were like, oh, well, that's too overt, too. I'd just be like, you're fucking bringing the zombie version of her over here. I don't know, like, how this is going to help. <laughs> this is what I mean, like, and I don't write fucking whodunits. But if I did, I'd probably work for a while trying to have a detective come across as rather... More so than, like, yeah, okay more so than many person. other genres. This should be, like, it may be the number one genre of a kind of movie that needs to rely and be very, very strict with its logic, more so than any other. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a puzzle, basically. Oh, this... You have, to, you have to have all the details perfect, basically. Uh, someone's uh, presented the question. I think it's fair to give it a little look-see. What do you guys think? Uh, why did Miles send a puzzle box to Andy? Yeah, that uh, is a good question. I figured yeah. it was. Uh, I, I'm like, it's well, I didn't bullshit. know that she did. I didn't know that she I was think, dead because I sent. Uh, I think it's a good enough explanation that he did it. They said this was yearly, and has she been invited to all of them? Uh, every one of them. I mean, yes. I, guess, I guess so. But it would and make he, perfect sense if he didn't send it to her because the trial just happened a few months. Yeah, ago. after that lengthy court battle, oh, right, where he I just think. like destroyed mm -hmm. her life. I don't yeah. think uh, she'd want to go to his. Right. No one would find it yeah. suspicious if he didn't this time. Uh, is the idea yeah. though that he sent yeah. it to be like really piling on the idea of like oh, I don't know what, what happened to her. I have what? no idea yeah. what happened. So, yeah, you th I think that would make him look more suspicious though. The issue that I think this presents is that he is characterized as a really, really stupid person thoroughly. It's yeah. kind of like the point. So we can never so figure out what him, he would do. Well, so having <laughs> him do this admittedly fairly, I guess, clever thing to act as if he didn't know she was dead by sending her the box is a kind of a breach of his character that's done in order to further a reason for her to be here at all. Well, but ER's right, arguing that it is the, the worst thing to do. So, uh, yeah. to, I... to send her a box? I... I, it would be less suspicious to... You'd want to send her a box. you want to act as if she's alive. Well, wait, what's the argument for how it would be but the worst move? After a court battle where they basically have been estranged and there's surely no longer... There's no you'd still do it. There. I still, I still think you'd do it because... Do that, um, well, or, couldn't one argue well, that you're well, overcompensating? So it's, it's like something that you would do yeah. to cover well, up something. Here, here's the relevant question. What is What would actually be the risk of sending that box to her? Like, what would actually happen that he should be scared of? Yeah, if if even if you think that she's not going to actually come, you would want to put that out there as if anything, or you, or at least you'd want to present that. Oh no, it's just, it was just business. We're still together. It's no problem. We're fine. Oh, we're cool. I think we the, have, we're we're. I don't yeah. know specifically for a murder party at that after you've murdered her. <laughs> just part of it, but you murdering of, her, that's not known. It's it's about what you present to the. Could world it be that the the true drilled issue here is actually. It's really coincidental that she found the napkin two hours later he commits to killing her just one week before this annual get-together. You know, like the coincidence being yeah. she found the napkin right. in the timeline of the event happening. Yeah, I suppose the chances well, of the... Cause, yeah, because... Because her know. death would have been announced. I mean, well, her death should have been fucking announced been, anyway. But. <laughs> it could have been any number. Yeah, you're right. Like, if it happened a month earlier, the whole film can't happen. Yeah. Would he have had two weeks earlier? I just I think Jesus. under normal circumstances, you just would not send this box to this lady. You have... You're not These aren't normal anymore. circumstances. Well, of course, they're not normal circumstances. And don't but say under normal circumstances as part of your argument. But you want to pretend that things are normal. You want to pretend you're not friends even, with this lady anymore. But so, you want to present that you're on good terms with her, even especially why? it, because especially if you actually know that she's dead and you killed her, right? Then you would want to, you would want to show no. No, I was. I just wanted to extend a thing of goodwill. I wanted to say we're totally cool. We have no well, personal Rags, issues you do remember with each other. He annihilates her. Like he, uh, he, he fiscally her annihilates her. He did more than he ever needed to. He took everything from her. I still, I still think it'd be better to send her one. Well, but like, I don't know what you have to are lose. you really gonna maintain like, oh, you know, we're in a good, good, good relationship. I took well, everything the, she what's has. There to, what's, there to, well, what's there to lose like, by sending one? Um, well, I just the, think it makes you look a little bit weird. I, part of what the only makes argument I can think suspicious. of is overcompensation. Uh, someone yes, could and part infer. of what makes it look suspicious is that the box arrives two days after she dies. Or three days after. Well, he would death. just say that in order to try and get back, we're going to do the thing that we typically do, and it was his attempt to reach out to her, and that would be not an unreasonable thing to tell the world. I guess the thing is, is uh, that I, I can just... I like, after you completely destroyed the lady, but... 
that's i i think i get that in a more it's just that you see examples in real life where people who obviously hate each other or don't get along like politicians or like business rivals or things will still like be all chummy chummy or something apparently yeah. and it's on, something like, you surface, could say out loud that you've actually done. hate each other you've right? always like, got can you think of something to say. that degree where you essentially bankrupt them and take everything they built themselves away uh, from them? i don't really have an ex i don't have like an example that i could give i think the i think that the despite how shitty obviously their relationship is i can believe that like a billionaire would be like well yeah i'm still gonna like invite her to into the thing you know just i don't even necessarily expect her to come but like she was part of it so i'm just going to invite her anyway yeah you know what the, I mean? the worst thing people will say is that was really cheeky of you i guess yeah maybe but even that might help you right that you're being a little bit of an asshole to that somebody, you were the one reaching out right? to yeah yeah i'm being an asshole to someone that i believe to be alive I totally agree mm. that it is pretty crazy the timing and everything that enables the whole plot to happen. I the timing is the issue. Mm -hmm. I believe yeah. he could make this because, choice. I don't find because remember, that he oh, doesn't. I can believe this character would though. That's not really my issue because the problem is that he could do anything. Kind of right reason. He's, <laughs> he's not yeah, because like, he's a I, retard. I mean, well, yeah, I, guess that's I mean, the thing. maybe it's, it's not really no use arguing it because ugh, he just does not act logically well, in any way. Well, so the the thing is here, I'm not actually appealing to his, like, a, like I'm kind of appealing to this being, like, a fairly logical choice to make. So maybe it's not in character. Maybe it would have been in character for him to not That's kind of, that was my original <laughs> point, where this is kind of a, this is a logical thing to do, right? I'm, I'm on the and fence. I could be convinced by the side at this point. Even then, then do. it, that, that doesn't even really that matter that much. He believes this to be a logical thing that he thought about doing and committed to as part of a plan, which... Does that match with anything he does really in the rest uh, of the kind film? of kind of because there are moments when, despite the fact that the movie makes him seem like a complete and total retard, there are moments where he's actually quite good at misdirecting things. and yeah, um, like yeah. especially when okay, so taking the when, gun, taking the the phone, using when the he specifically the puts it in everyone's head that oh he picked up my glass that oh, was yeah, if I can trying to kill me. If I can actually develop that, because I want to simultaneously, that is true, what you're just saying is, is supports his, like, into, uh, ingenuity, you could say, but simultaneously, uh -huh. he is doing fucking Benoit's job for him in that moment. He's waiting for him to discover the glass, but he won't. He's fucking <laughs> missing it. So he's like, oh, man, what does the glass say? And then yeah, Benoit's exactly. like, oh, man, look at the glass. Like, it's, it's kind of hilarious that he has to do his job for him in that moment. Well, so you see, Mola, this is why the film is brilliant, because unlike a glass onion, you actually peel back and the layers reveal yet more and more interesting information. So really- but, like That Miles was more intelligent than Benoit? Her. Is that intentional? Exactly. <laughs> yes. I, you know what? Maybe he would say yes if you said it to him. You'd be like, yeah, sure, he was. Hmm. Here's a question. Um, hmm. How do we feel about the fact that Benoit says he could pull a few strings and keep it out of the news for a week? Uh, oh, oh my yeah, God. I don't know how that would happen. Yeah. Bullshit. Don't think he has a jurisdiction to do that. No. This is absolutely. He would have to let. So, in order for this to be like remotely possible, what he would have to do is say, All right, police. And he's talking to all the police and the commissioner and everything like that. <laughs> I, am, I am LeBlanc. I am Matthew LeBlanc, and I'm the world's most famous detective. <laughs> and I believe that I know this, 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 and this. That leads me to believe that this murder was part of a larger conspiracy or a larger plot. And in order to get to the bottom of it, we need to keep this murder from going out into the news so that I can do X. And then the police will be like, but Matthew LeBlanc, world famous detective, what is X? What, what are you going to do? Right. What are we facilitating by hiding this death? And then he would have to explain to them this insane <laughs> plot. And also, so I guess here's the question. What's, what the fuck is his jurisdiction? Like, where did she die? America. I, well, America. He's a private detective. Also right? Greece. Like, he's, not, he's not a police detective. He's like a... Is he a PI or is he a, is he a detective? The world. The he's a PI, for sure. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, he would have to be, right? So, like, yes. he has no juris... Like, he just have to ask them to do that for him. He's a private citizen, just, yeah. So he, he would, would have, have to... Be a to... Favor. He, do a he could do... favor for him. Like, if his plan... If we watched a different movie where his plan was really amazing and excellent and he was connected to it in some way... He might be able to convince the police to keep the murder from going public for a little bit. That's probably believable if he had a really good plan that he was involved with and he had his reputation as he did. The well, problem was, in order to do all of that stuff, 
he would have to present some kind of a plan to the police oh, to convince them to yeah. keep the murder secret. But the plan is bonkers. So they just trust well, also, enough, and they're like, oh, sorry. I don't. I guess all, they wouldn't know. Well, also, it's only been, what was it, four days we established? Yeah. Already? Uh, yeah. It doesn't quote unquote only. Yeah, yeah. Oh, already. I meant already, not only. Already. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, 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 he doesn't even know who knows by now. So who, who are you even going to ask? Like, all the news outlets in America or wherever we are? Oh, well, I, my guess would be that the logic is it's still within the police and it hasn't been released yeah. to the public yet. So he'll ask the police in wherever the town that she lives in. But you have like, to... Not anybody. You'd have to hope that nobody files a missing persons report, though. Yes. Exactly. Uh, you would have to hope for a lot of things, actually, that she just Which never is... gets a phone call from somebody who's like, hey, I thought we were, like, meeting to talk about this. Yeah, like our attorneys Absolutely. or something. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. If people go missing for a couple days, especially, I mean, there's a lot of people where they, you might not, you, you know, they go missing for a couple days, but they don't have a, they're not constantly keeping in touch with people. But some people go missing for a few days. You can't reach them, can't find them. They're not at their house. They're nowhere. There's absolutely people who are going to be putting out yeah. reports. You know what else is shit? Is that they don't have a, uh, a backup plan for if that's discovered? Uh, that's okay. good right. Point actually. Why the hell did they not like it? Could leak at any moment, so we need to be prepared. Yeah, we need to know right. what our story is, why we're here, and it needs to oh, like if we want any chance right. of fucking rescuing mm -hmm. this whole operation, we should talk about what we're going to do at that point. You're right. Yeah, would be really mm -hmm. awkward in, uh, in, uh, if uh, uh, it's discovered I just during completely the completely lost my track of thought. Just ignore me. Just go ahead. I, I assume you would say it would be really thought. awkward if we discovered the truth during all of this, which is what happens. Yeah. Yes, there you go. Not Reading my mind. What exactly <laughs> is his, his plan here? He what wants her he to be there to, to prompt them to talk about Andy and everything that happened in the business, and then he can poke at it detective style. He's going to snoop. And snoop, what does snoop. that gain information Andy, oh and he does yeah he wants her to snoop while he distracts people as well i think is what he says well she would be you know absolutely the worst candidate for that correct yeah you know, <laughs> none of these people Dude, should... yeah. like if if everything had worked the way they told us she scoots off to go and search their rooms then she goes to the first door fiddles with it doesn't unlock and she's like oh oh damn it oh, well, shit. <laughs> uh, yeah. i guess i can try and bash it open <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should try the the room with the glass onion. Oh, it's locked. Oh, fuck. That oh, was like, dude, that was a... everything. <laughs> I can't believe he, he locked the door. <laughs> That's especially fucking dumb. Damn it. Especially given that he around his greatest people, enemy. I can't believe he it. He people knows. He knows. Yeah. And especially now because they have a stranger here with Blanc, I would there's there's a higher chance he would lock all the doors. Everybody would lock yeah. the doors. With I don't this... know this fucker. We're gonna start being able to retroact, like go back to what we were talking about earlier, and how it's so much stupider now in retrospect. So, one of the ones that just came to my mind was how when she arrives, with so Miles believes she is dead. She arrives. You know who else arrives? Fucking Benoit Blanc, the world's greatest detective. Who <laughs> <laughs> you absolutely didn't invite. So it's if like, you're Miles, suspicious. you'd be like, get out. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I sorry. do not want you here. Why the um, hell did he these... let? Like we said, he he had plenty of surface level reason not to have him in. Now he has an incredible, powerful <laughs> motive to not let a fucking detective on the island when you literally killed the person you're looking at right oh, now. Yeah. Detective, remember, like he how detective. And yeah, is, and that, the thing is, is, is that when you go, yeah, but he's stupid. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't even work with the character you present because he clearly has the, the intention to keep himself safe. So he would totally he tell him. Well, right off. You can't. Exactly. You just can't. Every time it's a dumb decision, you can't. Being stupid is complicated. You can be. You can still make <laughs> smart decisions. You need someone. It's usually not that. No character is ever described as stupid because they just always make bad decisions. They make bad decisions in, in direct like uh, alignment with their flaws. That's what it's supposed mm -hmm. to be. That's how you write character. You're yeah. not supposed to just go. They are stupid. Therefore, they do stupid things here and there. You're just like. Ugh. It's the same in, in kind of in the direction of like, oh, well, this character is competent, so they just do competent things. Like, well, no, they do yeah. competent things related to their skills. Um, at least that's what you want to aim for. Jesus. Because <laughs> Miles is very much self-interested. I'm happy to concede on that. Why would he allow a detective? It doesn't make any sense. And again, the whole film falls apart if he just behaved in any way like he would behave. So, whoops, again. And now... All of you are like, all right, fine, we're going to buy it. We're buying everything to continue the story. 
little hiccup, <laughs> little hiccup in the plan. She's already admitted she doesn't sound anything like her sister. Her sister talks in a completely different way. She's from Alabama. Uh -oh. Her sister is from wherever the hell she hangs out most of the time. I don't even remember. However, nice she tells a story. Place, yeah. Me and my sister used to have the same accent, but she adopted this like rich bitch sort of uh, accent <laughs> that uh -oh. I know how to do, actually. I, I know how to do it. Uh -oh. And, oh, lucky and I've got her TED Talks on my little MP3 player. I'll just listen to them and I'll just nail yeah. her accent. Also, uh, she has this journal where she kept exactly. every information hey, that we need. Hey, I was I'm making fun of the first thing. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> absurd. You have to make fun of things one at a yeah, time. Yeah, we gotta go one at a time. Sorry, sorry, the, I got too excited. Someone who's never done an additional accent outside of when she was a kid and pretending to be posh. She's now going to be able to assimilate the entire, like, dialect and... Just, well, every, every ounce of the operation of her fucking voice, she's gonna uh, absorb it all to the point of convincing all of her closest friends. Okay. Remember, this is this is like the plot of My Fair Lady. The entirety of the plot is essentially yeah. doing this. Because <laughs> this yes. is a really difficult thing to do. This would require a very skilled, not just actor to imitate one's mannerism, but you'd have to know all the personal information of hers that would be relevant. You'd have to be able to do the voice and all that sort of thing. That's yeah. Th those are that's like a skill set that few people have. No, she can just nah, do she's it. A twin. Tw yeah. Ted talks. She <laughs> said she had Ted talks, Rags. Ted talks. Ted talks. Ted um, talks. And yeah, so then you might be like, well, having her voice down is one thing, but how do you know all the stuff that happened in her life? How are you going to be able to talk about it? And as Mel mentioned, she mentioned, she says this as a part of characterization, but you realize very quickly it's not characterization at all. She says, like, you know, when my sister was six, she would write in her journals daily and she would title them for my future biographers. She always knew that she would be special. She always knew she would matter, you know, that, that uh, sort of thing. And then she's like, mm -hmm. so luckily I have all these journals that detail every last thing that happened in her entire life. I can read them all and assimilate her entire life. There you go. Yeah, I will know wow. that in Man. X amount of time. I don't even know how much time passed. It's incredible. But, yeah. Absolutely it's fucking the... incredible. Nutty. Good thing she did that. It's just this dumb. Is... <laughs> <laughs> it's just dumb it's, this is what I mean like this is what people are referring to when they say like this is terrible the writer gave up so many times she, <laughs> like I that is a twin sister oh how are you going to get her voice and her uh, information about her life it's like journal and TED talks done yeah there you go wow <laughs> the is that she didn't need to have her have a different accent the like, convenience is striking yeah. Well, because writer. that makes it more meaningful when she switches back in the finale, okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> Great payoff. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the next set of flashbacks, she's talking about what she's learned from the TED Talks and the journals and stuff, and she says that in the Glass Onion, when they used to meet up, Birdie was a washed-up model, Duke was a nerd doing gaming tournaments. She <laughs> says this alongside washed-up model, like... <laughs> Johnson has a very strong opinion on funny. the mo most oppressed minority. Well, it gets funnier, too, because you got Claire lost a race for city council, so it's like, you know, washed-up model, lost a race, nerd, and then the last one is Lytle as a substitute teacher. <laughs> <laughs> it's Not even a real teacher. You're uh, like the nurse of teachers. Uh. <laughs> and, um, yeah, you find out that uh, she says, true reveal... It's not that, um, you know, the story kind of goes that Miles is the one that helped them all out, right? But truly, Andy is the real reason that they all got anywhere. She believed in them. She saw in them, like, potential. And then she goes on to say, but, you know, Miles, uh, M M Miles got Lionel published. Miles got Birdie a TV <laughs> show. Miles got Duke set up at Twitch. <laughs> made him an account. <laughs> made him a little account. So Ryan, yeah, Ryan we, Johnson, I just still legitimately think that both YouTube and Twitch, you have to call them and say, "Hey, I got a great guy. You got to let him in. You got to let him." Have <laughs> you have to. This, this is the thing. I think Ryan is like that stupid at this club. point. You need to understand. All right, I'm going to read the other three out this time, and then we'll finish with Twitch. You go. He got clear elected locally. He got Lionel published as like a, a scientist related thing, right? And then Birdie mm -hmm. got a TV show. So you understand that, like, I could argue, like, yeah, those three are kind of similar in terms of their power level. I can understand that. Why did you throw in set up at Twitch? Do you know what that means, Ryan? Do you actually know what that is? <laughs> that's fucking that's, great. Uh, Twitch streamers are like people on the funny. dark web. Just being there is... <laughs> yeah. He probably thinks you have to, like, submit to a job offer and then you have to, like, get approved mm -hmm. for several accounts. Like, all this bullshit. Like, you don't know it's what like Twitch a country is. Club. 
Okay, so uh, so this is established that ten years ago, before they were before they all hit it big, they were a very very eclectic group of friends that all hung out for some reason. Yeah. The only thing that united them, I guess, is that they all lived in New York. Okay, and that English, Andy, I guess, or something. And that Andy was like, she saw you know, the potential I, in them. Yeah, you all have potential. And then, as if that isn't strange, he saw enough, Duke's potential. <laughs> <laughs> You're a totally like, weird right-leaning Twitch streamer guy. <laughs> Considering they had almost nothing in common before, you have to imagine that they liked each other at this point. I guess, like you, you know. I don't, I don't understand it. But and then but the, the question is, so how does Miles do all this stuff in terms of getting Birdie a TV show when we're about to find out that it's after this point that he becomes successful with Alpha? With Alpha, yeah. No idea. Uh, I guess he yeah, gave them all the no inspiration clue. they needed. I mean, he to be fair, setting up a Twitch account is not that hard, you know? I can understand <laughs> that one. Like the idea it is for him. Dude next couldn't door figure it out. He was setting it up. It's like you can do a buddy good job. Now cl click, click, well, yeah. yeah, click accept. Yeah, yeah. Duke is oh, like, no, you need to change yeah. the bitrate a little higher, or it's gonna what be blurry. Name do you want to have <laughs> for your uh, your Twitch channel, buddy? It's like, oh, I don't know. Well, let's sit down and figure it out together. Uh, right, how about buddy? Boob Lover Bro. Two Thousand? Oh yeah, oh, that's love brilliant. That. Yeah, that would be two factor authentication. Get all the views. Oh, look at you. You got 100 concurrent viewers. That's awesome. Yeah, he man. broke he a got, million followers. Got... Yes, he was the first one, <laughs> I, I guess. So. He was, apparently, yeah. in this universe. Great job, Duke. Okay. Good good shit. Good, good on you. Oh, okay, fuck. so anyway. <laughs> uh, based on a napkin, idea on a napkin, they make Alpha. Miles uh, finds the fuel. He's obsessed. He's willing to sacrifice everything for that. It's like... Okay, so... This company was made from a napkin idea, and it's like, I can understand that, I guess. Like, the initial, the first idea, that isn't quite a problem yet. It will become one. Um, <sighs> the company is made. <laughs> the first thing that ever happened related to Alpha's ideas was written on a napkin. Okay, fine. Okay. And then um, you have him discovering this fuel. He wants to use it. Andy knows it's volatile already, and so she's like, no. And she says it'll blow up the world. <laughs> like so don't so you know it's kind of thing like okay and then uh, she says i'm gonna walk and i'll take half the company to stop you because you'll need like the full company to do it and um so then there's this quote i fucking love she says in relation to this event then andy found out miles worked the contract so that she was cut out completely uh, Wait, and it's like, I'm sorry, what? I, they So I, on, I, on her ideas, they jointly made Alpha, and then he worked the contract so that she was cut out completely. And she did another know that. sweep under the rug thing that so we're that just means, gonna have to assume is no. Something th this that is happened. this is what happens when you write shitty, right? So he's like, that makes sense. Cut the contract, whatever. It's like, no. What you've just made canon now is that she is so reckless. She signed a contract that fucked her over at some point. She didn't read it, or she didn't get lawyers to clarify her for it. Like, that's what would have had to have happened for that to make sense. Like, there's a clause somewhere where he could just cut her out. That's yeah. That's that's just not how it works. Well, it gets Someone worse. in the movie, not I think how it, it works was at all. Though. There's a board of directors. I mean, well, it does, I, wait, yeah. So, so hang on. To be fair, right? So the first thought you might have is like, none of that could possibly work. So then Benoit says, "Well, she obviously sued him, then, right?" He's like, "Yes," and then uh, <laughs> she says. Andy's whole case was based on intellectual property, on her having the founding idea, the napkin. Unfortunately, well, she jam, lost it. By the way. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> there's so much wrong with this. <laughs> like, <laughs> that is so stupid. First if of all, characterized for... Miles as a really shrewd, uh, clever guy, then. Yeah, well, he's annihilated yeah. her because she's an idiot. Uh, the, they make it sound <laughs> like her case was built on the idea that she has the napkin, which she doesn't have. Why? <laughs> what <is that> <laughs> like, why did you do yeah. that? Yeah, why did you do that? It's just... Uh, it's like she made the case and then started looking for the napkin. Oh, I know it's somewhere here. And it's like, oh, no, actually it <laughs> isn't. Oh, fuck. She didn't look well, very I'm hard. Rude. Oh, yeah. Um... And so, you can't yeah, claim ownership of, a, of, of an entire company because of a fucking napkin. Yeah, I don't think that's especially obviously if you the signed, especially if you signed a contract that was a bad business deal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And this, <sighs> this all the imagine the sheer level of like production layers this whole fucking thing went through. The idea that right at the bottom is this napkin that that that's whoever <laughs> wrote that wins. 
like that's not how that works <laughs> it's so mm. stupid it's, it's incredibly stupid, but then it gets even stupider, right? Because she doesn't have the napkin, and so Miles says, I have definitely written that napkin. She didn't. And she's like, I wrote the napkin, not you. And then Miles, you know, through essentially getting him to a position where he'll take care of them all, has the, the team of shitheads, as they're called over and over again, to back him up in court. And so he mm. wins the case. Is that yeah. enough to win that case, having four of the people say that he wrote it? In, in in their own rules, so to speak. If, uh, in their own, well, if the rule is that the if she has no other evidence to the contrary, and the napkin so. wins, well, but you understand what I mean? I like, guess. like who has the intellectual property of this thing? And it's like I do. No, I do. So neither of you have evidence. You just have your word. And then four of the people say, "No, it is him, not her." Is that enough? Uh, I mean. That's just not how it works, period. I feel like none of that. The problem is, I don't even know where to start with talking about it. The scenario was absurd. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I I can't even... I don't know where to begin in terms of breaking it down, uh, even part... If we accept that's what the case is, is it concluded when four people say, pretty sure he was the one that wrote it? It's like, okay... Apparently. Well, wouldn't he just? Wouldn't he just? Uh, do you think he would always have in his back pocket the ability to say all the things he did for him, or something like that? Is that not something he could use against them? No, I'm not. I'm always? not questioning the leverage. I'm questioning whether or not in court that would that would have enough weight. Having the four of them say, like, pretty sure he wrote it. Yeah, yeah, he's the one. Yeah, but I mean, if if if, if this is a intellectual property copyright case, then whoever got a patent or a copyright on the idea would have it. Wouldn't matter who fucking wrote it down on a napkin. Right? Yeah. It's just patently ridiculous. The, pro- yeah, so the, the problem for me is that yeah, I don't feel scenario. like that would even come into question. Like like the idea that this enormous company that has all these different uh, outreaches in every different place, like this napkin is the one. You know what? Let's well, talk about the napkin. The relevant part, like if, if they're talking about 50-50, that she earned 50 and he earned 50, it's like, so now he earns 100, right? So it's a private company. It's not a publicly traded company, right? Like, yeah. I presume, yes, but is it even a company or is it a partnership? I, I guess it has to be a company, right, if you cut her out of it. Like, it just relies on being vague and super duper duper vague so they can be like, well, yeah, this is our scenario we've set up. It but, like, just happened. That's how it questions. worked. I have a million questions <laughs> and I'm not going to get any answers. So um, I just have to accept that that's the scenario that they've presented me with. So if we can, let's get a little... uh Let's get a little look, see at this uh, this napkin, shall napkin? we? Yeah, like what even <laughs> is the napkin? What's written on it? Oh, I've been waiting so long. So I've got I've got it written down all of the actual like things as well. So if you want to, it's, it's not clear one hundred percent in this image. But um, what's interesting? The only the only compliment I have, and it stops here. Okay, it fucking starts and stops here. Is his copy has a couple something. of things written wrong. Like the idea being that he copied it badly from memory or whatever. It's like, but it's mo- like for example, it says ICO. He writes icon without any initials. Like that's how he remembers it or whatever. But the thing is, that's going to become hyper relevant when we go through these. This is the core foundation of the Alpha Company. Let's start with the top three that go from the top. Of the, that is tracking, cyber risks, and security. So um, essentially, she's trying to claim that a mind map is her like intellectual property that asserts like gives her control of fifty percent. Yeah, company. this is alpha. This is the foundation of alpha. Now, but well, like, sure, reading but this, this is, what is this? Is this? Just bullshit. Well, this is just yeah, bullshit. But fundamentally, like, what is this by way of how you actually structure the company in terms of like you know different parts of the company, divisions, their legal structure, the way that finances interact, uh, like nothing. Is on this they, thing. They didn't even try. They just, no, they they didn't. just wrote a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> yeah, because like actually read it. Tracking into crypto management into diversification. What does that mean? Like what? This is just bullet. Exactly? Yeah, bullet. <laughs> like, what well, the hell is this? Well, yeah, look this at this. You got like yeah, this free... is just corporate lingo. In, in, in a my box. favorite one is timestamp. There's just the word timestamp. Time yeah, <laughs> <laughs> gotta have timestamps. What is timestamps? Because uh, it's got dark web in the efficacy. Middle. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 we I all like know that, what that is. Ex- yeah. Exponential yeah. growth. Exponential growth. That's more of like an ambition than it is like an actual idea. No, no, that, have no, no Fringy, that comes from crypto management. We know that. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, exponential Code growth. A delivery. Uh, what is this? I don't know what this is. This is supposed to be the foundation of Alpha. 
This is basically this Andy is the... just saying stonks and then having yes. stonks. <laughs> yeah, but she just hopes you don't paper. even read it. We go because she wrote this down on paper. Her intellectual property rights here supersede her actual contractual rights, which she yep. signed away. Apparently, that's what I'm saying. She didn't ask <laughs> to, like read the thing and say like, "Wait, does this cut me out of the company?" It's like, yeah, no. it does actually. Clause it's funny. It's Why funny. It cut you out of the company? Because Duke, I think it's Duke, says something about how you got social networked, right? So that's clearly what they're just cribbing this from. Yeah, but they're so yeah. Oh, right. exactly. But in the they're social, that's the same. Yeah. But in the social network, he he notices that he's being written out of the contract. He's like, "What the fuck are you doing, bro?" And then they go to court. Yeah, they go to court because of that. And yeah. then all of the shenanigans that are involved. The reality is that shit like this can get real complicated. The film wants to present it as very straightforward and simple. Mm -hmm. like, it's just a it jumble of fucking words. Like, it's just <laughs> she <laughs> wrote corporate a lingo napkin. with squares Therefore, around them. She gets to keep fifty yeah. percent of her part of the company regardless of whatever was agreed to in their subsequent contracts, of which I presume there would have been more than one, given that she's like, what, CEO of this massive company? A massive company filled with employees? Nah, come on. So it's, is it at yeah, least the death stop entirely on, like... CEOs! <laughs> 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 Manpower. Time stamps. We really need to... Time stamps. <laughs> development. Development. <laughs> Isn't all of this development? I, I don't know, man. Like this well, is—it's just, it's just the big thing she would have to argue is that this is actually like workable. That there was like a direct correlation oh. between this idea that she wrote down here and the company that actually exists now, and that that it's like unique to her, or at the very least, like a really significantly stems from her contributions, among other things. He told like, them how like, to spell ICO. So <laughs> well, I did that. That's, yeah. Guys, you don't understand. I drew those little stick figures on there, so clearly. Oh, those are mine. Those are mine. <laughs> it's too much names. for me, but oh, like, it. unironically, like, we're going to return to it. Know. It's going to come back and it'll get even worse. This is just, for now, that's how bad that is. It's all nonsense. Ugh. It's already incredibly annoying. It's going to get worse. It's amazing. It's so much oh, yes. stupider than that. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Um. So, yeah, uh... Uh, Benoit says, like, while they're talking, he's just, he's really bad at dumb things. So it's, uh, gonna be tough, this Not whole children's thing. puzzles, though. No, so why wasn't it, like, why didn't they make it that she was, like, really intelligent, like, in terms of science, and she created some super-duper crazy algorithm or something? And you something. don't show us it. Do not show us I the algorithm. Yeah. The algorithm. It's, the, like, it's, it's, it's like it, a weird it, MacGuffin. It's a glowing suitcase. We know, well, we know what it, it is, we, it but the second we see it... Original. Yeah, it, you take yeah, the- Yeah, because once we see it, we can read it. And then it's like, crypto stability, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> what, what is that? Um, First of all, that sounds like an oxymoron to me, but like, yeah. whatever. <laughs> so this scene comes up. Not not really- Oh wait, do you actually- Remember, you brought this up the first time around. Do you want to bring it up? So that they're talking to each other at the- When they open up Cap, when he's, he's doing his shoe. You brought yeah, up she did bring that up, Cap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so to be clear, when they arrive at the island and they're pretending, you know, that they've never met, but they they introduce themselves when no one is looking. I'm not sure why they do that. And is then they have be, this other part. Is it to be extra careful? But the thing is, they're not extra careful from that. No, there's not nobody around careful. them to even hear this conversation. That's what yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then they have a secret covert conversation. Like yeah. But the more relevant part would be if someone turned around. It's like, why are they talking to each other for so long? Do they yeah. know yeah. each other? Like, what, what are they doing? Well, yeah, and they look, they do look a little suspicious. It's a little bit weird. They do, yeah. yeah. And uh, if you had, lights, buddy. if you had a thought, like, man, it would be really bad if that detective over there was actually brought in by Zombie Andy to try and prove that I'm evil. <laughs> zombie Andy. And then you see them talking, you'd be like, <laughs> Yeah, so she's definitely brought him in. That's so <laughs> that no other. You know what? Be. Maybe I could figure it out by asking everyone to give in their invitations. I could probably do that. I won't yeah, though. Just making sure. I, I wonder if I have an incentive to do that too. You know, it's just my no. whole life hinges on all this. No. But, yeah. Wait. So did we? I I forget. I'm going back a little bit. Did we talk about how stupid it was that Andy sent the email in the first place? Uh, oh, oh yeah. I guess we haven't. No. So yeah. The uh, uh, obviously so. Sorry, yeah, I skipped over it. Fuck. So Andy, she loses everything in the court case. It's over. She's done. She goes home and she's like, wah, and breaks everything. And oh, she happens to find the napkin. It was just in one of her books. It slips out and she's like, oh, I have the napkin oh, now. Yeah. Well, I can win. How convenient. Well, first question yeah. I was going to have was, isn't the case over? 
Can she actually like? I guess she yeah. wants to. Well, she wants to relitigate, I suppose. Yeah. When does double jeopardy happen? Uh, this is civil law, not not criminal law. So this it happens be a civil as... case. Okay. So she can she can try again if she wants. Doesn't it... seem like she looked very hard for it in the first place. No, I know. On the back no. Of <laughs> on her shelf. Book. Yeah. Moron. Jesus Christ. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well. So yeah, she can. Try... <laughs> we can't answer the. Qu Funnily enough, when we were watching this film, I think it was now Drinker was like, well, but. That napkin, how are they gonna? And I was like, you're gonna have to wait. The validity of the napkin is gonna be a big subject that comes up another half an hour from now, okay? So oh, boy. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, so anyway, yeah, she's got it now. And so then she's like, I'm gonna tell the four friends. She's like, I finally found it. It's right here. I'm going to use it to burn this whole empire down. I'm giving you all one last chance to make things right. So this is her invitation to them to tell the courts Kill they her. lied. Right? Right? Uh, I, I guess. Yeah. But why Which would is they? pretty fucking radical in terms of, uh, like, do you really think that's the wise decision here? No. No. <laughs> um, no, not at all. Somebody else, just in case something happens to you, you, you dumbass. Well, so yeah, the, the, the first thing you need to tell her if you were a friend is like, so you hold in your hand the power to burn down the empire of him and them as, like, you can get them on perjury at this point, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, I guess you have to Sorry. prove they Anything knew happened? they lied as opposed to they remembered it wrong. Uh... Which would oh you know what yeah that might keep be keep that tricky. in mind anyway <laughs> no you you know, you're saying yeah. keep that in mind anyway but let's grant it let's grant it that she could still prove that anyway um, yeah but yeah you, so the point being you're gonna do serious damage to many rich and powerful people you might want to tell at least one other fucking person you're doing this yeah and you might want to say if I end up dead I didn't do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah well her mistake was assuming that nobody would ever try and do that to her I suppose. You know yeah. what? That's a great fucking thing you just said. Because when does that yeah. line come up? Oh, fuck, that's later. <laughs> I really want to say it now, though. <laughs> I'm not going to remember, sorry. Well, I've you got go it. For it. Say it. Uh, well, Give let it me go. Me. Let me find it. It's Yeah, here it is. So, yeah, you know, th this, is, this is Benoit saying this. And it's about that event, right? Because in the terms of the timeline, she makes that threat two hours later, I think it is. Because uh, it gets faxed over to Miles straight away by uh, Lionel. So he finds mm. out, he goes to her house straight away to kill her. Um, now, you might be thinking to yourselves, well, hey, why did she let him in the house? If she hadn't done that, she would have lived. You know, he, he's, he's the last person she wants in the house, right? Well, mm -hmm. we can't sell her as an idiot, right? But simultaneously, she has to be killed by him. The so Ryan's in a pickle uh, here. And if it. you remember, we're gonna, before I tell you the line, we're going to cycle back to <laughs> Knives Out. <laughs> When you have someone who is a credibly good-hearted and expert nurse, but the plot hinges on her mixing up the bottles of her medicine, you go like, <laughs> you are just so good that you did that, actually. Yes. You are just so good that you knew the very vague differences in the viscosity. That's what he says, and that's how you knew the correct one. You see, you're such a good nurse, you mixed up the balls. It's like... Uh, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> so, now in Can this film <laughs> in this film he says uh, about her having let him in you know it's probably not a wise decision and then of course she was killed by him so it's like what what do you have to say about it uh oh wait one second how did i, how okay. did I lose it where is it oh yeah there it is oh. so he describes that event as she was so clever. She was clever enough not to fear Miles, so she let him in. There we go. But she didn't see the real threat until it was too late. <laughs> That's it's, it's, so it's, bad. That one is one-to-one -one as far as I'm concerned with the good nurse. She is so clever, she doesn't fear Miles, but then she died. <laughs> because she probably so clever she died uh, so clever uh, that she died to the stupidest character in the film <laughs> I, this is what I mean, you can't have it both ways you've written it so that she was killed by the clown she is a clown too <laughs> you are clowns it's, yeah. it's so bad <laughs> Yeah. You know, it's it, it does. He try he bends over backwards to try to make it seem like Andy is not a clown while Miles is. But if you think about like Andy came up with that napkin, like Andy's a stupid moron as well. Like, that was all Andy's <laughs> idea. <laughs> um, it's just to scribble nonsense on a napkin and be like, "This is going to be the big thing." I'm telling you, it's going to be great. Well, then he stole everything from her because he's an evil. 
Whoa, even when... No, uh, but one one thing before we get to recontextualizing all the scenes everything. on the island when they're when they're talking about their plans, um, she's she says, which is a fair point. She says, like, well, obviously it's Miles, right? Like he's the one with motive, and Penwa mm-hmm. because we're still trying to misdirect from Miles, even though it's just going to be Miles in the end. He's like, no, he wouldn't be stupid enough to kill her. Yeah, yeah. The, what? Obvi- the obvious point being that. It was stupid to kill her, and but really it wasn't. But he's the only one with motive. <laughs> well, he's the only the one with motive to do so. The film, the film makes the argument that she would have won. Like if they yeah. went again or she appealed and then they had another uh, trial for it that she would have won. So like, mm-hmm. and then he loses. I guess he, I guess he only loses fifty. Well, it depends. If she, is she trying to claim that she owns a hundred percent of the company? Because I guess of the, so. Yeah. Well, no loses... way, right? No. Dude, I, we already went over okay, how much this doesn't well, make any sense. Right. Like, yeah, well, but, it's, like, it's once a weird she, clown, hold on. It's a weird once clown she, universe, okay? Once she on. found the real <laughs> napkin, she said, I'm going to use this to burn down the entire empire, so... Well, I mean, I suppose it wouldn't be burned down, it would be, I'm just gonna take it, right? I'm gonna yeah, get it. Yeah, because she's, like, part of it, or has an investment in keeping it, or one well, of she, she said burn down, down, but that's what she well, said. I think by burn down, she's referring to how she can prove they all lied now, right? Which, she can't actually prove that, or she can prove it. they always yeah. But she's and not going to go back to 50 Well, still, would it, would it be a jury that decides whether or not they are being honest when they say that? Uh, or judge? It's, well, it's, it's, it's probably going to be, it's simple. What's interesting yeah. about well, it to I, me I is, like, if they say, all of us misremembered how know. you wrote the whole <laughs> thing, it'd be like, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just awkward, right? They could just be like, yeah, I misremembered. Um, yeah, I think it's prove, hard to right? prove, yeah. Wrote it, if it was, like, handwriting and stuff like that. Um. Yeah. Um. So next scene. This this really. I've only got a little bit of commentary for it, but it kind of surprises me, right? This is to show Andy and Whiskey having a back and forth that lasts a decent amount of time, and it's to set up why she's going to say something to Whiskey later that can get her in big trouble. Uh, but it doesn't mean to. She actually has sympathy for Whiskey after this conversation, and I think it's absolutely ass backwards. They basically go over how. Whiskey is kind of cool and friendly and stuff. Why is she with Duke, the horrible right winger crazy man? And she basically just says she's an ethot. She wants to build her channel through him as best she mm-hmm. can and then ditch him. That's all she wants to do. Uh, and then she's like, oh, well, yeah, okay, fair enough. But you probably should ditch him sooner rather than later. It's like, what the fuck? You... Yeah. That's just, that's not uh, great. <laughs> that's, that's, no. That doesn't make you a good person. What do you mean? It's like, oh, he's such a bad person. I'll use him for whatever I can and then ditch him. It's like, yeah, I don't understand. Like, why does the 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 film think that's a like a good thing? I don't understand. I, I don't know. Well, she um, doesn't say it's a good thing, there, right? Well, because the idea is, is that she's sympathetic to whiskey after this conversation, and it's like, yeah, you but shouldn't like, be. Why? why oh, it's yeah. Clearly, it's worse, right? Because she yeah. doesn't believe in any of this shit, but yet she'll advance these positions in order to make money. Yeah, that's what I'm surely saying. That's yeah, that's worse than Duke, who presumably believes in the things that he's saying. Yeah, see, like, she's just like everybody else. She's exactly like everybody else here, right? <laughs> they just yeah, fucking yeah, bullshit sure. and lie in order to get more money. L- like, dude, like- just, just to read it out. Yeah. She says, uh, Duke treats me like arm candy. And then she says, so why are you with him? She says, I'm building my brand. He's putting me on his channel more often. So, he like, you're worse like- than <laughs> him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because he uh, purportedly believes in the things he's saying. You don't. And you throw other women under the bus to, like, get more money. Why would you be? Why is she sympathetic? Yeah. Why is she sympathetic? Is it just because it's subversive See, that, like, she said it's expeditious? It's actually, it's expeditious it, for okay. kind of a shit show. Uh, uh, well, you got that fucking right. You need to have a spine, fine, woman. Twitch. Yeah. The funny thing is, she'd be fine on Twitch. She could build her own career. Of course, she yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is weird. You say that because literally when we were watching, I was like. Damn, is she's like distractingly hot? It's yeah, sometimes. Rags was like, I can't, I can't wait to watch her play League of Legends in a hot tub. That's just, <laughs> I want her bath water. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, th- seriously, this this conversation supposed to be like, oh, those two, you know, there's a little bit of a connection there, and and then she's gonna try and uh, tell her something later that'll get her in super much trouble just by trying to help her out. If you remember, something is is misunderstood between the two of them. Um, yeah. uh, it's pretty dumb. All right, what happens next? Oh no, it's the secret, secret, secret conversation between the senator and the scientist. Um, mm. The one long. I can't believe this at. one happens. I'm not even going to play it. I'm just going to leave it on pause and say what it is. So, uh. 
Two weeks ago, the senator signed off on the power plan, and she said, if that gets found out, my entire base will fucking abandon me. I'll be done. And it's like, okay, why did you do it? it? And of course, the answer, (laughs) I guess, is that because she wants Miles' support rather than Miles', I guess, remember it was mentioned Miles would support her opposition or whatever. It's like, okay. I I mean, you're just not much of a character at that point. You're just at the whims. Credibility will be completely destroyed, though. Exactly. I don't see how her career continues if she does the opposite of what she's standing for. Um, Yep. And then he says, so did I. I signed off on clear to be, like, in a manned mission. The staff don't even know. How could they not know? (laughs) Uh, Dude, already, if you're like, you're not serious. We've destroyed this movie 17 times. Like, you can't be serious. You... You just said the scientist is like organized clear to be a part of a manned mission. The stuff that he thinks can kill people, and he hasn't even told his staff. The people he yeah. was likely talking to at the beginning who were like, do not fucking let him do this. Uh, so, like, do you understand? Yeah. Like, these people are pathetic. They have no spines. They're horrible. They're no, so no. How long ago did he say he signed this into, or he like greenlit um, this plan? Unclear. Obviously, his was two weeks ago, and he said, so did okay. I. I don't think he said exactly when, though. Because he was talking to those other guys who were telling him he was a scientist over and over. He was talking to them like <laughs> less than a week ago. <laughs> it was less than a week ago when the invites showed up. Yeah, well, I think the implication is that he'd already signed off on their manned mission and that they didn't even know that. Oh, cool. Makes him an asshole. That's what I'm saying. These are all assholes. Yeah, sure does. And she then says, well, let's pray Andy was wrong. And he just goes, no, she was right. <laughs> If you put uh, clear into a gas form in household piping, there's a massive hydrogen gas leakage. That's just how it works. And she's yeah. like, Don't hydrogen piping, gas leakage? And she's, she says, it can literally turn people's into, homes into the Hindenburg? Well, not literally. Not literally. Stamp this out every time it pops up. The way this works is that when you use it for your source of energy in, the, in household piping... It'll like like the, the the assumption is it. Just, I'm lost on this. Okay, if it just is gonna explode everyone's houses, you can't use it. You just <laughs> yeah. can't. So we would know this. That's the other thing I was gonna get to. Like, first of all, you guys, you guys would be talking to Miles like, Miles, this is like nuking the planet. We, what are you doing? I know you're evil and all that, like cartoonishly. But <laughs> this doesn't. It's like it's like that shit where it's just like, yes, but I will have buddy. And it's like. It, you're you, not a real person. You're you, like an avatar person. It's the this yeah. is this is a cartoon land. You can't be doing it's this. It's gonna work out until the first home explodes. <laughs> well, <laughs> then so they're gonna they're, find yeah. out. So yeah, the, the fact is the characters would never sign off on it. Miles would never sign off. Oh, on absolutely. It. But let's not. pretend, for the sake of the movie, they all sign off on it. The second this becomes available, people will test it and be like, "So this is toxic and kills everybody." Yeah. We should not use this to power our civilization. <laughs> this is bad. What? But look then, how good it is. And, and, then, and then Miles and he, Lionel and uh, Claire are all ruined. They're just all gone. No, no in, nothing from anyone else involved. That's just, they've destroyed themselves. They already, and you could argue, yeah, that's why they're so worried. It's like, no, you don't understand. That this is, it's over already. If you, si- you can't sign up. There is nothing worse than signing off on this, is what I'm saying. So they wouldn't. You can't. It's over. Why have you made this the consequence, you dumbasses? Yeah. You, you, you fucked. <laughs> this is over. So insanely stupid. But it's useful information. Because remember, the glass onion itself runs on clear. Ooh. Oh, I guess yeah, it's not yeah. that dangerous <clears throat> after all, or it yeah. actually is? Or Man, you wouldn't want, the... I guess, a, a naked flame in there? A big enough one? I don't know. But oh, if it's just in... Annoying. So it leaks through piping? Well, so that's the thing... Put it, it put its gas form into household piping. There's a massive, a massive hydrogen gas leakage. Well, then don't use its gas form in piping. Or don't allow it to become gas form. Like, or do they understand do that? that like oil is really like toxic and harmful, and natural gas probably isn't good to breathe, and it'll explode. Like, you know, pretty much all sources of energy are dangerous because because their volatility is kind of what we need to you know make energy out of it. So oh. spe- yeah, the, the specifically, right? Factor. Specifically, is you put its gas form in the hydrogen particles are too small, so it all leaks out, and then everything explodes. Then why don't you just transport it as a solid, and then when you need it, turn it into a gas? Or Bill, you'd have to. It re- would just be dangerous if it gets ignited. 
This, well, so this like is the reality that all the like other all gas. Well, natural gas, yeah, but gas as well. <laughs> like, the, I was going to say hilarious that. in a comedy movie if they were like, but if you introduce this to flame, it goes on fire. We can't use this to power our homes. We'd be <laughs> we'd be crazy as a civilization to put this in our houses. So this is the thing. If the reality is then that oh, it's usable. We just need to reformat like piping, or we need to go about generating systems that can use this safely, or something. It's like so do that. Well, well yeah, it's kind what, of what, like. And if someone's like, well, yeah, but he wants to rush it out. And it's like, why is he yeah. so stupid? Why? Yeah. Well, because that's the point, Mewsley. He's really dumb. Yeah, but the, uh, the safe way gets him man. more money. Dumb. Yeah, it but sure he's does. really stupid. See, him, see how this goes? It's really easy. Yeah. <laughs> so painful. And yeah, by it's, the way, this it's... incredibly sensitive information, they're just belting it out here, and uh, Andy's out. Well, Helen is listening to it just below them. And Ben yeah, Lockblock is staring been... at them, but they notice that. That's what I mean. It's just funny. Yeah, sure is a good thing. She just keeps meandering around and running into important conversations. Again. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's about time, I think, that I, I made a list. You got Benoit eavesdrops on Peg and uh, Miles discussing Birdie's statement. That's the first one. Duke eavesdrops oh, on Miles wait. and Whiskey. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. But he's hiding behind the butt statue, and they would obviously be able to see them. See yeah, she there. looked right at him. She does look right at him. She didn't even notice. <laughs> yeah. It was so bad. Anyway, continue. Good if thing he was invisible, her... too. I think, Rags, you were the one that pointed out when we were watching it, right? You were, it's upsetting. At least stupid. <laughs> it was really <laughs> frustrating. <laughs> yeah, it's around by just... here. Oh, but he's such a good director, though. Uh... <laughs> it's, it's okay. <laughs> Benoit Blanc has cloaking powers. He goes into Benoit Blanc. Ah. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I thought you nice. said clucking powers, by the way. Clucking <laughs> <No. laughs> All right, here it is, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so she's going to look right at him. Look at this shit. He's going to... He's going to come out from behind the statue. It's, uh... Yeah, it's, it's, yep. it's cut in a way that makes you think, like, wait, hang look on. Look at that! Look at that! <laughs> <laughs> they looked right at each other. Uh, it almost looks like, oh man, yeah. Why did they do that? <laughs> you could have shot this any way you wanted, but you yeah. chose to <laughs> shoot this ours. Why? <laughs> so anyway, in totality, you have Benoit eavesdrops on Peg and Miles discussing the statement. Duke happens to eavesdrop on Miles and Whiskey doing fuck and making deal. Benoit happens to eavesdrop yeah. on Duke eavesdropping on it's Miles and Whiskey doing a fuck. Helen happens to eavesdrop on Claire and Lionel talking about the destructive gas. Benoit and Andy happen to eavesdrop on Duke making his motive clear about Miles. That's in the, the, the gym. We get in there in a sec. And Andy drops on Blanc, dropping on Duke, dropping on Miles and Whiskey. That is the one that's hilariously <laughs> stupid. It's a uh... tiny island, but I wouldn't want to paint it. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't want to paint you it. You gotta show the shot, no. though. You gotta show it. Well, we're actually not there in chronology, so we're gonna oh, get there right, in a sec. Well, yeah. Um. It's also funny that when okay when they get there, she's like, "Okay, what do I do now?" And he just says, "Snoop," and walks away. Doesn't tell her anything. <laughs> you know, specific. that's not a skill. <laughs> what's that? What's <laughs> that mean? I, I'm, I'm not a detective. So, can I come back? Come back. Oh, you think the detective would do the snooping? No. Yeah, you think no. so. He's not a he Batman. I'm just not He's familiar just, enough. Everyone with this here genre. hates. Um, right. So you got the, uh, <laughs> yeah, that. So so yeah, that she, she <laughs> that information has been overheard. Wonderful. Um. So then Andy shouts at them in the actual original timeline, and we add an extra context on. They talk to her just after it, and they they like uh, it's. Senator Lady and uh, Duke. They're talking to her about what's going on. Because she's, uh, she's clearly mad. And uh, they, they say, like, she said, do you want to talk about the email? You didn't write me back. And then she says, we rang you. I don't do email. I'm Senator. And then we couldn't reach you, so we went to your house. Which is really weird. She would have missed calls from them. She would know they mm -hmm. called her. And this, to me, is a huge... Like realization, like something fucking weird is going on. She very angrily is like, "You never wrote back to me," which is true because they called her. Do you know what I mean? If yeah. a friend of yours said that to you, you'd be like, "The fuck." 
Like, are you drunk? Which he was in this scene, so... To be <laughs> I suppose what I'll grant them, though, is that you're not going to jump to, you're dead! <laughs> this is someone else! So, yeah, I guess they, have, they can't really do anything but be hyper-suspicious. That is a really fucking weird thing she said, basically. Uh, but they do confirm that they all turned up and that she talks to uh, Benoit about this information she's collected, which basically confirms they all have opportunity and motive... So now it's about trying to figure out, they decide we should find out who has the envelope. That's the last thing we can really do. Um, but, I can't believe this scene happens. It's for a joke, but I feel like it destroys everything again. They're sitting next to each other talking about how Duke, Birdie, Lionel, and Miles could have gotten there early to kill your sister and circle back. So really, like, we have nothing. We haven't proved anything yet. And then they realize that in the background, Serena Williams is watching them. Oh god, fuck. Oh, Serena yeah. Williams, what do you mean? <laughs> Ser so yeah, I think anyone like, in chat listening, or well, anyone listening to this in general, is just like, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, so Miles has paid for Serena Williams to just be in the background and give you, I guess, tips or encouragement on a video call when you're in the gym? Yeah. And she's live. And yes. they, they just said all of this in front of her. This, this is a meme, right? This is a joke. This is supposed to be like, haha, that's kind of funny, because in the future, maybe, well, I say the future, in a rich person's <laughs> place, they have a live-action gym instructor just sitting there, even someone as famous as Serena Williams. And you're just like, okay, she just heard you say all of that, and she works <laughs> for Miles. Like, Miles would have hired her. There's nothing stopping her from being like, hey, Miles, there's two people, uh, one's like a guy dressed in a blue and white striped outfit, and the other one is, uh, well, I mean, anything you want to describe, right, just sort of black and white dress on, it's pretty easy. Uh, you'd be like, they're talking about how uh, the, the the sister has been killed, and that all of you are the potential suspects, and they're trying to figure it out? You know, it's not I, my contract, but I just think you should maybe Yeah, it's just fucking weird, it. dude, yeah. and I don't know who these you know, people are, but I don't know gonna if you should... You're not going to kill me, are you? Well, <laughs> I, I would just have it go as far as saying, like, I don't think you should trust these people, I don't know what the fuck's going on. And Miles would be like, gee Wills, I should have fucking figured this out myself, actually. <laughs> this is what's going on. <laughs> it's so weird that the person I killed and a detective turned up together, but I guess that is what they would be doing. Mm-hmm. But it's all for a joke, it's supposed to be funny that she's there, but I was just like, man, that just fucks up everything again. And they let you take a they're breath. Gonna, you know they're going to take her to court after all this. Like, after all this Mona Lisa stuff and everything happens and the murders and all that, they're going to be like, oh, Serena Williams. What, did you hear anything <laughs> while you were... That's actually... I guess you don't... <laughs> wait, wait, are these sessions... Do you think these sessions are stored? Do you think they're recorded? Well, they're, they're live, right? She was... Do you think they might be recorded? Like, well, she, she was like acting camera. bored. She was reading a book because she was like bored. Well, it but was, when like, someone stream. comes in in the session, yeah, that's what I mean. Though there's no reason why it might not be recorded for safety or for whatever, right? Like, and they get for quality you know, assurance purposes. It's it a possibility. Be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially when it's like official work, you maybe want it to be recorded so that if anything went wrong, there's proof, right? Uh, yeah, like you're actually, <laughs> it's actually likely that it's uh, recorded I... because she says, "Oh, I'm on the clock," and you probably want to prove that. That's, right. what I'm, that's what I'm saying, like, there's a lot of reasons why that yeah. would feasibly be saved, especially in this day and age. Like, Yeah, yeah. Someone said it was sent to the fax machine. <laughs> <laughs> the, whole, the whole call. <laughs> frame yeah, by frame. Um, and what really bothers me is, you see this lady just listen to everything you've just said, who works for Miles, and Bedwell's reaction is, Yo, go away. No, not right now. It's like, not dude, right now. No. That is a major leak. There's a character watching you. But he doesn't care, because he's a shitty detective. <laughs> so anyway, you gotta take one breather for about two seconds. They'll give you that, and then, you, I'm sorry, it's back to cringing. So, oh, damn it. let us appreciate, you all know where I'm going with this. Let us appreciate this shot. See a fax machine right there. Oh god, there's so much to talk about. It's such a bad film. <laughs> the fax machine is going off. But you can just, I want you to appreciate the environment, okay? appreciate it <laughs> where everything is all right oh cool. yeah you're right yep yep uh yeah i think we all appreciate that so we we'll have to go this piece by piece actually let's just go copyright protection so judging from what you're seeing they walk up to the fax machine you can see it right there there they are excellent uh we, i'm actually going to rewind and talk about what they found in a second but basically before they can fully discuss what they found duke is about to just jump into this room and they don't want to be seen together. They don't want to be seen doing anything. So they got to hide, guys. Where do you think they're <laughs> oh. going to hide? Where will they hide? I'm super curious about... Yeah, oh, shit. Can... 
<laughs> Super curious about where they're gonna hide. Ah. There they go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they just uh, squat. Squat they down. Just pop a squat. I think so it's just if it's kind of just the reference, like aim for the bushes kind of shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They duck out of the camera. They don't exist anymore. That is, yeah. Cover your eyes while you're at it. So this would be in your collection of. He's not very good at like. This is a form of the director's responsibility, right? You could even file this under fucking choreography. <laughs> like, what are you doing? You can't. <laughs> what does it look like on set when they're like, oh, but you're like just oh, you're not covered. Looks... You're like out in the open. It um... looks hilarious. It looks hilarious. Yeah. Like for for a comedy skit. It's like, oh, let's okay. hide and just they just squat down and lie on the floor and cover their eyes or something. And can't uh, imagine that, uh, that neither of those two thought, hey, are we not going to be hiding behind anything? Yeah, that's kind of weird, yeah, Ryan. Exactly uh, during the direction, yeah. I'm just Ryan just go, no, but it's funny. It's funny. No, it'll look good that, on the camera. Is that actually what this is meant to be, or I think it's supposed to be. Something you're not supposed to think about. Just, I think it genuinely, yeah. whoever I can't. Well, sorry, I don't remember who said it, but when they go out of frame, out of mind, like I, I, I think that's what this is. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Which is unfortunate because it's just shit. <laughs> he walks out yeah. right. To that where is correct. They are. It is just shit. Now, it rewinds. You took a breath. Now, time for another bullshit. They search through no. the faxes <laughs> posted here, and they find that uh, Lionel forwarded the email to. Miles, meaning Miles is just as much a suspect as the, as the other four. They not how did they not assume that that would just happen anyway? Well, you're this is correct because the thing is that he could have just talked to them IRL. He could have just gotten access to a phone. I know he doesn't have one. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. Uh. It's like people like phones are like a Game Boy. You you might have one. You might. It's like no phone phones. No no. Everyone has a phone on them unless whiskey, stated right? otherwise. Have a phone. Well, he didn't. Rags the tech billionaire did not have one. Is what it if not he needs analog to send enough? Messages to people. He doesn't need to. Because... He carries his fax machine around with him. I don't like fax machines have yeah. phones like attached to them. <laughs> like, like a boombox on his shoulder. He's got a <laughs> I don't know how machine. they work, like, but I thought I saw phones next to those fax machines. Yeah, I mean, you need to dial to the fax machine yeah. for it to yeah, work. Yeah. I thought that's how it works. Yeah. Well, and, uh, but yeah, the p point to be made is that they now realize that Miles is just as much suspect as the other four, but he was already anyway. There was no reason yeah. not to have thought that. So. Greatest detective yeah. ever was like, wait a minute, the people that testified on his behalf in court and perjured themselves might have just told him when they got that email. Yes. And this he is didn't the image, put it by the way. Until he saw the facts. Uh, yeah. It, th this Do is the fucking absurdity you got. Shot? Miles, sorry, Duke is the one that's eavesdropping. That's what makes this so stupid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, so stupid. Look, you show uh, the original shot. In the oh, original, well, it's uh, just Blanc. Yeah, that's so, the so they, this just is just Blanc. a lie. Like, when we first yeah. saw this, there was yeah. no Andy, and they cut her out because that's a spoiler. Exactly. So they just lie to get around it. Yeah. That's that's what Knives Out did, and that's what Glass Onion's doing now. <clears throat> yeah. Nice. Then we'll have cool. anything to say on Thank that one. <laughs> no, that's right. just about it. What else is there to say? <laughs> that's well, the long and short of it. That's like, the, 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 the seems cut and dry, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. In the in the like in this forty minute section of the movie, it's just like, oh, that scene you saw before, well, you're gonna see before this and other after stuff happening it. Yeah. yeah, all that was in there the whole time. We just cut around it, so you yeah, we lied to you. Be subverted. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing to figure out. Now, ima now imagine you're like actually a super investor, like, oh, that I didn't notice that, and then you go back, it's like, wait, it's it's not there. It wasn't there. Or you it's funny because while we were watching, the smaller said, huh, "There's somebody else watching him," and I thought like it was some idiot in a tree or something. <laughs> oh, I didn't really, I didn't realize it was that <laughs> fucking stupid. <laughs> yep. So I've seen I've seen some people try to defend this bullshit. Like, oh, it's a you know, it's a whodunit mystery. Like, they're it's supposed to mislead you. Yeah, <laughs> okay. but not like that. Because in whodunit, like we don't have to worry about like, lying, lying to you. No. Yeah, yeah, and so I think I want the killer to lie to me. Yes. Not the yeah. film. Not the movie. Not the fucking <laughs> that is the very, very, very You're in important. Well, yeah, if you've noticed, that's the lie that you can't use the excuse that it's unreliable narrative. Now it's just the film is lying to you. That's it. Yeah. 
And so, uh, obviously, I think this is like that's a very good point. It's it's not that a character is lying to our point of view character. It's just that the film itself, like the omniscient, ever present sort of you know point of view of the movie, is just like, nah, I'm not going to tell you that now. I'll tell you it's it later. Ryan, Ryan's lying. Ryan. Because Ryan's also, lying. I mean, if you really <laughs> think about it, this the the perspective of the audience is not really aligned with any of the characters. Not even Benoit Blanc, because he finds out things that we don't find out until like an hour later. So there's no one whose perspective, like that we as an audience, that we mirror at all. It's just the director lying to you. That's, that's all it is. And yet to to kick on, uh, what they're discovering there is that Duke has the motive to kill Miles because he's angry that he won't help him save his Twitch channel slash YouTube channel, and he's also doing doing fuck with with whiskey. And then we move on immediately to we find that she dropped the recording thing into uh, Birdie J's bag, and so that she listens back to it with uh, Benoit. Which, by the way, isn't this all done over an afternoon? Yeah, pretty much. Like pretty we, much, we, we're yeah. talking about like possibly three hours or some ridiculous shit. She gets everything she could possibly need to the point where Benoit is like, "Wow, you're really good at this," and you yeah. did it drunk, yeah. which is even cooler. Yeah. So shit. But anyway, they find out that the, the through this what she recorded, they have a back and forth, which is um uh Birdie J gets sent an email saying the factory that you're suggesting for the creation of the uh, sweatpants is notorious for being one of the biggest sweatshops. And her response apparently was sounds great, thanks, dab emoji. Implying that she doesn't know what sweatshops is. She thinks sweatshops are there to make sweatpants. Do you st do it's really stupid, if in case you haven't noticed yet. She's really stupid. That's why I call gyms sweatshops, because there's just that's where the sweat is made. That's, yeah, mm -hmm. they sell it. Too. Certainly is... Uh, it's so bad. I hate, I hate it so sweat, much. Yeah. <laughs> it's so stupid. Well, so that's the thing, right? This was dropped earlier as a... Uh, she's in trouble. Why is she in trouble? Because it's about to be revealed that a lot of her stuff is made in one of the worst sweatshops in, in, in history. And that she signed off on it, and if that email goes out, yeah. which I imagine it could from the other end, like, she's in hyper trouble. But the problem is, she just didn't know what a sweatshop is. Oh, oopsie. Do any of us truly know what a sweatshop is? I don't know what to make of this as well, because if this happened in real life and a celebrity said, I just didn't, I thought that's where they wake sweatpants. I feel like all of us would be like, that's what you're going with? That's yeah. You could have lied. Don't insult my intelligence. Yeah, lie better. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to have to better yeah. lie. You're just trying to make fun of me. Also, if if you're the person on the other end of that message, email, whatever, you'll probably write back like, "Wait, what do you mean? Sounds perfect." It's like, what, what, why would you say that? Like, wouldn't it's, I feel like they would ask back? It's like, wait, wait, no, it's like a bad thing. Why are you saying this? Is there's so many okay. ways it would have been stopped, right? Had she yes. had anybody interested in reading the fucking messages? That wasn't just that's like a, apparently that was closing off the biggest deal too. So if Birdie J just cared to even tell a person about it at all, yeah, they could then be like, ah, with my basic human knowledge, I can inform you of what a sweatshop is. <laughs> Great, but it's so funny how stupid she is, you know. So yeah, uh, they need to find the envelope because that is the key at this point, since all of them are as, as fucking ready to be guilty as each other. It's kind of like. Well, why would the envelope even exist? You know? There's no reason for it to yeah. exist. It would have been destroyed. But anybody who thought that was stupid, very stupid, because the film actually accounts for this really well. Ooh. Uh, Benoit says, they wouldn't destroy it. They would want Miles to see their work. They want to know, uh, they want him to know what they've done for him. They wouldn't destroy it. Mm -hmm, of course they would. Because of course, yeah, like, you could tell him, but that's not the same as showing him it. So, yeah, you know, getting rid of the information evidence. on Daddy Miles of the destroyed napkin. <laughs> it's like it's tiring because that's stupid as fuck. But it's like, is that is that more stupid or less stupid than anything we've seen yet? It's like it's kind of middle, isn't it? It's kind of middle. <laughs> <laughs> it's ranking mid. as some of the <laughs> <laughs> most uh, stupid. We call that yeah. we call that mid Ooh. mid stupid. And then uh, it follows up with they brought it here. And it's like, what? No. Okay, you've jumped no. again. Why would they have brought it here? And that's it. There's just that they brought it here. That's it. They did. No, oh, okay. 
Oh, okay, yeah, that's it. That's all you got. <laughs> so, like, they haven't destroyed it. They have brought it here. And then, well, would it just be on their person at all times, protected? And, uh, like, no. They say it wouldn't, they wouldn't have it on their person. They have to have hit it in their room. Why? Fucking napkin, dude. Yeah, you can, it's not, it's not heavy or anything. You can just put that in your pocket. It's no problem. You could take it I out of the envelope and put it into a small pouch. Before. And then put that with you. That's, there's no reason to... But nope. They said you wouldn't have an envelope on you. That's not what people do. You'd put that in your room. Okay. But do you, in a world where people rooms, just carry hot sauce and yep, solid yep, yep. Well, nitrogen <laughs> or hydrogen with them. They, they... Those are three significant leaps in order to make What's the story that, um... keep going. <laughs> Hold up, what's, uh, maybe Chad can help. What is the name of that old game show where you brought weird random things to, uh, it, as like an audience member? Does anyone know the show I'm talking about? Someone in chat. Uh, Does anyone? Uh, yeah, chat, really help me thing. out here. I think there was an old TV show where people brought just weird random let's shit make and a the host would go up to people and let's make a deal. Maybe. Um, cause I, it just, Let's make a deal. All right, a lot of people are saying it. There you go. That was just like a thing. Le Matt LeBlanc, world famous detective, just thought that he was <laughs> it might he might be pulled aside to be in the audience for let's make a deal. He wants to have his yeah. hot sauce. Um, Covered yeah, I don't know. In the pockets. It's been said. It's it's done. It's just that I really hate that scene. It's, it's, they established three things to be fact, which couldn't possibly necessarily be facts, and and they just say <laughs> that they are. It's just annoying. They do this all the time. It's just like okay. Fine. Um, so yeah, we move on from there to you need to find that envelope. So go. She he's explicit. He's like get into a fight and lose one so you can storm off without seeming like suspicious. And then you go ransack everyone's rooms until you find what you need. So that's but what, what if I unlocked? Hey, but what if I don't find what we need, Blanc? What are we doing? Come back! No, what? Uh, Labumbo. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the bumbo. <laughs> there's no, there's nothing for that, and of course, uh, that slots right in. The murder happens, and so she is ransacking the last of their rooms, and it happens to be Duke. She did Duke's last. Had yeah. she done them in any other order, <laughs> she would not have bumped into Whiskey, because that's what happens. And then Whiskey is like, "Oh God, this is this this, this, this this Duke. It's done. It's happened. Oh my God." And Helen at the time thinks she's talking about leaving him. And so she's yep. like, it's good. What's happened to him is good. He deserved it. And so Whiskey's like, wait a minute. You what killed him? Oh my god. And then she grabs the spear gun and uh, Andy's like, oh, Helen is like, ah, and runs away. And that explains why she came in saying Andy did it. She got that. And then she's running around. Benoit's running around. And they bump into each other. And we've almost caught up to the fucking movie, finally. <laughs> almost there, woo! However, I guess it's... Oh, oh yeah, it's not been revealed yet. Jesus Christ, because they do... We have to... <laughs> we reformat the whole movie again soon. So annoying, because there's so much more, like, information. This is what I mean. Making a video on this, like, if anyone was to do that, I don't understand how you could do it in a complete way without basically trying to, like, do it from the end... If you know what I mean, like once you get all the information and then doing it, because fuck me, the amount of times you have to reset if you try and do it chronologically. It's just <laughs> pain. All right. Hey. So we've caught up. Yeah, uh, they, they basically realize there's one place they haven't checked for the envelope because they're fucking stupid, and it's the glass onion. They haven't actually checked there. So he's like, you gotta go do that. And then, or rather, sorry, she gets shot. Ah, this movie sucks. <laughs> and was like, "Oh dear, you've been shot. It's all over." But she gets up straight away. Yeah, I'm almost like, like hey, in, in my head. I'm I'm, fine, I was about to just roll out what happened as a casual thing. I was about to say why she's not dead as a casual. Like, yep. So that's convenient. Moving on. I was like, no, actually, this is huge. It's just that there's so many huge stupids in this film that you can so overlook stupids. some. So it's like, yeah, that happens. I mean, not surprising. Do you know I mean, like, on. like, like no, a no, no, giant on, hole among a thousand giant holes kind of looks small. It's just like, what's yeah, there? there you go. It's just another giant hole, I guess. Basically, the bullet did not kill her because just where she was shot in her pocket is her sister's journal. Uh. And the bullet cannot penetrate a journal. 
Yes. Uh, yeah. We know this scientifically. Especially if it's really thin. Uh, the spat, yeah. The thinness, <laughs> contrary to intuition, makes it even harder to penetrate because how Dude, thin it is. I would just suggest it. Would it be great if at this point they're like, Tids out, there were three twin sisters. <laughs> 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 it's the column twins, though. <laughs> three twins. <laughs> three twins. Um, uh, this is a joke. This is like, you can't fucking be- you've pulled the twin card, all this other bullshit, and now she has a his sister's jail will stop the bullet. Fuck. Like, you're doing all of the, the most worthless writing choices ever to escape any kind of consequence in your writing. It's really she, dumb. He can't get getting away with that. it! <laughs> <laughs> You know, in hindsight, I'm not sure why neither of them, like, wore a wire. I'm just like, ha, I was recording you the whole time. A private investigator would never have that. No, Especially yeah. if he had lots and lots of time to prepare for all of this. That is actually a really fucking good question. Why did he <laughs> <laughs> A wire would really help. Dude, they Rags, that's the payoff. In, purse, that's the payoff in the first Knives Out, is they record Ransom at the end. Yep, exactly. Maybe you should have done oh. that with Miles, you fucking idiots. You fool! Well, it's fine anyway, because they solved the problem. We're getting there. We're, yeah. we're, getting, we're getting real close to the, the explosive finale. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. So, explosive finale. There's a lot to think about with this moment. Um, the, the shooter decided to shoot her once, and he was unlucky enough that he shot her in the one place of very few in her body that wouldn't do any damage. Because Which of... probably wasn't even that lethal of a place to begin with, so I pro I don't um, know, I feel like there's a lot on the line. Pop her a few times, and also the world-famous detective standing yeah, next to her. Yeah, pop that. Yeah, I was, I, mean, so, yeah. So, yeah. I was about to say, like, yeah. whether or not even the shot is lethal, yeah, you go for more. You double tap, you triple tap, and then of course you kill it. She obviously, whatever she knows, he knows. You'd be a dumbass not they're, to fucking figure that talking. out by now. Yeah, <laughs> he called her Helen. Right he literally called her Helen. <laughs> that is not the name you're familiar with, and you already know she has a sister, right? Like, some of them do. I don't fucking know anymore. Point being, kill, 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 kill. Kill, kill yeah. destroy. Okay. You've so already might committed be, once. Like, you, you're in it. A, like, might as well. <laughs> but it's okay, Mahler. Question. Say it with me. Kill. He's just, He's just stupid. stupid. Yeah. 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 We don't have to worry about literally anything ever again. <laughs> we solved it. Okay, so after shooting once, he should definitely have shot more than more than that. But mm -hmm. maybe this is a stupid question, but why does he want to kill her at this moment? Okay, so we have That's to remember what what does everyone know about everything? Question. He... Because last thing uh, I believe, because we we went and reset, but before that, if we if we go all the way back, he he is like, oh, whiskey says, oh, um, Andy did it. And he's like going after her. So everyone, mm. the idea has been put into everyone's head except for Benoit that she did it. So why would he go kill her? Um, he could it be that he's a Van Helsing type underneath, and he wants to stop the undead from rising? Ooh. Maybe <laughs> um, that would subvert my expectations. Yeah, he, I like that. But, it would be funny if he shot her burst out of the glass when he's like, "I saved you, Benoit." She was a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. So okay. Funny. If she, if he's trying to present it like she killed uh, Duke, why would he kill her? Because then it's like, well, then it must not have been her because the killer is still at large. I'm going to be honest with you, I'm actually racking my brain a little bit for why he's so motivated to kill her in this moment. And I'm not 100% sure. Does the film want me to think that he is aware of everything she is aware of and she's looking to destroy him? Or, or is that way too much? Inf like, I'm not actually sure. Now I'm thinking, why would he want to even kill Cassandra a second time? What does he gain from that exactly? Is, Wait, is he under the impression that he that. didn't do the job? I don't know. Or is he under the impression I mean, this is a twin sister? He shouldn't be by this point. He should know it's Helen. Because of course, can, you could say Ryan he's killing her to prevent her from that. telling people that he tried to kill her. I guess. <laughs> I but, think Ryan thinks that he's trying to kill Cassandra, yeah. You think? But even then, I don't see how that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, this is the problem. We're, we're, we're in another situation of I'm not even sure who he thinks that is exactly, and even whoever he thinks it is, I'm not even sure what his motive is exactly. Yeah. 
Jesus, this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to get worse. We have really yeah, well, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Well, it's going to get done, worse yeah, in this hard. very scene, right? Because the thing is, Benoit and uh, Helen are incredibly lucky the gunman isn't either in vicinity enough to actually see that he didn't successfully kill, thus tried again, but also to know what's going to happen next. Um, but anyway, she gets up and they make a plan which is, we're going to fake that you died, I'm going to grab them all into the lower glass onion, and you're going to go upstairs and search for the red envelope, and you're going to fucking find it, because Miles did this and he's stupid. That's like just the, the angle, because he's basically figured everything out, he just wants the red envelope to be gotten. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you're all sitting there thinking, but, but the bullet was caught by the journal, so how are you going to fake blood? Like, have you got some red paint on you, some red ink, or some... Hot sauce, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> this shit, does I think, have hot sauce. I think what? when this happened, it was such a like, what the fuck? You, <laughs> you need <laughs> fake blood and you just have hot... You, oh, fuck. Oh, <laughs> so unsatisfying. So he uses Jeremy Renner's hot sauce to fake her death. <laughs> sure does. So... Here's an interesting part. Like he kept this fat ass bottle of hot sauce on him while he was wearing his Cracker Jack uniform, and then he had time to change clothes and still keep it on him. It's because he's white doesn't mean he, he to really pop. likes his hot sauce. <laughs> he wants to pop it on everything. Like that's yeah, what, this big like, ass I bottle think, uh, pulling his pants down. They could at least have done that work. I think Cavi, you're the one that mentioned it. They should have had to be like, oh wow, that's great. I love this hot sauce. I'm <laughs> definitely taking some of this. Like, yeah, that would like at least insane. make it feel a little less stupid when he's just like, oh, that has a kick. He's like, yeah, take some, I guess. Take some hot sauce, whatever. Go get, go, go on. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 that would make it more believable. <sighs> and so, yeah, she You think pours when it Ryan on. was there, like, having her, like, telling her about, all right, you need to, um, you need to take this hot sauce and squirt it all over you to pretend that it's a gunshot wound. Do you think Ryan ever had that little voice in his head that said, what are you doing, Ryan? <laughs> what are you doing? No, this... I don't think he's ever heard right. that. He doesn't have that little voice in his Little head. voice that <laughs> says, He's Ryan. assassinated that little bastard a long time ago. It won't work this time, Ryan. They'll see through it, Ryan. They'll, They'll see through, through it. it. It's like, Ryan, they won't. it won't make any sense at all. They won't see through it. Ryan, this is this is madness of the highest order. <laughs> you need to think about this again. Like, dude, Ryan, come on. you fool. You fool. What are you doing? It's like the voice you normally have when it's like, should I really order food again today? Like, oh, I don't know if I should. <laughs> But it's really bit for him. It's like, should I really write that? It's like, I don't know, man. But obviously, that doesn't happen. <laughs> so uh, everyone turns up, and now you might be thinking, wait. So if she was alive that whole time, it's like that was a fucking huge risk. They are incredibly lucky. If you remember, all of them, the dialogue follows that they were all alerted by the gunshot, and there's a decent amount of time between the gunshot and them successfully like laying out the death scene, so to speak. So yeah, if any one of them had shown up beforehand, it, the plan's fucked. Exactly, yeah. if somebody was, like, 30 seconds closer, which, you know... Reasonable. I know it's a big place, but still... You guys Everyone seems to show up all the time. Mm -hmm. They yeah. show up I'm... at the right time, though, when it's convenient. Yeah. For yeah, either teleport powers. or enabling private conversations to happen, yeah. Yes. And uh, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's also a bit of hot sauce on her, like, chin, and it... And it because the way she's lying down, it it like st the strolls down into she's her lying nose. Down very uncomfortably. Yeah, her yeah. back and neck, I think, are on steps, which is just funny. Like it's like, oh god, yeah. you better hope yeah. they go in fast because that's <laughs> gonna <laughs> wreck. Hope they move quick. For the sake of drama, the hot sauce <clears throat> is heading for that nostril. Like I'm gonna get there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, it gets there just. Just a few seconds after that. Yeah, and so, uh, which means for some reason he's written it now so that if any of them had hung around for just, I don't know, three seconds, seconds longer, it all would have been yeah. over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and it's yep. also a good thing that nobody in a panic tried to like check her pulse or, you know, yeah, well, shake her out of it. Fring, I, mean, I guess you forgot. Shot, like, Benoit you know, said she ain't going anywhere. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right there. It's a weird way to say it, isn't it? It really is. The fact is, as well, is by the way, to... she only put blood on, like, the inside, so, you know, you could make anyone think, like, I can't, see you know, if it's closed up, it's like, there's not as much blood, maybe it's stopped, but there's, there's just, it's so absurd to be like, alright, <laughs> like, whatever. <laughs> I, I, I think I may have believed it if you had Benoit, like, pleading, like, trust me, she's gone, 
we need to like gather to or, make sure no one else gets hurt. Yeah, yeah, or this is a crime scene, don't disturb it or something. Yeah, that could have worked too, but he just says, she ain't going anywhere. No, admittedly. She ain't going like, nowhere. Somebody <laughs> might be like, it seems mildly hypocritical considering how much the prior crime scene got disturbed. But yeah, yeah. You know which what? is funny, right? Benoit? Because okay. nobody cared ever. about him either. Nobody actually cared about Duke. They were just cared about... No, the... nobody did, except for Whiskey, kind of. Kind of? Yeah, it's unclear. Yeah. Yeah. She was crying, but everybody so else, something. Nobody cared, yeah. And also, I, I you know what? That's, that's probably the, one of the most dimensions we have. The fact that she like rips into him, but then simultaneously is actually really sad. When yeah, he distraught does. that Loves he's him dead. enough to kill her back. Yeah, it's like, yeah you okay. know what? She might actually have the most depth of any character in this story. <laughs> she might because she's kind of got her own objectives and agenda that is hidden beneath the surface and that other layer as well. Yeah. Man, she might actually be like the most, which is interesting considering she gets way less time than a lot of the other people. Just yeah. less time to be ruined, I guess. Uh, well, I guess, yeah. Well, wait, no, we talked about how she's like a bad person, but the film thinks she's great. Well, so, yeah. less time to be well, ruined compared yeah. to Duke, the other characters. So use them right? away. She's not as bad as the others. The others are fucking killing people. And... Yeah, of course. Oh yeah, sure. Relatively speaking, <laughs> yeah, he's one of the best people here. By the way, <laughs> science, I know for a fucking I fact present the science, this guy. Yeah. that people would say, "Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it beautiful writing that the sister's journal saved her? His sister saved her from beyond Ugh. the grave." Oh, that, yeah, uh, it's not, it's so funny because didn't know it was a magic Unch journal. Sorry, in, Unch <laughs> they, in Uncharted One. Uh, they find, um, they find, uh, Francis Drake's journal in his empty coffin that leads them to El Dorado. And right. they do the payoff where, uh, Sully takes the notebook, puts it in his shirt, and then he gets shot, and Nate thinks that he's dead. Mm. Because, like, I don't know, like, the bullet wound actually did, like, hurt him. It didn't kill him, but it hurt him. And then they do that payoff of, like, oh, yeah, like, you know, Francis took a bullet for you. And it's like, yeah, it's been done before. It's not like an original payoff of like, isn't it kind of neat that like the book saves somebody's life? Um, I, just, I, sure. I always go back to the Simpsons with that gag. It's like whenever they're firing oh, yeah. the, the guy piece of the true the cross twice. It, it's, yeah, good, th good thing I keep a Bible close to my heart. <laughs> no, good thing I was wearing a true piece, a piece of the true cross today. <laughs> I think I'll go now. inside. You know it's, it's more likely. I can definitely believe that a Bible, a thick Bible, could stop that. But what better than that thin journal? <laughs> as well, as well to be fair, the power of love. That, Add the power of love from the that's, sister. That's that's mm. right. The power of love slowed the bullet down. Well, the power of love can travel through <laughs> dimensions and universes. Also, I'm so. pretty sure that oh, Francis Drake's no. journal was thicker as well than that one too. So you know what? Oh, yeah, this one was super one thin. Back in 2007. So yeah. anyway, yeah, right. yeah, sure. really 2007? We, Jesus. We get yeah, to Benoit man. is about to oh, unravel the onion. He's gonna make it all make sense. Oh, and uh, among hang, hang on. Did, did, uh, did we mention that this is another scene that lies to us visually as well? And time-wise? Oh, do you mean about when she's set up as a corpse? Yeah, because in, in the time where they, where they uh, yeah, set, set her up as a corpse, it takes like four or five minutes or something. And when we see the scene first, it takes like yeah. 30 seconds maybe, maybe a minute yeah. when they all yeah. arrive. And he did just put in like five minutes of dialogue. It's like, oh, we're going to do this, this, this. You're just going to lie down there. Someone would argue to you on that one that we saw... A montage cut. Meanwhile, the reality was shown to us later. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't yeah. think him that make the argument here. It doesn't look anything like a montage shot at all. Not well. well just just cutting with out expectations, metal. Oh shit! Sorry. Yeah. Um. Cool. Just. Uh, well, jokes on you. I'm very stupid. So there you go. <laughs> well, right. the thing is, it is to sell. <laughs> don't ask any more yeah. questions. <laughs> they cut it to sell to us what Blanc is going to sell to everybody who finds the scene. Right. That's what they're going for, and then we get to see and that's the true. There's, some, yeah, there's something, I, I find that more defensible than the, the one where yeah. they blatantly lie and then the one where they've, I would almost argue gaslighting is the one where the, they show a different scene, <laughs> but you don't know if that's supposed to be the scene or not. You're like, is that, was that, is that what happened? Or, I don't know. Uh. Anyway, um, so he's going to unravel a lot of stuff, but among the things that he says, you have something that seems densely layered, mysterious and inscrutable, yet is hiding in plain sight. I expected intelligence. I expected a puzzle, a game, but that's not what this is. It hides not behind complexity, but by mind-numbing obvious clarity. It doesn't hide at all. Miles mm. Braun is an idiot. It's dumb. So dumb. Uh, sorry, the, the response to that is so dumb, it's brilliant. And he goes, no, it's just dumb. 
It's just dumb. <laughs> so uh, the reason why I wanted to say all that first was that's that is what the conclusion is for what he's about to explain to all of us as an audience. It's just that, fucking dumb. It's just that's fucking the dumb. Version. It was just stupid. And this is what people think. You know, like all the stuff we've just been through, and why we'd call this film dumb as fuck. They think that's all like not the criticism that we're just we're just missing. How do you miss Sorry. this? Blanc is saying that's the whole point. Of course, we caught this. Yeah, Everyone like, catches this, not, this. This is not some brilliant art. For, it wears every single thing it has to say on its sleeve. There's no misunderstanding this. Just like there was no misunderstanding Knives Out. Like, no. they're really... At, same with... There was no misunderstanding The Last Jedi or Looper. <laughs> no. They're all very <laughs> straightforward films. They're incredibly straightforward. He tells you what you're supposed to think. And in One this thing. case, what kind of defense is that? I wrote it stupid on purpose. It's like, did you? Are you aware of all of these <laughs> other stupid things that happen in this film? Um, well, yeah, you're yeah, like, which things were not stupid, Ryan? Ruined. Tell me which things were the what? smart things. And then I'll, am I, I'm am curious. I be like, good job. No, all of the characters that you wrote are incredibly thin. Like, was that... Im that's not stupid. That's just thin. Like, was that on purpose? And they, even <laughs> when they were thin, they were incongruent in some instances. Was that on purpose? And as for, like, hiding in plain sight, it's like, because you didn't explain, I guess we're about to talk about that. Yep. The hiding in plain sight plays over, what's her name, going up into the glass onion and seeing that the, uh, the, the, the envelope, the envelope is hidden behind the fake, uh, napkin behind, like, the golden, it's the golden ratio, right? The, or yeah, yeah. Or yeah. Makes, yeah, like, between the golden ratio, the little red square that's the real one. It's like, oh, so he's... F wow, he didn't destroy that shit! Like, <laughs> he yeah. kept it? Yeah, and by the way, uh, they don't give us a reason. They say, why did you destroy it at one point? I think Lionel asks him that, and he just goes, yeah. uh... He doesn't say anything. didn't destroy it? It's the one thing that... You won. The case is over. You won, you yeah. Won. And she's dead. She's never gonna go for you again. It's over. You won. You don't need it. It's the one thing that apparently can unravel your entire business. Why yeah. didn't you destroy it? Why the well, hell did yeah, you and, not Yeah, who ends up destroying it in this film? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, uh, he does. Yeah, that's, so, right. that's right, he does. So, like, it's, it's just crap. It's just, it's just crap. stupid, Mola. It's just stupid. It's just exactly it's as planned as Line Yagami would say. <laughs> So, um, Ryan yeah. Johnson is one. Exactly uh, his plan, okay? He says, I assumed Miles Braun was a complicated genius, but he's just an idiot. And, like, he keeps pushing that, and then he starts, like, ripping into him. And he says this. His dock doesn't float. His wonder fuels a disaster. His grasp of disruption theory is remedial at best. I'm gonna stop him there. His dock doesn't float. I don't think he built the dock, dude. I think someone else would have. He just wanted, like, because I don't think Miles can do that kind of carving. I don't think he's like a glass mm, smith. Good idea. Yeah, but the, so the thing is, the things he thinks to compliment him for are <laughs> the mystery that was written and uh, the puzzle box. But he says he can't have credit for them because the puzzle box is designed by a puzzle maker and the mystery was written by a different writer. Like, I don't think he built the dock. I think someone would have designed <laughs> it. And if it doesn't fucking function as a dock, that's not Miles' fault. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like if you're gonna if you're gonna take those achievements away, you can't give him the ones that don't yeah. work. That's not fair. And the whole doc thing was fucking stupid anyway. Then you well, got his wonder really fuel as a disaster. Product. It's like, well, yeah, it's kind yeah, of the point, isn't it? You know it? what? There's it's... some other people in this room who are responsible for that, though. Well, and like the scientists the film that the film work. tries very hard to absolve. Like, and, of course, uh, the wonder fuel being such a disaster, just it just doesn't. The film can't function. There's lots of reasons for that. But... Uh, um, yes. Um. And what was the lot? The third one. His grasp of disruption theory is remedial at best. That doesn't even sound like okay. much of an insult. <laughs> like, it's not that much of an insult. It's like yeah. I mean, if it's remedial, it means it's accurate, right? If if missing a little bit of information. It's, that's what I've known that to mean. It's just like okay, all right. Um, and then he says, "You told us, meaning uh, Miles, you told us you picked up." Uh, that that um that he picked up your drink, but what did we actually see? And then Nothing. he says, oh, "You yeah. handed Duke your own glass." 
I remember being so annoyed at this point. I was like, what did I say? I don't even know what I saw anymore. Yeah, I don't know. I know. <laughs> you showed me two pieces. Because I, I think the intended reaction is, oh, whereas the intended reaction is, oh, fuck you. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck you. Something completely different. Yeah. yeah. No, and then also, if you go back, it's like, what did we actually see? It's like, no one saw that at all. Like, everyone was looking at uh, Birdie, would, right? I don't think anybody would have seen that. Yeah. No, the audience, was... the audience was shown it and we barely saw it. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Everyone in the room is if not anything, fucking looking at it. Couldn't, couldn't you say that it was pretty intelligent for Miles to be like, hey, dude, look at what she's doing over there. Not me handing you my glass. It's kind of yeah. clever. To yeah, like, I, I, th I think so. I think that is a point uh, in Miles' favor, yeah. despite being but an absolute clown character, the... apparently. Yeah, apparent. Well, it's funny that you say apparently when he does it. But then again, he kept the envelope because he's an idiot. Because so, he's a cloud like, character. Yeah, he's, he's an idiot when he needs to be, and he's smart when he needs to be for the sake of the drama. So yeah, there's it's it's really fucking annoying because he tell he does what uh, Miles does. Benoit just says he gave him the glass, right? Everyone, you remember that, right? And it's like, well, yep. now, well, who's lying? Really I don't happened. know who's <laughs> fucking lying to me. And then they show and what really happened. That yeah. will be relevant soon enough to the idea of like, uh, uh, if would I be lying if I said I saw that sort of thing? We'll just we'll just put a pause on that a second. The other thing he's picked up on is all the things that Miles says wrong, like the word "abbreviate" yeah. or. Um, uh, oh, just yeah, made up bullshit. Just just words that he's making up to sound smart. Which is funny because you know a step away from using made up words is using correct words incorrectly, like triangulate or using unnecessarily right. more complicated words. If it like if he was correct in some distant understanding of what it means to triangulate, you know what I mean? Like it's like what an unnecessary fucking word. You mean she's across from the crossbow, right? You mean she's like? Well, yeah, <laughs> come across. oh, and also the fact. That, uh, you know what? I'll let him have motor car. That's okay. He can he can have that one. That's more of a curious what in terms of just like he's, what he's age just, is he? Why, why would you say that? You know? Yeah, why would you use motor car? He's a quirky southern man who likes motor cars. Okay. I feel like if there were actually a well-written story, I would enjoy Benoit Blanc a lot more than I do. Feel like I if would he had really great like dialogue that. behind him, his quirkiness yeah. might actually come across as charming. Yeah. And I mean, if he yeah. was actually hyper-intelligent, if he did the yeah. thing, right, the disarming detective, kind of like what Columbo is, where, like, people don't, they underestimate him. So, But he's incredibly stupid at almost every turn in this. Yes. So it's, well, yeah. yeah. And I mean, in this case, he's admitted, right? His Achilles heel is when it's simple, I fuck it up. It's like, you know, man, the guy time. who can do like the most complex mathematical equations ever, but then he goes and it's like two plus two. Ah, oh, fuck, this one always gets me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's, yeah. like, yeah. it's not a, it's not a great calculator. combo. <laughs> Especially when like the idea of Occam's razor is, you know, with a lot of the cases he's probably tasked to solve, it probably is something really straightforward. Well, it's just it's an it's an interesting question, right? If you if you struggle at basic things, what is the nature of you figuring out complicated things? Like what does that look like? It's kind of, you know, it's the reason why they want you to show you're working in maps. It's like, well, I want to know that you understand how to get to the right answer. Yeah. If Benoit Blanc just gets to bullshit answers through like instincts that he barely understands. I don't know if that. Well, he's great. just a wizard. You know, just, <laughs> well, it's just, you know, because he can present all of this he wants, but again, you got to make the case in a court. And if you make the case in a court, you got to present like a coherent um, story or explanation that people can follow through that's tied to all the evidence, not just some shit you pulled out of your ass. You know, <laughs> like it's not going to be very useful if nobody can understand how you arrived at these conclusions. Well, uh, and he's got he's got a lot of conclusions to let us know about. First of all, he's something he overheard. Remember when we mentioned the Anderson Cooper birthday party where he almost got pancaked? Is uh, he says no, no, no? He was trying to say Andy's Andy's place where he almost got pancaked, meaning uh, that 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 puts Miles was coming away from Andy's house and he almost hit Duke, mm -hmm. who was on his way to Andy's house. Now this was happening because if you remember the timeline, she sends the email at four p.m. Two hours later, Miles goes to the house, kills her, he's coming back, and he happens to cross paths with fucking Duke, who's going on his way there to contact her as well. Do you understand how fucking unlikely all of that is? Yes. That's a lot of coincidences uh, and timings lining up very perfectly. Well, where do all these people live? They don't live in the same... Do they live in the <laughs> they same all live in the area? Same street. Same area to run. <laughs> each other. Yeah. Totally, yeah. Because if not, street. it's like... Because then it's like, well, damn. Hey, finally a reason for them to have mingled in the first place. They yeah, live on the same, same street. street. Yeah, we got it, finally. Right? Oh, sweet. If, Miles, 
if Miles what? got there after the other people, everything is different because they might have made it a choice that he wouldn't that would have been really detrimental to him. So like the fact that he got there first is very convenient for him in order to execute his plan. Right? Because if you get there first, that's like one thing compared to getting it's, there afterward. It's so funny because um, this is gonna build up to an enormous like series of problems in the writing, but like where it starts, this foundation, the idea of you have her house, they all arrive, like, arriving even in the same day. Like, really? Yeah, I guess you were all in the same place. <laughs> were all available at that time. The politicians all available like, within campaigning. time limits and ability. Yeah. Like, it's just like, fuck me, man. What's and then, his yeah. name? Wasn't streaming on YouTube at the time? No. Nope. Check his email. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, the same time to the point of almost pancaking him, as he said. But it's like, why is this being brought up? And it's like, well, if he saw him at that time in that way, and then when he gets brought up, he's like, blah, 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 Anderson Cooper, which by the way, I think uh, Cap, when we went over that the first time around, you were going to say something else? Was there, um, because I've got a development of it, but I was going to let you go first if you had something. Well, uh, the, the most straightforward thing is that Duke would obviously know that he's lying, and so you might wonder as an audience member on a second watch how Duke would respond to that lie, because he's oh, dead right. now once we've, yeah. once we've, you know, let it all, all, all the information's out now, but he's dead. So at mm -hmm. the time, he would have been like, huh, that's weird that you lied about that. But we don't get to yeah. see it because the camera literally just pulls away. There's, there's a <laughs> lot, you're on track for what I think is a huge problem, right? So I'll try and have an argument in favor against then in favor again. So in favor of this being a fuck up. Like, would he not say, Anderson, Coop no, Andy, Andy, what are you talking about? And it's like, mm -hmm. well, wait, what if he heard that and he sussed out himself like, ah, he wants to keep that a bit secret. Eh, sussy, sussy. Okay, maybe there's a reason for that and I'll talk to him about it later. He doesn't. No. So <laughs> it's like, what else we got? It's like, you know what? I'd be fucking sweating if I were Miles because the fact that he so casually almost announced that I was at Andy's when that's a literal <laughs> secret. Yeah. I've told people I wasn't even in the fucking country or whatever at that time. So that is a lie. I haven't spoken to him. Who knows who he's told? He already knows he's told the others that he got pancaked almost. Did he mention who Neely did it? Why hasn't he mentioned who Neely did it when he's about to yeah. announce it there? As far as I'm concerned, Duke has already told all of them that Miles almost pancaked me on my way to Andy's. Really weird, he was heading from there. I wonder what that's about. Especially when she turns up missing. <laughs> she's yes. about to, and that's the thing, she's about to turn up dead, so I think that, that yeah. Why didn't Miles do anything to dispel the idea that it was him? Maybe what you... they were going too fast, it wasn't his car, right? Like, he called him later, like, Oh, hey man, how you doing? I've just been out here in, like, the Bahamas or something, chilling out. What's up, man? And then he's like, I didn't I nearly at Andy's house? It's like, uh Definitely okay, not. Like, you know. Why didn't he do that? Oh, sorry. I just <laughs> Well this is the thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question. It's literally yeah, like it's it's your lying eyes against my lying eyes, okay? So like yeah, it's just I'm just gonna say that wasn't me. You didn't see me. I was in I've got an alibi, you you're crazy, it wasn't me. Yeah. Or he could be like, You saw me there. Uh, and and that's it. I'm done because I know that the secret's going to come out. So I have to start bribing you slash doing what I have to do to keep you silent or kill you. Yeah. And the funny thing is, of course, you'd be like, well, oh, he doesn't have a phone. That's right. Okay, maybe what's stupider: the tech billionaire who refuses to use a phone, or the <laughs> murderer who can't lie. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't do that. Fucking hell. <laughs> The other thing that should tip Duke off about the strangeness of that encounter, I mean, granted, he doesn't know that she's dead until, you know, we'll get there in a second. Um, but even at the time, he's they go over to her house looking to talk to her, and she isn't answering her phone, and she's not at her house, and so they're very concerned about where she is. Meanwhile, Miles almost pancaked him driving away from her house. So wouldn't he be like, hey, Miles, what were you doing there? Do you know where she is? What's that or about? Or like, like Mola highlighted, mm. maybe he let that slip earlier. Like maybe when they're at their house, it's like I saw, I saw Miles. He nearly hit me. Yeah, it's so casually said in the pool. There's no reason to assume he hasn't talked about this several times already. Yeah, could you yeah. imagine if they? Because they all knew. Imagine if they actually. Well, he's at the house. Like, he's banging on the Miles. door. Then Claire yeah. and uh, Birdie show up, and he's banging. He's like, "Yeah, no one's answering." I saw Miles. By the way, he almost killed me. Yeah, he was. He, he seems like he was in a hurry. That's yeah, it's kind of like, weird, huh? It, it, the, what are the like? Miles isn't just going to be casually here as a coincidence, just doing his drive. Like, of course, that's relevant information. He had no reason to keep that secret. So yeah, it's just fucked again. 
Because if everyone knows, Miles is going to have to kill them all. <laughs> they, <Yeah. laughs> and then that gets a little bit suspicious, doesn't it? But, uh, yeah, um, so you got all of that. Uh, by the way, Kate Hudson, not as familiar with her work. Man, if I was to pick the worst actress slash actor in this film, it would definitely be her. And uh, one of the big ones for me is when her Helen comes down and she is supposed to scream because, of course, she's seeing someone who's dead and covered in blood. But, you know. Oh, yeah. And then she goes, What is reality? <laughs> yeah. And it's oh. like, Ooh. <laughs> she sounds like a robot. It's supposed what to be funny reality? as well, right? Like, what is reality? Because, oh my god, you're like I a zombie. I can't even with this. <laughs> it, it does feel like a, I can't even, yeah. But, um. <laughs> So yeah, she's she's come down, she's got the envelope now, and so now everything's, oh, she's got the proof. This is crazy. Um, have we gotten to the reveal yet of, yeah, because they're all slowly figuring it out. They're like, wait a minute, that's Andy? Question mark, what's going on? Imagine being fucking Miles right now. You'd be like, I've killed you twice. What is happening? <laughs> How many it. twins do you have? <laughs> How many of you are there? Yeah, so they said... <laughs> They legit say like like Lionel faxed Andy's email to Miles. He printed it out and faxed it. I fucking can't believe this is how you get information to Miles. Absolutely <laughs> yeah. insane. He actually picks this shit up. He's like, oh yeah, let me check my fax machine. <sighs> what is that? <laughs> like, I don't, like what? Just get a phone, uh, you loser. Said before, right? Didn't the fax print to a lot of different fax? Does it print to just him or? Everywhere, every there? version, oh, every, every copy, like, every one of them has copies of everything that he sent. All of them, yeah, all around man. the world, and uh, all around the man. Yep, yeah, we God, went over this man. huge security <laughs> breach. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, I know, we did. I just needed it, re like, because yep. that's insane. <laughs> <laughs> it is worthy really of restating right? how nuts that is. It's insane. Just a random intern is just walking past. The oh, here it comes. <laughs> We're actually in the timeline now. Oh, she was clever enough not to fear Miles. But then she died. <laughs> like, then she died. Like, <laughs> fucking hell. So fucking... Ryan. It's a Ryan Ryan. line, yeah. Because the thing is, right... You this is see the real threat. You can, I can Miles. guarantee you that he was like, man, it sucks that I have to write like a good, like powerful woman is killed by this asshole clown man. How do I write it so it sounds better than that? She's clever. She's too clever to live. Yeah. <laughs> too clever <laughs> to live. <laughs> Or is that meant to be like a meta commentary, right? When I make a really smart movie, nobody understands it, and then they shit on me. So I make a really dumb movie, and nobody misunderstands it, and it's it's well received and well regarded. But here, film's about to annihilate itself again. We haven't even gotten to the big what? one. Wow, yeah, I haven't even gotten to the big one. So with everything we have now explained to you, precious, precious chat, you have let's accept all of it. We're buying it all. It's all good. It's great. It, actually, it's genius. So what happens next with everything in place? Well. Duke knew that he was with Andy alone that night because he saw him on that road and there's only really one place he's going to be coming from. But he didn't know Andy was dead. So really, he's just got a suspicion of like, huh, what were you up to there? However, that Ooh. night, do you remember I said that he was like, wow, my views are blowing up, dude. My mm. channel is going great. Maybe you could uh, do me a favor and, you know, help promote the channel now. Things changed. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what was actually happening on that phone was a Google alert went off for Andy because the <gasps> information had been released. She died. What? I really yeah. need to do this slowly because yep. fucking hell. <laughs> Think about this, right? Like, so they try. He said he'd pull strings to delay it, but the information got out. It's official. And so all the news outlets are pushing that Cassandra Brand is dead, which is big news. It goes straight, like, I'm, I'm happy to believe, with how stupid everything is, whatever, that the first person to know would be Duke, because he has alerts for fucking everything. Fine. Duke finds out. But he reads that. I need everybody to think carefully, because this is something that we took a while to really pass out. Yeah. What, what is, <laughs> with everything you know about Duke, when he uh -huh. reads, Cassandra Brand found dead suicide... <laughs> what 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 do you do? What is the first thing that you do? I thought she was fucking here. Where'd she go? Who is that? <laughs> that's, so that's the who first. Did, who like, the fuck is this? <laughs> that yeah. is the first fucking thing you do. Is you go? Why is there a zombie? What is happening? <laughs> it's uh that is the reasonable reaction. You are baffled because you were just talking to her like five minutes, two minutes ago, even. 
she but bumped she, into me. I, I felt she was there. <laughs> the police have confirmed she is dead. Suicide. This is this is kind of a little creepy. Terrifying, even. Oh, she, wait, hold on. She's wearing the same outfit and hairstyle <laughs> in the photo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she had to, to make it more convincing. Uh, like I said, zombie. Wow. What, like is, reality? Oh yeah. um, what um, is reality? Oh my god. So, yeah, I guess you could say, isn't this hyper-convenient or rather inconvenient? It's like, yeah, basically. The writer said, no, the whole world doesn't know she's dead, trust me. Actually, no, now they do, because this would be fun at this point to reveal it. And you're just like, why? And you're like, fuck you. It happens oh, now. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. So yeah, that's a, obviously hyper inconvenience, but the, the reality here is that Duke should be freaking out. He'd be like, what the hell? Cassandra's dead? Where is she? Go get it. Like, they think you're dead. Who Cassandra, they think you're dead. <laughs> like, yeah. what? Exactly. You know what you might even do is be, if you knew she had a twin sister, you'd be like, oh shit, your twin sister died and they think it's you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be realistic. However, what actually happens is Duke reads this. And he immediately figures out in his head, oh, Miles must have killed her, and I can use this as leverage to boost my Twitch channel. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, that dude does not strike me case. as smart enough to even, like, control himself to this degree. I'm going to be honest well, with you, I don't alone, even think he would have put this together that, well, that quickly. No. Exactly. It's so quick, too. Well, it, it's crazy. He instantly put it together and, le and used it to his own advantage. Like, yeah. just like that. Man, this is the kind of news. With who he is, isn't it? I think so. I, I honestly think Duke's the kind of guy that would be like, "You, you killed her. Like, what the yeah. fuck?" Like, uh, Duke yeah. is actually kind of like the, the guy who would not accept that. It's yeah, I don't. Like, I don't believe Duke hell? would just go. Hmm, this could boost my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I could. I this this a is dead talking woman? about a real bump yeah. in the algorithm. <laughs> like, what, like, it's so yeah, absurd that, because that is true. I'm not sure that I believe. Yeah, I don't think I believe that he would Duke, as I understand him in this crazy, crazy film, nope. would do that. I and then, and then, cause, uh, fucking Helen is like, so then what happened? Did he get a vial of poison from his tooth? Is that like a rich person thing? This is, uh, it's times like that where you're like, please look. It's bad enough with Benoit, but can you just, <laughs> just stop. Can you shut up, please? Just but please also please. remember, we, remember, somebody is dead here. Uh, this guy yeah. was actually killed, so my, now might not be the you time to be making these type of quips and remarks. Yeah, you highlight that. And what is what is Benoit's response, considering what Fringe just said as well? He says, "No, it's much stupider than that." Can we, can we, like, be a little bit less, I guess, callous about, like, this... He was murdered. You know, this guy who's just being killed. Nobody cares about Duke. I mean, I guess you could say, uh, like, hey, again, fuck Duke, he was well, trying to use... I suppose, that it, yeah, exactly, he was trying to use this death to his advantage, so fuck But I don't him, believe right? that. <laughs> no, I don't either, actually. You know, so. <laughs> maybe I'm... Maybe I'm over exaggerating. You know what? Maybe Twitch streamers would say that's exactly what Twitch streamers would do in that scenario. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I mean, we, already, we already have that one, one little down. forest. That's what we call content brained. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> brained. Use a murder to his advantage to get more views. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, what happens next is he's like, well, I gotta kill Duke, and he pours pineapple into his drink and just gives it to him, Remember? and he drinks it and dies. It's as simple as that. Remember? He yeah. said pineapple, and he has no yeah. means of uh, saving himself, no. I don't know if there's, like, an EpiPen for pineapple you're, juice, I think but... you're skipping something, Fringy. Oh, God. You're skipping if oh, I you would taste that and instantly yes. spit it out. Spit it out, that's right. It's like, the this second is that you're right, you're right, yeah. It's your tongue, you'd go... <laughs> Are you the trying Duke to kill me? Yeah. Some pineapple. And I think all oh he God. All, and I think all he gives him is whiskey with pineapple juice. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. That so shit. For and those he, of he you not like that pineapple juice, it's, it's very fine. strongly tasty. Personally, yeah. I wouldn't take a drink from a guy that I just tried to blast. Exactly. Him. That's what I wanted <laughs> to bring up. What a fucking moron. <laughs> well, so I guess you wanted to you guys understand. He was smart enough to immediately leverage this information to beat Miles, and then he just accepts a drink from him. Imagine, oh, imagine he handed it to him, and he did yeah. smell it. And goes, and remember, did you just put pine? Mm. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? And he'd be like, uh. <laughs> I remember, this is this is ten seconds take this after gun. Miles took his gun. <laughs> exactly. He Wait a minute, gun. Miles. Did you take my gun? <laughs> 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 with my gun, dude. Oh my god, it sucks. It's so bad. This is what I mean. We haven't even gotten to the bit yet, chat. Not even gotten <laughs> oh to no. the bit. Oh, oh yeah, it gets better. This is what I mean. I feel like at this point it's already worse than the first Knives Out. 
Like it's. I think I believe. Oh, that. it's oh, yeah, right. it, it, it was there halfway through when we started far. doing the Abbey scene. So it's just. It's so bad. People think this is genius. How does he get That's, away is with it? Sad? <laughs> Isn't it sad? He can't, yeah. he can't go away with it. <laughs> it's really lame. So it's not fair. Yeah, so so I guess that that it's all out now. That's the series of events, and uh, yeah, they even have once everything's over and figured out. Fucking dumbass character goes, "Oh, you're Helen, the sister." Like she's just figured out the earlier twist when everyone mm -hmm. else is already figuring out all the later <clears throat> ones. Like, funny. Who did, you, who did you think she was before this? I don't. I don't. <laughs> While just... she was standing there that whole time. I mean, I kind of hate Birdie because not for any of her own faults. It's just Ryan's. Like, isn't it? Isn't it funny how stupid someone can be? And you're like, mm. yeah, man. Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> yeah. It can be. I'm not seeing it here, but it can be pretty funny. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Oh, uh, Benoit gets really fucking upset because he considers the attempt of murder um, on Andy again. Uh, was stolen from him as an idea where he said, you've got all these desperate people in the dark with a gun. And he's like, you stole my idea for a kill or whatever. And I was like, yeah, such a genius move, man. It's the dark and there's a gun. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love the idea that he's probably genuinely jealous of the fact that uh, yeah. that he, he did the... Th like, what the fuck is... Is that just an evidence of his <laughs> ego? I don't know. Also, <laughs> yeah. we got the... Sh I was hoping... <laughs> I was hoping we find the shot actually, but uh, we've got it now. So this is where he hid the gun or stashed the gun. Do that. Hang on, let me get it on the screen. Isn't that oh, amazing? Yeah. Right out in the open. You can't miss that. <laughs> There's a gun in the ice bucket. What the fuck? <laughs> Just keep it in your in the, in the back of your. This is where I mean, like we were being critical of hiding it in his back pocket or whatever. It's like, oh well, that was better than this. Like, what his is fingerprints. This? There's fingerprints on it. Mm, if someone would have found it, you can clean it. Yeah, happened. his fingerprints are on it, and then he puts gloves on. It's like what? too bad, dude. You already I, touched that I'm thing. Did he have those gloves nearby, or did he run up to his wardrobe? It's like fuck, gloves, gloves. All right, hit that. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking stupid. It's not fair. So, yeah, he's just upset about that. But um, we move on finally to uh, uh, Helen asking, or I think it's Lionel. Yeah, you didn't burn it. It's like, <laughs> the fuck? And there's just no answer for that. We move on. Um, yeah. So she yeah, says, like... you recognize this? And he's like, how can you prove it's the original? Which is a really great question. How can you yeah, prove is. this is the original? Because there's a lot of reasons why you can cast doubt on the idea that it's the original. And she says, well... And this was funny, by the way. She says, the bar closed down nine years ago. Remember, ten years ago is when it's happened. I think when she said that, I think the drinker immediately was like, oh, like, <laughs> <laughs> of course it did. And she says, and this has, like, the, the stamp of the glass onion bar on it. So you might expect me to be continuing, yeah. but that's it. Yeah, that's it. She's, this is Man. proof this is the original because it has the logo of Glass Onion on it as a napkin, which means you couldn't possibly have forged this afterward. Yeah, no way, especially not with billions of dollars. It's like, if you had a spare person. Glass Onion fucking napkin in your house from one of the times you visited, you couldn't, like, that just wouldn't happen. That's impossible. You couldn't just no. go on the internet and print those things out in mass. And like of course, business cards. we know that uh, he presented the quote-unquote real one later, and it doesn't have the Glass Onion logo on it. So it's like, oh, so was there any doubt then that it could have just been on a normal napkin? It could have been on a well, non- Well, because that's a big part. It's like, are you telling me that there's never been a night where at the glass onion, they're like, yeah, we're out of like, we're out of the yeah. fancy <laughs> Sign napkins, napkins. Us well, glass onions. People bring their own napkins sometimes. Ones. It's possible. People do. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know what? I think this isn't a very good argument. <laughs> it's what? not a very good yeah. argument at all. In the implication <laughs> is that there are no other napkins to verify this I'm against. Oh, I mean, this doesn't have it, it, any more credence than his napkin. No. And how can you check it if there are no other glass onion napkins? By exactly. what means do you have to cross-reference the way that they actually are supposed to look? And then as soon as how you, you have a reference, that? that means that you could have gotten it. And the, 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 there's plenty... Exactly. She could have forged exactly. this. There's so many... Yeah. You can never prove it. And besides, and what does this change when everyone yes. there on record said you didn't fucking write the original? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah, there was that big problem. And we're back Even to the fact that this, one. 
it should have never have come down to the napkin in the first place. No. No. <laughs> well, exactly. They were so smart that she so we need to sorry, we need to we need to dial back. <laughs> no, no, Frankie. She Just was she time. was so smart that she didn't Dice. make sure to read the contract that she signed to figure out if it enabled him to steal all of her like stock in the company, all of her uh all of her basically position in that company. And then when she found the real napkin that would f save everything, she was so smart that she didn't think that he was going to kill her. Like, her smartness is manifesting in bizarre ways. <laughs> His smartness is very say. detrimental to her existence. It's definitely it not coke to say your character's so smart that it got them killed. And also, and by the way, yet another, yet another movie where they need to tell you, the character's smart, see? Other characters said it, rather than the character being smart evidently yeah. through, like, the way that they behave and conduct themselves, you know? The way that you tend to write characters, mm. <laughs> typically in a good story. <laughs> But yeah, uh, we all know what happens next, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be tapping that. <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> oh boy. Um, chat, you're not ready for this. You're not. You're not. <laughs> you're it's not just ready for this. no. See, I think you're ready for it. But you're sorry, not. I, I, I'm. 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 It's gonna take a while. This is this is copyright protection, but it's also just to. It's think of it as slowly radiating them instead of blasting them with a nuke. We, we want to take them piece by piece. <laughs> it's not meant to be better, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Quick and painless some... versus long and torturous. But of course, well, so let's talk about the, the logistics here. It's funny because she was really far away from him the last time we saw them in terms of logistics. But we don't really know exactly where she is between cuts now. And one of the things, I mean, it's, it's evident that she is closer to him, I guess. But one of the things you really don't mm -hmm. want to do is let him get anywhere near... Uh, this evident. Remember, we're gonna take the the films on its on its word now. Everything everything that's happened, how bullshit all of this. No, we accept it. Buy it. Break. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, this napkin is everything. We got to be really <laughs> fucking careful with it. So, walking yeah. right up to him is probably not a great start. No, um, no. And yeah, so I mean, you want to be anywhere in the near room this wants guy? This napkin to disappear. Everybody, yeah. Well, you see, she was just too clever to be afraid of holding that napkin out in front of him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. And by the way, they pretty... even have a shot of Benoit like being like, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> but of course, the greatest yeah. detective in the yeah. world is simultaneously fine with putting the napkin right in front of the villain who <laughs> needs it to be destroyed. And he says, okay, but second, and look at this, I'm playing it nice and slow. Something's happening. What is that? What's going on there? Oh dear! <laughs> oh, oh! Pocket. It looks like the napkin is disintegrating before our very eyes. <laughs> oh, oh my no. god! No. What was that? Oh no! Oh, no. oh look at that! <laughs> he has oh, he no. has applied a stealth fire to this napkin. Yeah, unbeknownst well, to her. He got a he got a lighter, used a shadow step, and then just fucking burned it. Shadow step. <laughs> and uh, this is this is the kind of napkin that you put a fire on it for a split second and it's poof. It's a <laughs> poof. And even Benoit is like, oh no, 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 fire, yeah. no. And Miles is like, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Neo oh, looks like I win. This is. <laughs> Why does that everyone seem to believe that why does point that he makes? <laughs> why does I, everyone uh... seem to believe the napkin is the end all be all? Well, but that's the thing, right? If they do, this is they even funnier. That's... Yeah, <laughs> that's it's... what they think. Because we're all sitting here like the napkin it. didn't even fucking matter, but all these characters thought it did, and they didn't care about it at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, what a disaster. And it, it, I, it, seeing this, you're just like, you can't be... F uh, that's, that's actually a pretty funny Napton. image, you're right. natural predator. You can make a <laughs> thumbnail so out of that for with, sure. He's so happy with himself. <laughs> 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 the, the, guy. the napkin Sagan. was made of hydrogen. That's probably true. <laughs> <sighs> Look at him, he's so happy with himself. <laughs> yeah. You thought I was just going to grab it, but I did better. All this effort, uh, and we cocked it up. Yeah, right the end. yeah, he says, anywhere you go, it's your word against mine, and I think that's going to go the same way it did for Andy. Which yeah. they're, they're like, ooh. 
because obviously he's even referencing Ouch. as far as fucking suicide is the official story. So yeah, he's uh, he's won. He's doing his victory lap. Ha ha, I win. You guys got nothing. And um, I genuinely at this point was, because I was watching it with Metal the first time, and I was in my head like, well, how are they going to beat him now? I didn't even think they could beat him with a napkin, but how are they going to beat him? Like, <laughs> Yeah, especially how does the film you, reconcile this? What's the film going to do prepared? now? Yeah, chat, you're not prepared at all. You're Some people ready. in chat will know what <laughs> no. happens, but... Let's, uh, let's do it. to be prepared, but you're not. You, will, you, you can't. Will There's no amount of belts yeah. you can tighten and fasten. There's just nothing that's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah. yeah uh, she compels everybody there to say in court that he did all of the horrible things he's done. And she even mentioned stuff like, you saw him burn the napkin, you saw him give the drink to Duke, you saw him... Uh, you saw that I, or rather Andy, was the one that made the original... And they're all just like, mm. and then she goes, so, you'll lie for a lie, but you won't lie for the truth. <laughs> Which is That's really funny. That's saying. Tell me what you mean. It's so funny because when you don't know what the truth is, it's like, well, you mean I won't, it's a lie still. <laughs> That's what a lie is. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Yeah. If I am lying, what do you mean I'm lying for the truth? Like, if I lie and say I definitely saw that he killed Duke, that's a lie. Mm -hmm. That's not lying it's... for the truth. What do you mean? Look, Mahler, it's not about fighting what we hate. It's no, it's that kind of shit I hate because I'm just like, <laughs> oh, no. you know what Mahler. he was trying to get across. It, but it's, it's okay so funny. When we do it. Yeah, because I was going to get to that. I was like, this is there's a reason we're not supposed to lie in court. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, oh yeah. So whatever, fine. Yeah, she's really mad, and uh, we're, we're all, you know what? If the credits dropped here, I'd be okay with this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a shorter movie. It's a weird movie. Yeah. Uh, so a yeah, weird, she little unexpected ending. She begs Benoit to fix everything, and he says, "This is where my jurisdiction ends. I answer to the courts, the system. All I can do is offer courage and a reminder of why your sister walked away in the first place." Now, if you remember, she uh, split the company fifty-fifty to prevent him from being able to fund all of the clear stuff. That's what he might be referring to. He hands her a drink, meaning the courage, I guess. This is in reference to how she got drunk earlier in the film and was better at her job as a result. And uh, he hands her something else, but we don't see what it is. Um, uh. So, she starts destroying everything. And I, I mean, literally all of the sculptures, all of the items, pieces of art in the room, she just picks them up and throws them and they smash. It's pretty much as simple as that. Uh, mm -hmm. To the point where, like, it's kind of fun, like, Miles at first is just like, yeah, I, I mean, I can understand how you, you've lost basically everything, so you're just acting out like a little brat. Fine, I guess. Like, he's like, yeah, even just like, yeah, just go nuts, whatever, let it out. Well, my favorite part is when he smashes his own glass. <laughs> he's uh -huh. just like, whatever, I guess. <laughs> um, so then the weird part is that uh, Whiskey, Lionel, Claire, and uh, Birdie, they all start destroying stuff too? And they're like, mm -hmm. yeah! And it's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Um, it's well, yeah, the, I don't know what the film's going for, but it's like, all these people, they are involved they, in they this. They all lied to support they Miles for money. Exactly. Yeah. They threw uh, the woman who actually created everything and was effectively, seemingly, the means by which they all managed to accrue wealth. They threw her under the bus for bullshit, and now I'm meant to be here, like, haha, yeah, they're rebelling against this person who they've chosen to continue to be friends with yep. and taken with his money in order to advance their own ends. It's really cringe. two of these guys who were willing to, like, do man missions with an explosive, as far as they're concerned, like an explosive chemical, and then distributing that widely. And it's like, fuck these guys. They yeah, all I, suck. I literally don't understand <laughs> this scene. They're all, like, celebrating how they're destroying his stuff when, like, with, like, you know, Helen. Helen's doing it because her sister was killed by him after her whole fortune wrong. was stolen. Yeah, yeah like, and the, her new plan failed miserably because she's a moron. I can understand why she's doing this. Everyone else, like, yeah. you're all fucking monsters. What are you doing? Yeah, you're all involved <laughs> in this. I if I get it, it now, they, they smash! Hate him. So, um, yeah, she starts destroying more and more and more things, and she destroys the piano, and it's like, okay. And and you start you start feeling a little bit awkward, because it's like, you're, um, what is your goal right now? Like, you're kind of just destroying artwork. Uh, There's it's so like, much violence against musical instruments in this movie, and I don't like it. Not a fan. No. Um, but the thing is, 
you start to think you're like what it, what even in this? oh mm. oh no the mona yeah, lisa's in this room yeah, no yeah. and it feels like oh, we're destroying God. things and we're going up a ladder and one thing she does next is she sets fire to the bar <laughs> essentially that was in the center of the room and at this point, everyone else is, like, screaming and, like, oh, my God, what the fuck have you done? And even Miles is like, whoa. And this is such a moment in the movie. It's like, okay, you were destroying stuff, but now you've, like, put people in danger. What are you doing? Yeah. Yep. And they have yeah. this I fucking lame as hell. Shit. They have this lame as hell shot where the, the flames are going and you, you have everyone screaming. But she, by the way, it looked like she had alcohol on her, like, shoes when she lit it. It would just been funny if those <laughs> lit up and she's just like. <laughs> <laughs> ah, oh, shit, ah, shit. Oh, ah, fuck. Ah. Somebody help. Um, Life from my feet. But yeah, they 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 do this. They got they got this shot where she is rising from the flames. Whoa. She, remember the cringe. speech about disruptors? Keep that in mind. This is cringe, I guess. Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> because uh, especially coming in right at the moment where I'm like, I don't know about this, love. I'm not sure if I don't know about this. Like you're going a little bit too far now. Because, uh, like I said, putting people in danger is not a great look. Uh, well, because you're and also, angry. one of the, uh, I think the piano belonged to a famous um, musician or a famous artist created it. I can't remember who exactly. Um, I think it was Liberace yeah, something or something. Like that. I'd be careful yeah, to trust piano, it, though, because yeah, it it's, like it's it's Birdie that says it, so. Oh, right. True. Uh, <laughs> if you okay, remember, whatever. Ryan Reitzer is yeah. a moron, so I'd be careful to oh, trust well, it. Well, I mean, nevertheless, these were created by somebody and have now been destroyed. Yeah, that's what I'm appealing so. to, is that they're all artwork yeah. and you're just destroying them to lot. get back at Miles, question mark, which, to me, feels like the opposite of what most movies will try and go for as a, a strong message when they have writing. Like, I just want him what? to suffer at this point. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's... Oh. Uh, <laughs> a lot of movies it's will try really and take high. what is essentially the high road. This film is not interested in that. No, um, it's just like a temper tantrum. Billionaire's bad. If, do we got to? She's do? mad for a reason, but she's just like letting out her aggression. Like well, I said, I think she's crossing the line movie. hugely when it's just yeah. gone beyond even. It, did, it didn't even seem to be mattering to Miles at first, and she was just destroying it for the sake of fucking destroying artwork, but also yeah. endangering other people. It's where it's like, it's isn't this? Fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, especially. Um, Given by the sky. <clears throat> I'll still say you know, for people in chat, you're still probably like, how is this going to help her overall, though? She's just, is that the point? Is she's just going to destroy things he likes and then she feels she's won? Like, well, uh, I guess this continues. She's, um, she set the sprinkler system off. And Miles is like, all right, you got to seriously stop now. This is getting ridiculous. And it looks like she's, uh, he's kind of reaching a climax here. What's going to happen? And he says, you got to walk away. And she says, yes with a reminder of why my sister walked away in the first place. Mm. It's like, wait, what? And we flash back. Benoit handed her the stone the, uh, of clear, basically. The thing that there's no fucking way he should still have. That was given <laughs> to him. By the end. He still had it that whole time. It, he never got it taken back off him. Now, again, you might be thinking, well, what does that change? What does her having that do? Well... You got a treat for you. Like, look at this. It's just like, okay. I don't, I, like, there's a lot of significance on this. I think even me at this point, I was like, whoa. And then it zooms into, like, the heating systems, the cooling systems, and the fax machine. And you're like, okay. It's, it's, <laughs> funny, it's funny for someone to reference the this is not meth scene because you don't understand how suitable that is. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so um, she's throwing it. And everyone's looking, and they're all like, uh-oh. It starts up a big fire, and it all gets sucked into, I guess, the air conditioning of some sort. Ventilation and, then, and the smoke sucking. Uh, Claire says Hindenburg, which is what she referenced before. And uh, uh -huh. now I'm just going to go frame by frame. <clears throat> oh, God. <laughs> oh. Here we go. And... Um. Here we go! Yeah. I want you to keep an eye Why? on how... <laughs> so <Guys>. big! <laughs> yeah, look at where the other Guys. fires come from. Guys. <laughs> <They're all laughs> it travels dead. through the pipes or something, I don't know. Okay. Oh, yeah, look, there's other dead. explosions off on the side, like a chain reaction. <laughs> the fucking toast, mate. Look at that explosion. <laughs> <laughs> look at the other explosions oh, that are Everyone's dead. It's a place. happy ending. The this entire is, area is dead. This, this, for, yeah, for, for when I first saw this film, I, I was what the fucking several times over. I couldn't believe what I was seeing.
Like, I, what is this? I don't know who's the good guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Boom. Oh, but viewer, it gets even worse. I was going to say, it's it not even does. over. It actually <laughs> does. It's not over. Uh, <laughs> this, uh, yeah. And so Benoit Blanc is just watching happily. And he just says, disruption. <laughs> <laughs> You're all dead. Oh, by the way, he's he's chilling <laughs> with the rando so... from the beginning of the movie. I genuinely uh, I think, think he's out here rather than just yeah. In, I actually have a feeling that's what's happening it. here for writing is that it's like, see, Benoit rescued that guy to make sure he wouldn't have been hurt. It is like uh, oh, <laughs> from his room. Okay, or okay. From... you know what? That's that's really concerning about what it means. Exactly. <laughs> that <laughs> yes. means that means <laughs> Benoit knows what was going to happen, which we already know he was. Look like how he... is about this. Well, yeah, that would essentially means that he needs to, uh, I get how to phrase it, dangerous enough to consider it a rescue. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so we see but the room, as you can see that. here, it is annihilated, but everyone's okay. There's fire, rubble, and destruction <laughs> everywhere. His fucking His car breaks everywhere. through the ceiling and crashes into the center of the room. He, you, it's going where he's going. Remember yeah. how I said that earlier? It's really clever and brilliant. So good. Um, Great. So yeah, to make it clear, major criticism is that uh, Helen has been annihilated. She tried to kill everyone and herself. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah. I don't there understand. No and and there was fucking no reason for her to assume that Benoit, it would not happen. Benoit's the one that put that in her head, and it matches all the shit that he said earlier, and I don't know if this was intentional, where he says, like, <laughs> I can't operate outside of the courts. You're gonna have to do the fucking part where you <laughs> kill can't. everyone. Of course. I don't want to lose Kevin Allen. Allen. I can't operate outside of the courts, but you, a citizen who lives in a country <laughs> with war, you can do it. <laughs> you <laughs> can do it. <laughs> I don't understand. What the fuck? I don't. Did she Dude, actually? She what was her intention? Can someone make like? Can someone actually argue what, what her definitive she... intention was, with supported by references? Uh... She had to have known that that could have killed all of them, and in yes. fact, it should have. Look at those explosions! Look at that shit! Think about the debris, the shock waves, the heat! Like, like come on! Sh having glass showered on top of you can yeah, kill you too. Yeah. This I know that this is a movie, but in real life, glass is sharp. Very like sure. is full Dude, on you. Look at those flamethrowers that go towards the Mona Lisa. Oh, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Oh, yeah. just, <laughs> oh, just a showed up in the, in the in thingy, though. A room that's almost entirely on fire would suck almost all the oxygen out of the room, too. <laughs> yep. Uh, no, there's no, there's no, no smoke. smoke. Either, where's all the smoke? No smoke no either. Smart. It's a great little, little sequence. that. Uh, yeah, so it's just nothing mm. makes any sense anymore, and Ben was a balls up character too. It was already bad enough that he was so stupid, but he signed off on killing everybody because they couldn't solve the fucking case. That is the <laughs> worst result for a detective in anything ever. When they go, I can't figure this out, I'm gonna kill you all. Talk about a sore loser. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But uh, seriously, you know, like, you though. Have, you, have to do it. you have investigative stories where they sometimes, like, there are plenty of episodes of Law and Order, right, where they don't succeed. Yes. Oh, like, yeah. Just, that, that's the consequence. You, you failed. It didn't work. Maybe you did everything right and it didn't work. It's just that's that's how that's how it goes. Yeah, and you have and to find a way to kill everybody, with right? That. Yeah, you just kill everybody. Yeah. And, oh, and, yeah, and the right. film yeah, fucking backs that. The... <laughs> As though you know what? If you can't beat the bad guy within the system, you should just fucking lop their head off. Enough. Yeah, and and, and way to pin it on a black woman, by the way. It's like, come on. She blew it all up. Well, it's 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 a really weird choice in general because she's sold as a very good person throughout this film, but she does the most monstrous act in all of it. But the, <laughs> the others came close, right? Acknowledge by acknowledging the man <laughs> mission, by securing clear, but she deliberately tried to blow everyone up. <laughs> I, I, yeah, like I, it's, but I think the film almost believes, like, well, no, she didn't try and blow him up. She just blew up all of the property, and it's like, but they are inside in the property. The <laughs> A lot of them are injured. <laughs> Plenty of them are injured. That they, they've got cosmetic, you know, scars. Nothing too bad, but like, that's that's because you wrote the story to bend the laws of physics, <laughs> like to, to to accommodate the story you want, and it's going to get worse. Yeah, I suppose yeah. it's time to move on. So, as was mentioned by Metal, there are flamethrowers piling into the Mona Lisa <laughs> right now for some fucking reason. That's just the way it's working. But of course, it's protected. By the glass, and it's not going to go down anytime really? soon, unless 
someone was depressed. To put the world's most famous painting. Yes, yeah, such an unfortunate, <laughs> unfortunate reality. God. Sorry, I'll put it on screen so you can see it better. There are just flamethrowers piling into it. Um, but yeah, you need to press the override and you kill the Mona Lisa now. That's just how it works. So Which, uh, That is her objective right now, is to destroy the Mona Lisa. <laughs> Which genuinely and at this point in the film so is confusing. Uh, I thought she was yeah. going to try and save it. I really did. She just blew up this room full of people. And then she gets up after all of that as like, you, you're next, Mona Lisa. I'm gonna get you. <laughs> I'm gonna get like, you. Fuck you for ruining my life, Mona Lisa. Like, I'm gonna get my revenge with on you. Intent towards the Mona Lisa. <laughs> well, to get it set on fire. Something that's curious it. is it looks like all the other characters don't like want it to stop, mm. which makes sense. I don't want her to do that. Well, of course like, it makes sense. It's the Mona Lisa. Yeah, like what? <laughs> like there's no. Why <laughs> would you run. destroy the Mona Lisa? <laughs> like what? <laughs> And be yeah, all of it the takes to make a well, rich guy cry. But isn't it funny though that they, the two of them, can't stop her because there's an explosion near them and it knocks them yeah. to the ground? Like, oh god, what have Is you that done? Kind of like that all run, of that too. glass and fire. Hope they don't get serious injuries from that. Oh, but he's barefoot among all that glass. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, I saw exactly. Die Hard. But Ethan we can, we that, can all calm system. down because ultimately she ain't yeah. gonna get anywhere. This is Edward Norton is gonna run her off the trail because he's he's actually about yeah. to connect with her pretty hard and he's a he's a guy he's gonna grab. slam right into it. You don't even mm. need to actually like grip her. You can just fucking bash her. Like um, yeah. it's over. And you know the direction he's coming from. This is gonna be pretty easy too. It's like lined up perfectly. So here we go, chat. I hope you're paying attention here. All right. So he's got it. You can see from here he's just gonna fucking annihilate her. Clearly She's he's done. a big guy. He's a yeah. Yeah, he's, he's so much rep, taller no than problem, him, right? Man, oh, he's so lucky. Consider what he's, he's football so it's done. Right here. Man, I'm so I'm so lucky he got her, man. Not, it's not I mean, a great, not a great grab here of all the options he had, no. but he's opted for this, and that's fine. It's gonna work. All you need to do is oh, just yeah, uh, thank God. close down on them tendons. Make sure that oh, yeah. that's not a good oh, grip man. either. It's just oh, yeah, that's... your fingers close oh, them. No, no, curl you, your you're fingers. Not, you're not doing anything. Miles, Miles, what are you doing? Miles, no, Miles, Miles. Oh, oh, no. So oh, no. I want everyone to understand the reality fingers? here. This this is Colossal the hero the tried to rescue the Mona Lisa and failed. That's what happened. Yep. <laughs> he every every person, it's like Colossus said, they have like four or five moments and he failed. Yeah. <laughs> from going up to press the button. What like what why would you write this? I don't, I don't... Well, yeah. So this, this is it. This is yeah, look, this is glass is. onion. And I know that loads of people never even thought to consume this fucking story, but they have through EFAB. And yes, this everything we've told you is true. This is what happens. The Mona yeah. Lisa is incinerated. Look. Gets look. burned to a pile oh of ash. We can just sit on that image, I suppose. Yeah. We, we we often talk about like the just the inconsistencies, but like the emotional impact of watching the hero of the story desperate to burn the Mona Lisa for the only reason of annoying someone. Yeah, really like, fucking uh, weird. Yeah, I don't know, Chief. Maybe don't put this in your film, <laughs> or have the villain do it as like the inciting yeah. incident for world outrage. Yeah, really. So I think How it's worth. Just, <sighs> You're, you're destroying Within the Mona seconds, Lisa. you turn the hero of your story into the ultimate villain. There is an additional reason she does this. We're not going to bring it up yet because it destroys the no, film again. No, not yet. Because we can, <laughs> we can just on this image of going up there to destroy oh, one of, like I don't even know why I keep saying one of the most well-known pieces of art like ever. Something that is mm. meaningful yeah, like, to many, 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 many people around the world it, and you destroyed it. it. It's, it's yeah, because art itself. It doesn't even belong to him. It belongs to France, and <laughs> broadly, it belongs to the world. I know that, yeah, in a way, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and you burnt it, and you did this, and you did, and this right after trying to blow up all the people in this room. <laughs> so yeah, it's like, well, you finish there. It's like that wasn't that wasn't enough. No, like, it was seriously, safe. consuming it this as a story, safe. it's baffling. You just like why? It's why? It's baffling. Why? Why would you do this? What what is what is the way that I'm meant to read this? That it's hilarious um, if someone was to destroy to the Mona Lisa hilarious. by fire. It's meant to be like, I don't know. I this is what I mean. I don't know what I'm supposed it's to triumphant. Make of that. Like she's good. Good on you for willing to to be willing to do that. 
Nah, he fucking... destroys something that doesn't belong to him, belongs to the world, ultimately, and why. I we find from... out why. Yeah, kind of. well, we're gonna instant. move on soon enough. I just like, can you can you consider as well from a meta standpoint? It's like all those fuckers who think I killed Star Wars, I'm gonna kill the Mona Lisa. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna kill. Oh, they say I destroy well, so what, art. What do, do they? Because because the thing is, is that later we'll have to talk about the argument in favor of this from yes. the story's perspective. Um, it's not yeah. good. No, it's not. Um, <laughs> man, this image though, isn't it just like oof. There's a reason this yeah. is our thumbnail. It makes me uncomfortable. Pretty... <laughs> it's yeah, I don't like it. Yeah, it's I, an uncomfortable I got, image. I, I really don't like mad. looking at it. And it would be really lame if someone's like, it's just it's just a painting or like it's just a piece of property. It's like, I don't know, man. Oh, I know really it's not real. Thanks. <laughs> it can be replaced. <laughs> oh, wait. No, it can't. <laughs> it is real, talking, talking in the context of the story itself, if someone's like, yeah, but it's property, it's like, well... It's not yours, for starters. But even then, I thought we all agreed that, like, art... What are we watching here? This is meant to be art, right? This is a movie. What you if know? she went out and just, like, like tore... Like, went out and did a big book burning? Like, what then? It's just... I don't know, man. Like, am I... Why would I believe that you're the hero for going out of your way to destroy a painting? You didn't have to do it. Just you didn't to... have to do everything that you did up until this point. But then you woke up after blowing up this room full of people... And looked at the Mona Lisa and decided, I'm not done yet. I just don't understand. <laughs> what am I meant to make of her? But look how funny it is. Look at his reaction. What a loser. Yeah. I mean, oh yeah. What, oh, what a loser. <laughs> Even though no, he's this crying. Happened, no, what he's happened when the, when no, the Notre Dame? I just feel sympathy Dame, for him. I mean... Like, we're, People cried when the Notre Dame. That's how like, I exactly. He, he gave us his explanation for how it made him feel. And the inspiration he got from it, and how much care he wants to consider it with. Yes, there's a selfish element of like, I want to be remembered alongside it, but like, this means everything to him. And it's like, you, mm -hmm. ha, ha, I made you feel bad now. You're like, not only to him, okay. but many, many, many people who aren't in this room who um, well, the point of out. The point of highlighting him is that we don't even need to bring them in. I almost feel bad just for the fact that this man here is experiencing trauma from the fact that you destroyed the Mona Lisa. Why is this like a good mm -hmm. thing? It's like, well, he's a bastard. He killed other people. It's like, okay, but like, punish that's, him for that. Why, why are you destroying the Mona Lisa? Up? What is why this? Why is there nothing in exactly. the entire world? <laughs> She didn't yeah. do anything to you. She didn't do anything. Leonardo da Vinci certainly didn't do anything to you. No, definitely um, not. France, I don't know what France like did to you either, Vinci but like, you know what? grade class or whatever the hell it was. I, I guess. I mean, like, come on. It what feels like when... Here? Well, like, we know what the point is. I, I know. The, the, like, if I murdered someone and instead of putting me in jail or whatever, you kill my mother, I'd just be like, what? Well, why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they'd be like, yeah, but you're pretty upset now, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> I guess it, I guess Get wrecked, it, idiot. It, it'd be like if you, if you uh, there was just some guy walking by and you punched him in the face, just like, damn, that's what you get. And then he's just there rolling on the ground like, oh, why are you, I was just walking here. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> so, why did she do it? Oh, uh, I'm sure it's make all the sense. Uh, why? Damn, he just man. said, you've accomplished nothing. And she said, your fuel of the future just barbecued the Mona Lisa, the world's most famous painting, you dumbass. Well, mm, oh, you did that. It didn't you have did a will of its own. Opening <laughs> up the case. Uh, and then she says, congratulations on the public launch of Clear and the end of Miles Braun. And he is stunned into silence. Whereas what he would actually say is, it's, there's a lot of physical not the evidence. End Miles Brown. He'll go yes. down in history. Also, yeah, she, you're ruined, and you got what you you got your wish. You'll be remembered in the same breath as the Mona Lisa forever. I actually want to summarize more of this scene because then we can just pick it to fucking death because it's a horrible yes. scene. Ah, um, uh, yes. So yeah, uh, she walks off happy. She's done everything she wants. And so he's like, all right, everyone, let's get our story straight. She did all this bullshit. No, this is, we, we're not letting this happen. We're going to we're gonna beat her up. We're going to annihilate her. Right, gang? We all saw the same thing. We know what happened. Am I right? And they, one by one, decide, you know what? We're going to say what we need to say. We're going to lie to bring down Miles. We are switching teams. Christ. Uh, so yeah, I'll pause, I'll pause there and we can talk about that. Man, so where, where all, to no where to start? Jesus Christ! Yeah, well, first of first all, we can of, start with them yeah. just going what? Because all their eardrums are blown out from the explosion. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. it's like, I, I guess they're not hear you. Sure about the fact that she tried to kill them all. 
She yeah, tried so to kill them all. Pissed about that yeah, the big all? thing to take away is that they've had their change of heart after she tried to kill them all. Yep. And then burned down a priceless artifact that we will never get but back. They tried to yep. stop her from burning down. Mm -hmm. Which I would hope that even if they don't care about that painting, they would understand how much it means it to did. people around the world. I feel like the film and just normal, you know, human nature tells you that if anything, they would be further to Miles' side than hers. But no, yeah. they're apparently now switching. Why? Yeah. Especially considering right. that mm. switching their side means admitting that you lied under oath, so you're going to jail. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, this, and you're so this, the thing is, normally, for me, I would have expected story. you to throw that in as a just knowledge of how things work and that you were. Throw, but it's like it's mentioned in the film. Uh, Benoit has already said they committed perjury, and he's talking about the fact exactly. that he knows yep. they're lying. They are now going to admit they were lying. They will have yes. to deal with the consequences of having committed perjury. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And also, <laughs> by the way, all of you guys, you are all committing to going down with him too. He'll bring you all down with him, and you'll all mm -hmm. be remembered oh, yeah. as being responsible for the destruction of the painting, which that'll follow you forever. So yeah, uh, doesn't make any forever. sense, wouldn't happen, For's not long. happening. In fact, I almost don't believe it would have happened post this scene. They're all just they're all just delirious right now. I, yeah. Yeah. They're like, well, that was insane, guys. She tried to kill us and then destroy the Mona Lisa. <laughs> I'm not gonna be on her side. I can't believe I had to say that sentence. Mm. So then, and you really think these gaggle of douchebags are not going to squeal on each other the moment they're interrogated? I honestly, dude, I yeah. don't know that their fucking testimony would matter compared to like. So he's got no way of proving any of this um, because there's no cameras, but he does have fingerprints that are everywhere. Yeah. Oh even yes. Even when a building burns down, there is physical oh, evidence of the investigators. With a button, there's the big thing is that her fingerprints will just be on the button, and even if yep. they're not, there would be other information that would be available to them, like. Pe people are people are pretty clever. You'd be surprised by how clever people can be. Oh yeah, and how many things you can figure out if you get the right people with the right amount of knowledge. Be like, so something went into the ventilation system of this place from a fire that originated here around all of this shattered glass and destroyed stuff. Yeah. Also, and there's this weird substance in there that we don't really know yeah. what that is. Like, oh, what's going on with this? That's it weird. Must have been a spark, <laughs> right? Because this substance would have been flowing through all of this all day. So there must have been some sort of conduit for that. Oh, mm -hmm. somebody threw like a substance into a fire and then caused an explosion. Yeah. Also, oh. hey, that that wood in this bar looks kind of weird. Did that someone smash that before and then, that happened? And What's then, going on way, here? All he needs is for one of them to roll. He doesn't need all of them. Exactly. Like, and as soon as you do that, yeah, yeah. Like, at least one of them is gonna. Well, what I'm suggesting yeah. is, as soon as one of them does, they're all fucked because, like, it's just. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're all gonna Set keep off. a lying. Like, how are they gonna maintain a lying story about whatever happened in there? What, like, are they gonna say I Miles did it all? Know. What is the motive? I guess the insurance. Yeah, this is. Oh, that's the other thing. Miles mentioned he has all of this. In, all of it's insured. He's gonna be fucking trillionaire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A malicious well, act by yeah, absolutely. Well, your insurance company didn't know about the clear or whatever, so you're not protected. The thing about that um, is, um, I, I'd be curious how it all works yeah. when the person who did it, you know, like, um, what, 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 if the insurance doesn't protect against clear would be a strange thing because it's just an explosive at that point, right? Well, would, mm -hmm. well, the reality would be that it would, like, oh, you did it, so you're responsible for this. And all the damage that followed from it. Yeah, like, in which case, it's like we should probably mention uh, Helen is going to jail for the rest of her life. Oh yeah, he's <laughs> she destroyed the world the will never forgive her. No, she destroyed the Mona Lisa. Dude, for, there'll, like, be, pe there'll be people who want to kill her. There's going to be people was, who yeah, want to hunt her down and kill her. <laughs> yeah. She might. Well, yeah. pro she will probably be killed. Yeah. Yeah. Way to go, Ben Benny. I'm I'm glad you pinned that all on her. Yeah. That's um, something that mention. This is beyond the what eight counts of attempted. <laughs> like, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> This, uh, yeah, because we should just address the major thing then, because she's under the impression that the news story will be the reality of Clear is that it explodes, and in that disaster having happened, the launch of Clear, it detonated and destroyed the Mona Lisa. Now, yeah, you know what? That could be thrown out by some pathetic hack of a fucking reporter doing that, because someone's going to be like, how'd that happen then? It's like, oh, well... You know, someone someone threw clear into a fire and it blew up the whole room, and then they removed the security from the Mona Lisa, so the flames ate it up. It's like, I'm sorry, who did that? Uh, <laughs> Helen Brand. <laughs> Helen Brand did that. It'd be in the schematic, surely, of like, oh, there was a mechanism to guard the Mona Lisa that activates when things like this happen. So, did it fail? It's like, well, if we look, no, it doesn't look like it failed. So, someone yeah, pressed. That. I'm just like, we don't oh, need God. to do a like. Oh, I wonder what may have happened in that. It's like, no, 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 no. 
the seven of us now remove this fucking movie from your memory and we find out the Mona Lisa is destroyed. We'd all be like, what the fuck? How did that happen? Oh, the fuck and you find out happen? there's this new energy source called Clear. It exploded and destroyed it. It was a horrific, horrible thing that happened. We'd be like, more information, please? What happened? And they'd be like, what do you <laughs> yeah. mean? What do you mean what happened? You know, the Clear did it. Clear's responsible and the guy who runs it is called, you know, John Smith. We all hate him now. It's like, no, what happened? What, what happened? happened? <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll be like, well, there was a woman who tossed well, it into a fire all, and removed the security. <laughs> and then we can be like, who the fuck is this woman? And you go, well, her name is, uh, her name is Helen Brown. You're like, right, where does she live? <laughs> like, where I don't, I don't <laughs> what's that even earlier? It's like, well, first of all, France needed a bit of money. Uh, it doesn't. Forgets we're running short, so we. I don't think just they understand. <laughs> like the history books are not going to remember Miles as having destroyed the Mona Lisa with his project clear. They're going to remember this horrible witch lady that <laughs> tried to assassinate the Mona Lisa for some reason. <laughs> yeah. A gas leak at the Louvre or something. If there was somehow a gas leak and then it got ignited and then it blew everything up, people wouldn't be like, "Ah, natural gas." Fucking yeah. We hate you, natural it. gas. <laughs> Dude, that would go as far as like, who the fuck made those pipes? <laughs> More, just like, who, who, was meant to, who was meant to oversee, like, and do maintenance and all of that? Like, that's... <clears throat> the, the scenario that has been concocted here is absurd. Like, they're gonna... Like, give people some credit. They can figure out some real crazy things with forensics and science. And just using your brain to, like, talk to people and then piece together their stories. Give them a little bit of credit. Yeah. I know that your investigator is an idiot, but, like, there are investigators <laughs> out there who are incredibly intelligent. And this is the Mona Lisa, man. You know how many eyeballs are going to be on this? Like, how many people are going to be involved in this investigation? Oh, a lot. <laughs> it's the Mona Lisa. I feel like we've said that, like, 50 million times By the at way, this point. But what, one of them is, I saw him driving away from Andy's house the night she was killed. That's this Lytle say That's like, that is a straight-up lie. It's impossible to have taken place with the information you've already given. Yeah. Oh, exactly. but by the way, do, do, doesn't she also get something for, I don't know, burning Duke's body or something? Well, I, was something... Say, no, I was about to say, nobody cares that Duke nobody, is in there. Yeah. All of his yeah. Yeah. Is oh, dude, I, are in there. I wouldn't even know where to begin to stack. I'd need to talk to someone to figure out all the crimes <laughs> she's committed. <laughs> it's a bunch. Um, I, don't, I don't even... There's got to be, be some law degree guy here in the chat. You, you've, got a, you've got some homework ahead of you, my friend. Oh. The list. The list of things, the list of crimes she's committed, like, <laughs> it's, staggering. it's staggering. And like, yeah. what, what was it all in aid of? of? Like, well, the rich guy feels bad mm. now, doesn't he? Yeah, it was right. worth it. You know what? I'd say a lot of people are going to feel bad when they find out that the Mona Lisa <sighs> has been destroyed. Mm -hmm. This is the Miles Braun is not going to be the focus of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's going to be a certain lady. Yep. But yeah, even, if, like, even if even if everyone Miles got good lawyers too, even if uh, everyone yeah. bought the story that really this was all his fault, it's like, well, we destroyed the Mona Lisa in the process just to blame it on him. Like that's that's revenge, I guess. Yeah. He didn't yeah. have to destroy it. Yeah, you. Did. Oh man. What's to be made of all these people? Like, am I meant to be like, ah, good on you guys? Because like, it's not. You had opportunities. No could have done the right thing and this was the worst time to do what you believe is the right thing to protect <laughs> just who tried to kill all of you for starters uh including people who had absolutely nothing to do with cutting the sister out from the company like what a whiskey have to do with any of that no what that's did, the thing uh, whiskey feels disconnected from all of this yeah what about the assistant too she wasn't involved in that yeah peg and she's, you tried yeah as well you could have killed this guy you didn't know that the guy that benoit whatever his name is hanging out with was okay you don't even know if there were actually, like, people who work in this building, you know? Like, he said that no one else was there, but what if there was, like, just some little janitor guy who's just like, I'm the janitor, I'm just around to clean up, you know? Yeah. Around that. You blow him up. There's, a lot of people um, have been saying, I think it was in a super chat and a couple people in chat saying, like, why didn't they incorporate him playing with his lighter and then the gaseous nature of the... You know, you make it so that his own creation destroys his exactly. own obsession with the Mona Lisa. Isn't that the way you do this? Yeah. Instead of having, this is how we all kind of set it up anyway. Because like, oh, look how bad this is, and how fucked up, and anything. And, and like, then it, someone it can make during him the... too, his hubris destroyed the one thing he loved more in the world than anything. Yeah, this seems like the fucking yeah, obvious yeah, way to do it. His mistake. But That's we make this wrong. fucking meth dream at the end, where it's like, ha, <laughs> now the now the rich guy is angry. It's like, what the fuck are you? Why? Why? 
guess I'm just what, I'm to, what I'm meant to take from this? Oh, you can fuck shit up if you want to. If it makes someone bad you don't like. It's like, what? <laughs> what, what, what am I to, right. supposed to take from this? What? Just what throw is, a hissy fit. Yeah, what is basically. the actual steel man in terms of like the moral framework here? You've been wronged by somebody, therefore you can destroy something that isn't theirs. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can't, you can't spin like, this. It's impossible. No, it's the Mona Lisa. It's the fucking Mona Lisa. <laughs> Why didn't you make it like... No, you know... Well, no, because the actual argument applies like like even if it was some like little... Imagine if it was, you know, just like a little stick figure. It's like, oh yeah, my son drew that and then you destroyed it. That would still also be like, wow, you'd have to go and do that. Yeah. You know, then she gets this fucking guys. walk off, just like, yeah, I saved the Well, yeah, the day. I was gonna say, like, the story no, isn't quite off. over, we've got like two seconds left, basically. The police are arriving, so Benoit and uh, <laughs> Helen are arrested. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I hope so. If fucking not hope so, yeah. Glass, yeah. No one's leaving here anytime soon. Yeah, they're still on the island, right? There's no way off, so they're still there. <clears throat> and they said the police would arrive by 6am, and it looks like, I guess this would make some sense that they're coming in now. Dude, just imagine them uh, them them starting to arrive and all they see is a big ass explosion. It's like, what the fuck is happening on that island? Yeah, and you have them all rushing out and like, what 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 do we? Can you imagine all the stories? This is the kind of thing the police need body cams to record everything everyone says. But Miles is gonna be like, hey, that one officer arrested. She blew everything up. She fucking nearly killed all of us. And what are you gonna have? Like the shithead people running out going, no, actually Miles did it. Uh, uh, Miles was the one that did my. I saw Miles kill the the. the, I, the See that they're just sitting there all chill. It's like you're chill after an explosion. Do you know how suspicious that looks? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just, By the way, this film is not over. I, Having the police arrive and then we hit credits. You like? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Dude. By the time knives out three, I'm meant to believe. Ah, yeah, Miles Braun, the world renowned <laughs> destroyer of the Mona Lisa. <laughs> they're gonna mention that. They're gonna mention. They'll mention it. it yeah. One. You're absolutely. You're damn right. They'll make it canon that Miles Braun is hated. Yeah, yeah. In his jail cell or something. Oh my god. <laughs> he's, yeah, they'll they'll make sure to tell us he's lost everything. He's on the streets, but is escaping the police, and then he got captured and thrown into jail for ten yeah. life sentences. Also, can we can we talk about the random guy, the the fucking stoner guy that just hangs out and gets drunk or whatever? What do you want to say what about? The... I don't know. It's just <laughs> he just. He seems to be friendly with Myatt, because it's like, oh yeah, he hangs out here, he has to have a face or something. And then just happily watches the whole thing explode and doesn't even give a oh, shit. Like, who right, the yeah. fuck yeah. are you? Yeah, dude, He's there goes my home, man, that's guy. cool. Not even funny. Who the fuck are you? He would be like, holy shit, what happened here? No, 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 no. Normal people, normal people see an enormous explosion when they know that the place is populated and they rest. They go, ah. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what normal people do. It happens, it happens, man. He's got to be. He's got to be a. He's got to be a witness. Some sort. Of, oh, what did you say? It's like, oh no, this guy came to my room. It's like, oh, this is gonna explode everyone. We better should get out and watch the explosions from the outside and have a beer and a cigar. Bro, this is my home, dude. What are you talking about? Like, I, <laughs> I legit am baffled by this film because it's like we'll never get justice for uh, Andy's murder. That's not like gonna happen. That case is just exactly. done. There's no evidence oh, yeah, for it. GG. Yeah. Like, yeah, but what, I don't she's not in the film. What a bold oh. fucking choice where you just have that be the case. It's like, oh well. And it's yeah. not like it's intentional. It doesn't come across like the film is saying sometimes you don't get the bad guy, sometimes they get away with something. It just seems like we f sort of gave up. <laughs> like, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So think, just, about like, think about the other one. No, they got the now, revenge. Uh, yeah, no, right, one so of the, like, the last shot of the movie is absolute fucking genius. She's just like the Mona Lisa. You Fuck see? off! You don't have the right. I wish she was oh, into a crisp. Don't even <laughs> into a crisp. Yeah, some <laughs> some jets jets of fire just come out of the beach floor. <laughs> yeah, it's such the a like after everything. Even angry after everything you threw at us, you throw this. Like really, thanks. Yeah, thank you so much. I just destroyed this 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 valuable piece of art, and I'm gonna post like it is and do the last frame. As I say, what? Wh why? Why? You just showed me that you legit. You don't give a shit that you just did that. So why what, even? Why are we doing this? What does what does it mean, Fringy? What does it mean? I don't understand. What it is? So you guys don't understand. The point is that she really just because remember how you don't destroy like nobody actually wanted her to destroy the Mona Lisa, and she did it. Oh, That's good pretty, job. There's that. Disrupt. There's a disruption. There's another thing as well. And if you go back to what Miles said of why he found the Mona Lisa so inspiring or interesting, is that the way that it's 
built, all the brush strokes and stuff, every time you look at it, you might be able to interpret something else. Is she happy? Is she sad? Mm -hmm. Is she satisfied? I think the point of that is Ryan's asking his audience, how do you think she feels about this ending? And it's like, she's satisfied. She just said, I got the yeah. like I got the son of a bitch. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? She's a bad person. <laughs> it's pretty straightforward. It's not yeah, even the bitch. question. I, just, to, I, mean, I find it funny. Like, she's like, what is truly uh, going on in Helen's head? It's like she's an asshole. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. goes to jail for a long time. I'm, Ever. I'm trying Actually. to think about the sort of morality of what happens here <sighs> at the end, and I was thinking about it, and it's like, okay. You have a you have mm -hmm. a loved one who gets killed by someone who tries to rob them and they accidentally kill your parent, let's say. And then you try to, you know, get them arrested and charged for the murder, but it doesn't work, right? You don't have the evidence, right? So then you go blow up an art museum and frame them for it. And it's like and it works. Then you have like blow oh. up an orphanage or something. <laughs> like a normal person. Well, I mean that's Rags is right. We can we can oh, have plenty of orphanages and orphans. Piece. We can't have plenty of Mona Lisa's. Yeah, you can always get more orphans. Yeah, that's easy. Our Diamond problem doesn't... isn't that we have not enough orphans. They're everywhere. Mona Lisa's are not running around everywhere. <laughs> what? <laughs> you see, God well, damn. I couldn't get justice the normal way, so I did something horrible and then framed them for it. So Exactly. It's... <laughs> that makes it all right. And for some reason, the others went along with it. I don't know. It just worked. And that's... Fuck me. That's the movie people are saying you can't understand. It's it's too intelligent for you. <laughs> yeah. If that makes you feel better, fine. <laughs> so okay. I, mean, I, I, I do believe I dropped all understand. of my RQ points watching it, so maybe they it's, have a point now. Mm. It's so unfair that this, this gets to get away with it. There's lots of the films that got away with it, but this <laughs> one... I like that in chat just now. That's it? That? That's the one. <laughs> That's it. That is this it. is indeed the movie everyone's gushing over. I saw yep. it, not even necessarily, I wasn't even really looking to watch it. Me and Mel threw it on, because we were having some food, and I was like, well, we can watch yeah. this. And like, wow. No, well finished it. And then I was like, I need to inflict this on Rags and Fringy. And boy, did he. <laughs> Which I, meant I, I had to watch it three it. times. And you watched oh, it man. four times now, I think? I did, yeah. I, I watched I don't know it how today to get all the notes in place, and it was You're not weird. fun. Some, there's something actually wrong with you. Hey. This is what... This is what happens when I go visit my friend. Here, let's watch this awful movie <laughs> three times. Red, yes. We <laughs> also watched IT Crowd, and that was great. That was great, yeah. IT Crowd was awesome. Jason Boots, The Lost Wish, and I thought it was pretty solid. And oh, I yeah. That, and I would have, well, I would, like, that's a film that I would have preferred to spend some time talking about. But now <laughs> we, we talked about this film instead, and hopefully never again. <laughs> there will be another one, and it will be some more bullshit. I cannot you know, we'll say. I, I would like this to be remembered. It can't be that the third one is worse than Glass Onion. It's not possible. It they're running be, out of right? Are they running out of art mm. to destroy? Right. It can't be <laughs> Just, right. I think at this the, point, they would know. have to have the main characters butcher uh. an entire orphanage, like one by one, and still try to frame them as the good guys. What I think that's how you do it. Make it worse. <laughs> yeah. And then the movie ends with the Glass Man. Onion, of course, playing in the credits. One of the worst <clears throat> Beatles songs. So <laughs> I feel like um, it's it's very overrated. Oh, there you go. You That's the best frame, I think. I've got it. There you go. It's an explanation. Anyway. Ah, yes. Um, you know the place where nothing's. So right. yeah, if they announce that Knives Out <laughs> Three is going to have time travel, then I'm immediately going to be like, "Fuck!" <laughs> <We win this. laughs> he already did that, though. He did the time travel where, in the future, you can't commit crimes except the whole catalyst for the story is that the crime is committed in the future. Yes. Glass mm. onion in the multiverse of madness. And then it changes its rules partway through the film and turns out the time travel works. You know, I've seen, and I think I talked to you guys about this before because I was just fucking baffled by it, a post that was positive about the Knives Out films, very positive, thought they were brilliant, and said what they love the most about it is that Benoit Blanc is in reality a bumbling detective who likely got to his point through like lots of luck and lots of other things, but that we mm -hmm. see that in action in these two movies that he raises two women to the point where they can like sort of self-actualize and become exactly what they needed to to sort of win their stories. And that that's what his role in these movies are, is to kind of be an idiot, but to facilitate someone else's story. It's not about him, it's about them. I mean, I know it's not about him, because uh, all the central plot... Okay. Yeah. So, we, isn't really it weird? Solve any of the okay. You just sit there like, what the fuck, I kind of agree. Well, <laughs> right, 
Well, it's just, but it's odd, though, because in-universe, he's recognized as being the world's greatest detective. Does that mean it's stolen valor? He steals the, the accomplishments of other people? To, so, like, do you like him or not? I think if Ryan but, heard that, he'd be like, he's not bumbling. He's, he's smart. Yeah, he's, I think he No, I he's he super smart. That. He's big smart. He, should, he plays Among Us, for God's sake. He's my son. very good at it, though. Of course he's smart. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> Maybe it's better equip lash, we didn't see that. So, yeah, this is, you got Looper, TLJ, Knives Out, Knives Out 2, that's what I have seen of his work in thorough degree, and like, all, I can believe they were mm. all made by the same guy. They, they ooze oh, yeah. this, like, this is the worst one out of the four, though. Some people said, like, you think it's worse yeah. than TLJ? It's like, yeah. yeah. Well, wait. Yeah. To be fair, I think what I'll say is the damage done what? by TLJ is much worse. Yeah, TLJ had much the worst worse. impact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in terms of, like, Just Look, the amount of inconsistencies in every single thing we highlighted, like, I don't know, this is pretty fucking horrendous. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it's always subservient to some other objective that isn't, like, the internal uh, integrity of the story. It's always something else, like some sort of statement about the meta, or some, like, attempt to do twists on, like, genre. Or, um, like, it's always in service of some other objective other than the integrity of the story. Yeah, to make then it clear, I guess like, that'd be a point, right? It's in favor of the the broader art statement, the artistic statement. Because I think some people are actually like, well, yeah, this fucking film burned the Mona Lisa. It's like, so the, the, there's still a sense, like, culturally of its impact in terms of just what a piss state of a film. But I would say, like, if I could undo one of them, it's going to be TLJ. It's not going to be this. Like this, I don't care. He's he's destroying yeah, the Knives Out franchise, bullshit. which was already shit. So I just like, <laughs> yeah. well, whatever. Yeah. Oh. And that's it's, Knives it's Out. It's a pretty wow. intensely Did painful it. film in a lot of Glass I onion, said intensely mean. stupid. Glass Onion is, is very... That's correct. Yes. It is, uh, I guess, but because we covered Knives Out in the form... Uh, we did on Drinker's channel, and then we did, like, a video praising it. I think that was a... Was that a Filmento one, I think? He was saying, like, finally it's proof that Ryan can write, and it was like, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, all we've the got opposite. at this point is, like, he is just consistent. Wow. He's reliable. In like I said, there's, there's those little similarities you can spot in the way that he writes shit. It's funny. Pathetic, but funny. Like, the, yeah. the, the, the I've seen people say, like, describe his work as having biting social commentary. Uh, uh, yeah, it bites, not, all right. I mean, bite, uh, biting is... I mean, what's the why social people, commentary is it, here? Is it just references? It's had... references. There's no commentary, it's just references. references. Yeah. You guys yes, have seen like the crazy not... right winger shooting his gun, talking about yeah. rhino pills, and in fact his mum controls his life because he's actually not an alpha male, right? Like, huh? Right, and that's the commentary. Uh, that's, that's, it's, it's like, what was? What is your point, though? And he's like, what do you mean? That's the point. Again, the more the more relevant question always I, that I find interesting is, can you tell me what his film is about without referencing anything he said in interviews? Because <laughs> um, that's what happened with Knives Out. Everybody referenced, and they used like well, the the quote, the clip of him explaining, like, "Yeah, it's Who Done It." Then it became Thriller. Then Who Done It. Every single video I said I saw in that film referenced that interview. So, what is the interview he gave for this film that will be referenced in all of the videos? What, what I'm seeing all over the internet, and it's kind of how we began this stream as well, is the whole like, you didn't understand the point of this film, Glass Onion, is that not everything is as complicated as you thought it was. Yeah, it's actually I very simple. It. I got it, but it's not but like, simple, what, though. What is even that beyond- is that, like, what I'm supposed to take from this movie? Sometimes things aren't as complicated as you thought, it can be really or simple. Or it's meant to be like, you dumbass viewer thinking that it was going to be more complicated than it is. You came into <laughs> this as a who done it, and yep. therefore came in with expectations about how complex it would be, but it wasn't. But it was, because you had the whole thing of the twin sister, yep. and the entire plan that they concocted. It wasn't simple, it was kind of convoluted. And then, of course, like, the broad structure of the film is pretty convoluted as well. Like, there's a lot of jumping back and forth, a lot of new information that is totally... And, I mean, does that have anything to do with, like, oh, well, there's no layers. You, you can see right through to the center. It's like, well, no, you can't. Because in order to do that, you need a lot of information that isn't available at the beginning. You can't figure out the twin thing until about an hour into the film. There's no information, as far as I can tell, that you can use to figure that yeah. kind of thing out. Anything that I, because like I said, I think I guessed that Miles did it, but it was because I was trying to figure out the meta. I was like, so you've set a glass onion, and it's basically deceptive, so you're fucking with me, you're trying to deceive me. What are you doing, Ryan? As opposed to, what is the story presenting me that I can latch onto to start to figure things out? Yep. Written and directed by Ryan Johnson. It's just a bullshit movie. Like, I think that's a good way to describe it. It's just bullshit. Hmm.
If you thought yep. this was good, you didn't you you, you didn't pass a test. You fell for <laughs> everything that the movie wanted you well, to think. think. You have no brain of your like, own. I I think the more interesting question for me is like, so what? Can you like can you walk me through it? Like, what is it? Like, genuinely, like, what is the what's the thing about the film that's so like mesmerizing and interesting to you? And like, could you lay it out? I think that's what I'd want. I'd just be interested, and I want to know what the references are as well, right? Like, what references can you point to in the the story? That'll be the things that appeal well, to you a lot, uh, rather than broad meta things like what you said. So it's like dumb. he's bumbling and he raises up other people. It's like so that's just the dynamic that you like. Okay, like I guess that's something, but it's not much of something really. Well, I said um, um, I well, asked someone to tell me like uh, just positive from from the writing. Just let me know what what is positive about Glass Onion. And then they said they listed soundtrack, uh, a lot of the performances, uh, the cinematography, and much yeah, of it. Sure. And I was like, oh yeah, so I I, I was looking for like a writing compliment. And then they said, well, that's not really fair. And I was like, N it's not a, it's not about that. I just want to know <laughs> what it's like just really well, this is a, there is funny things. But I, I was trying to say like it's not about whether or not anything's fair. I really just wanted answers to the question. What is like a positive about the writing? <laughs> Please let me know. When, when Ryan Johnson is praised as a writer director, I want to I want to know what the praise is for the script. People praise the scripts. It's just on a very vague level, or it will be like what happened with Knives Out, where it's like he changed the genre. That in and of itself is smart. So well, it's, I mean, that's again, that's genre like prescriptively versus descriptively. Like it's yeah, I don't know. Well, don't you? Or is, don't it, you or see is it all bullshit? Have I failed by even trying to figure this film out? Don't you see, Fringy? The people I hate also hated the movie. That means it was a success, right? Yeah, I see. Yeah, mm. that's because the that's lens. a great that's way the lens to watch of media films. criticism these days. That's a wonderful way to watch films is through the lens of yeah. But what did the people I hate think about it? And I'll just form mm. the opposite opinion. Yeah. What really the hell would you people no say way. if you didn't have the internet? If you had had actually, well, you know, yeah, what think is about it about yourself like that without Twitter or like, yeah, if they didn't have a phone and only had fax machines, well, if you didn't have, <laughs> people to provide you the correct answers on the film. Oh, you, you know what else? Around to tell you what you were supposed right. to think. Like, if they what would you... if they vomited when they lied and they had fax machines to talk about the movies, we'd actually get some really decent content. Because <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, like a lot of people accuse. Different people here and there were like, oh, you're just shit. Like, uh, it happened under, under the, the Drinker tweet. It was like, it's pretty obvious Drinker's trying to bank on the hatred of TLJ. He doesn't actually think this movie's bad. And as someone who, like, fucking watched it with him and talked to him about it, it's just like, guys, it's, it ha he didn't like it. He actually didn't. But also, like, <laughs> I thought Drinker, uh, Drinker enjoyed Knives Out, right? No. No. <laughs> he watched that with us. Drinker is one of the few people on the internet, including us, that thought Knives Out was bad. Yeah. Oh, okay. I must be mixing him up with someone else. A lot of people like Knives Out. Though, yeah. who, um, who watched... Well, because there was the prevailing statement of get him away from Star Wars, but on his own thing, he's great. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, this is. Which, uh, I mean, it, I've, I've seen the films. He made one Star Wars film, and I've seen the other. I haven't seen Brick. Should we watch that? No. Just find out. <laughs> 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 Just com no. complete the puzzle. You know? the um, it's so geez. boring. Some things were not uh, meant okay. to be solved. Well, well, evidently, right? By trying to figure out this film, you failed. Because it was simple, and you're not meant to overanalyze it. Because I'm sure that Ryan Johnson didn't spend a long time sitting down with the script. Well, actually, you know what? Fuck me. Yeah, maybe he didn't. Maybe he did <laughs> write it in the afternoon. I don't, I, know. Like I, don't, I don't like it when you get penalized for trying to figure something out. Like, that yeah. you made a mistake for even like, attempting to take it seriously. Like, why'd you put it in? If I'm not supposed to, like, watch and pay attention, well, surely then why you did you put it in? All of the, but surely you would turn down all of the accolades, right? When people are like, your film is brilliant. You'll be like, nah, it wasn't. It was stupid. Yeah. Like, you, no, it's 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 at least be consistent. I'm sure that that's how he would approach it when he looks at... Because Knives Out and Glass Onion were very well received, both of them. They're yeah. both highly well received, very, very, very highly, as in regarded as among like the top ten films of the years that they came out. Um yes. <laughs> so bad. One thing Guys. I wanted to say is that I, I don't know if there's a director who's better at wasting talented actors than Ryan Johnson. <laughs> it's incredible, right? He got Edward Norton, he got yeah. um Michael Shannon and like Chris Evans and Tony Collette. Um, and uh, uh, I can't believe I'm thinking Halloween Lady. <laughs> Halloween uh, Jamie Lady. Jamie Lee Curtis. 
What yeah, about M. Night Shyamalan? Um, you think he does a pretty good job of fucking this up as well? Oh, he's up there. But, Just uh, Disney yeah. in general. Always found his <laughs> films to be more fascinating, though. I... <laughs> yeah. You know, God, how many of you have seen Puss in Boots, The Lost Wish? How many of you I have seen it? I haven't seen it. I'm, yet. I'm considering it. seeing it. I've heard a lot of good things. You should. It's really good. I yeah, probably I, do. I, 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 I would I like to see it now. I plan, I plan to do a fortune on it. Uh, something I wanted to bring up, especially now that we're post film, is that that, that tweet. Uh, quoting Drinker, right? It, it's collectively everyone's like shitting on him, being like, haha, he didn't understand it. But when you start reading some of the more popular responses, they all have different reasons for why he's wrong, and some of them <laughs> contradict, right? Like, so, right at that point, it's like, hmm. One of the first ones is people say there are so many plot holes, and then you find out the plot hole is just that they didn't <clears throat> like it. Like, oh, genius. So, so you're saying like the film is actually coherent it's then? It's solid. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Is interesting, it's and it's like, have you looked into what he said, and have you got an example of like something that he's clearly wrong on? Because he's got his video out on it, you know. Um, and then you got, uh, I think Glass Onion's really smart, but it's just that the mystery itself is incredibly obvious. The subtext of the film and some of its symbolism is genius. So just Such some of the as, subtext like... and symbolism, like yeah, like tell me, really. She posed let, as let the Mona Lisa it. at the end, bad. And well, someone else said that the movie yeah. makes fun of these people. Oh, so like the people um, not saying, very well. I just, just you know what I mean. You're sitting there like, what? Yeah, that that reminds me of She Hulk. It's like, oh, Ryan she just calls it dumb. She Hulk so made dumb. fun of the haters, but it like it did a shit job was, of it. Though. That wasn't embarrassing at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but also I don't believe that Ryan Johnson would watch any film uh, video that's an appraisal of his film and go, "Wow, idiot, you actually tried to like analyze my film." He wouldn't do that. And conversely. The same people who would say, like, why are you even taking it seriously? If you got a reference wrong, they'd be like, you're fucking wrong. You got that wrong. Like, that piece of information is incorrect. You fucking idiot. You're, like, shitting on this film and you don't even have the references right. It's like, you gotta, you gotta make up your minds here. What is it? Mm -hmm. Is it stupid? And there's no references that are necessary in terms of, like, making claims that can be disproven or are falsifiable? Or are there falsifiable claims? Is it actually an intelligent movie that's structured coherently? You gotta pick one. No, I mean, I guess, to, to be fair, I'm not applying this to people who made different arguments themselves. That's just more interesting that nobody can even agree on what's great about it. Because you know what? I think people agree on what's great about Saving Private Ryan, you know, or like Citizen mm -hmm. Kane or any number of just general good films. People tend mm -hmm. to agree or like, you know, Toy Story. I don't know. I haven't seen people coming away with weird, disparate perspectives on Puss in Boots. Everybody <laughs> seems to be in unison in terms of understanding what's strong about it both in terms of its presentation and the story itself and the messaging. Can we talk about that briefly? Well, one of the... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there, is, there is some that have got some likes that, again, it's just like, OP is obviously dumb, but I don't see how the Glass Onion concept absolves the film from criticism. It's fine if its intention is to be silly and not focus on the minutiae of the plot and writing and whatever, but it's valid to dislike it for that reason. Like, wow. Uh -oh, no. You're not allowed, no, stop it. Careful. Like I said, <laughs> can you make a Glass Onion movie that's bad? The reason I, I did stop. Is possible to do? I stopped before the end because then they said, especially since the first one was so good. No, oh, god damn it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you had it all there and you blew it. Uh. Did people complaining about this movie even watch the first one? The reveal in that one was that it was obvious to the point of being comedic. Who did it isn't the real mystery to these movies. Unfortunately, What's the really real it, mystery yeah. then? Um, they, why they are right about good? that's the real mystery. They are right about one thing: is that it's 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 very similar twist in both movies. The twist is it's the guy you thought it was going to be. Yes, yeah, the most obvious guy with the most screen time, most motive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As someone who likes whodunits, I think they did a great job fucking with people who overanalyze every clue and story beat. How do you, you like, like who done it? Why? Yeah, like, why yeah, do you why like that? Who done it? I hate my life. It's <laughs> genre bending. I want my mommy. <laughs> yeah, that's that's about that's all. I'm yeah. <laughs> I'm done. It's just that was Glass Onion. It was so fucking bad. And I'm so done oh. with this fucking movie. Maybe we can stop really now. We can stop now. Rump. We can rest. Please.